you guys see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Where's Where's uh, Ernesto at? Right here, sir. What do you think? Um, I was happy. Oh, by the way, I'm one short. My um, I have tendonitis that flared up. Um, some I like better than others. Um, oh, that's always. Yeah. And eventually I could tell which ones like when it was actually hurting, there was one where it was like kind of like the one thing I noticed, why all these tiled roofs? It's the same tiled roof all through Orange County. Like everywhere I go, it's that same little uh, I would assume it's it's, uh, it's cost, I would assume. Probably. Um, my favorite ones I got a little involved in um the one to Heritage Hill. I think it's Heritage Hill down in Lake Forest. So I think that's my favorite, uh uh my favorite one. Is that this? No, that's not this one. No, no, that's not that one. No, that's actually it's that. No, not that one. It should be. It should be a total. That one. Yeah, that's a cool one. Yeah, that was a fair one. That was really. So one thing I tried with some of these because you were talking about um, containment lines. So and you know and foreground elements. So there is actually one. If you go down to there's going to be one page that has a water tower and then you have to rotate the image and then that's the other one so it was by that's not that one not that one not that one not, that one. not oh there should be one more did i upload the same one more than once not that there should be one oh there's one missing yeah i don't see yeah, it be a, yeah it'd be a water tower okay well, the question is, is okay, so it's a simple thing. So um, I, I, was, I was by my job and I was looking through a chain link fence and there was a house and it has a, um, what do you call it? It has like a, like, a, like, like, a, like a fence above the concrete. I put a containment line and darker lines, you know, uh, for the, through, through the fence and I kept the fence and the house and um, with lighter lines yeah. to, to, to create the focus that that's what the eye is looking at specifically. Did it work out? I think, let me see if I can find it. Um, Cause it was one of those. Let me, let me look it up here. This Let's one's go got, a, got a containment line, this post. Yeah, yeah, that post, that's actually a bakery by my job. A few of these are actually by my job. Like the one that says Ghoul Stop, is that actually called Ghoul Stop? It's called um, Manez Drive Through. Um, but I just thought it was funny to call it cool stuff um hold on for a second there is ah uh, where is it how can i where, is it in here oh yeah oh, yeah it is in here for some reason it didn't upload okay wait a minute maybe it's this hang on it might be this <clears throat> no maybe not yeah, maybe. Uh, let me see. Can I email this to you? Yeah, why not? Yeah, because I wanted to get your Try, plan Okay, so work. after this week, though, um, I was, I'm telling all my classes this because we're, I don't know, three weeks in or whatever. When I go in and I edit the video after this, like yesterday, I had to edit this video for an hour, not this one, for another class because somebody, like two people didn't, oh, I don't know where the folder is. Uh, can I email to, uh, it's over here. And I had to cut out like 20 minutes of this video because it's just a bunch of nonsense of me trying to find their stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, but when I, up, when I uploaded yesterday- yes, And, I, and I this sounds like the... it was just an oversight. It's fine, I get it. But um, so make sure from now on, and then some people go, oh, I put it over on Canvas. And now I'm to, I'm to a point now where I go, I'm not going to Canvas. I'm not going to email. I'm not going to anything. I'm going to the folder and that's it. You know what I mean? Yeah. After this week. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, I keep getting somebody. people who are they oh there it is. This is a different one. Wait, this is it. That's one. Yeah, that's one. Okay, I thought because I counted. It. Yeah. So if you if you rotate the image um clockwise. Yeah, there we go. So that's what I and then actually I had seen your full uh part of your 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 organic tutorial, so I started working with that in there. But yeah, I was wondering how well does that work out? I think it works pretty good. I think um I might even kind of come in here and hit these a little more. Okay. To really pop, that's a little too much, but I'm gonna do it a little too much, but that's okay. I might just hit the tops maybe. Just, and I probably wouldn't hit all of them. Just a few of them to kind of pop them forward a little more. But I mean, you're also using contrast, which is good. Yeah. Right? 
Yeah, exactly. And that's another tool in your toolbox. This one here, I'd probably darken that up because it's coming forward. This probably there. That brings up another question I had because um, okay. I was I was working with it is okay. So you do if you do a containment line, right? And the containment line is is that the darkest thing, or can you use values or a line as dark as that, even in uh, the midground and and background? It's everything's relative to everything else. So it okay. really depends on what my values are around it. My value, any value that I pick, uh, I'm picking based on what's around it, right? Gotcha. Yeah. <clears throat> so a mistake people make a lot, when like whatever, when they do an illustration or even these drawings or whatever, <clears throat> they'll knock in the background <clears throat> and then they'll start working the background before they really knocked everything in. And then they overwork the background. <clears throat> and then when they come to the foreground, the background is so heavily worked and so uh, contrasty that the whole thing will flatten because the background looks as, as close as the foreground. Does that make sense? That makes complete sense, yes. So you're, just, you're just always adjusting that, okay? okay? So the best thing to do is just what we said, where you knock in all those big shapes. Yeah, and then I might build a little bit of the background. I, I just sort of initially just make a pass at it and sort of knock everything in. Then I go, oh, I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna, now I have everything there so I can start judging the values and don't overwork an area. You know what I mean? and, and ideally, yeah. you know, back to front, you know, that's what they'll tell you with painting and things like that. And those rules of thumb, I think are really good, but you got to be careful with that because they're a rule of thumb. So sometimes you break those rules once in a while, right? The key Definitely. to rule breaking is I get people, you know, you get people all the time um, and they go, they think, anyway, that's their excuse for a bad drawing. They'll go, you know, hey, I'm breaking the rules. It's like, you don't even know the rules. You know what I mean? How are you breaking the rules if you don't even know them? You got to know the rules and then yeah you can bend them and and do things with them right yeah definitely but um mm -hmm. value is always relative to what next to it color temperature is always relative to what's next to it big areas of contrast are always relative to what's next to it everything in a picture is relative to what's next to it kind of everything right even shape language big to small um you know all that sort of thing uh organics against um uh manufactured things all that stuff that's all your that's all your contrast tools right definitely cool and then also here sorry i keep it i don't have my rumor rings right yet um same thing here i probably hit that overlap or over this overhang here a little bit probably even here depending on where the light is i'm putting the light up here that's about right yeah that, that's about right where the light was Put it there, probably here, maybe under here. So I just start popping things with line that are gonna um, potentially basically be a shadow value, right? Yeah. And then, you know, as we move into this, see I hit the front of that, that but that I did that to separate it. Um, as we get into this then you know, things, again, this, this, this is a rule of thumb, so I think we talked about that. So sometimes if I want to separate something uh, and it's catching light, and so it would be a thinner line or whatever, uh, I might hit it a little harder to separate it, you know, not overdo it, um, just to pull it forward. So, you know, sometimes people look at that and they go, well, you heavied up that line and it's right in the light. And it's like, I know, but I need to separate it. And a good that example of that, which I probably said is if I turn sideways with, maybe i've got a pattern shirt on or even this kind of shirt where it's dark this arm could start getting lost in in this does that make sense yes so i might and say the light's coming here i might hit this with a little darker line because i need to separate it from this i need to make clarity there that it's not just one big flat shape so i'm and i'm not going to probably hit the whole thing I'm probably just going to hit enough to separate it a little bit um so things like that is where you kind of vary that stuff right yes okay good cool. good sir yeah that's also about my job <laughs> these are just me sitting in my car looking around my job what i can draw yeah it's funny because i um <clears throat> i'm still hearing people go eh, there's nowhere to draw people and i go yeah there is all kinds of places to draw people like where are you going you know what i mean there's plenty. I'm, I'm going now i'm going down the hill to uh it's called citrus plaza they have this outdoor food area there's people there I just went to farmer's market, um, go to my girlfriend's restaurant out on the deck. Everybody's eating out there. Um, probably downtown Disney, I think is open, right? 
Um, I think so, yeah. The farmer's market is like one of the best places to sketch people, man. In the one on third and Fairfax, Fairfax in LA. Yeah. I just went through the, uh, I think last week. And then if you're doing, so now we're starting to talk about organics. I'm sorry, I think I'm getting a cold or something. Um, well, these look good. Who's this? Where's Evelyn? I'm here. What do you think? I'm feeling pretty good this time. Good. Uh, <laughs> and I'm still struck a struggle with the plants a lot. With the what? The plant. Um, there's a plant that is really spiky. Oh. Okay. I don't know what do they call. But I, tr I think uh, after watching your video, I think I do a little bit better uh, on the trees. These are great. I, thank you. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't think you're doing bad with the foliage. I think you're kind of getting it. Like here. Now, here, what I think you need to do. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you see how round that is? Yes. So what I would do is I would, you know, even if, because I've had people do this all the time. They go, well, it was like that. And I go, I don't care. Change it. You know what I mean? Mm. So <clears throat> I'd probably add another little part to it here. Okay. To get it to be, and then this might break that up a little, and then maybe just give it a little hint on the whatever you call it. And then here, a lot of times I'll go, I'll put a, a few leaves down here that are uh, away from the the main mass. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then also a lot of times what I do is here. I'll darken this area down here a little bit because it's pro it's the you know it's the part that's the furthest under the canopy of the tree. Yes. Right. So it sort of anchors the bottom of the tree. Uh -huh. Up here, I'll put a couple of leaves that are not connected. And the reason I do them when they're not connected is if I'm standing far enough away, if you look at a tree, that's kind of what it looks like. It looks like because you don't really see the the branch that's holding it there because it's just so thin and you're too uh -huh. far away from it. Yeah. And then sometimes you do, but mostly when I put the branch in from a distance, it just looks weird to me. Okay. I mean, other, you know, you can't do that. It's fine. But so I think that's pretty good. And then I think this is pretty good the way you're starting to mass this in. Now, I didn't mm -hmm. see this tree, but usually how this usually works is I'll sort of do a little serrated line here. And then I can maybe do another one here, however, it's hanging. Mm hmm. And then, you know, if I can get these a little bit of value here, it'll it'll separate those two layers. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Maybe have one pulling off. This looks pretty good. But I think hopefully you guys are seeing that what that is, it's just like anything else. It's it's a light and dark mass mostly, right? Mm -hmm. Or you have to just look at how, how uh, the construction of something. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I said, with uh, like these are pretty good. Like in here, I might come in here and kind of hit a few of these and just separate it. I don't, I don't even know if I would actually, but you could. All right. So a lot of these things, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I want to make sure you guys are understanding that I might go, hey, you could hit this or you could do that. Well, this also works just on its own. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I, I'm just, I'm always gonna want to play around with it a little bit. Okay. Okay. Because I, I do think this works. Okay. And, and this is one of the things I love about pencil is how many different ways you can use that tool, right? Mm -hmm. And it really comes in handy for, for organics. It really does, right? Yeah. I might have put a tree back here or something. Just to put something against that sky. Right? Okay, yes. Or maybe a palm. Or maybe there's a couple of palm trees back there. Out in the distance or something. And I could just silhouette them. I might do that just so I don't repeat this shape too much. Okay. What's your major? Uh, my major, I want to work in the visual development. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, well, the, you need this skill 100% then. Yes. If you want to work in visual development, you have to have this skill. Mm -hmm. There's no way around it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> if, it's, if you're going... Like a lot of people do, and they're you know working for photography all the time and all that kind of stuff. That's not going to cut it. You, mm -hmm. you know, you got to sort of learn to to draw and sort of uh, 
absorb uh, information and then and then sort of spit it out in, in a stylized way or start working out of your head and things like that. You know, it's a very mm -hmm. fast paced environment. Mm -hmm. Where's this at? Is this the one? Where's that at? Oh, is uh, Westminster? Uh, is near no, because I'm living in Rosemead, so oh, it's okay. near my home. Yeah, you're in Rosemead. Yes, I am. God, I haven't been there in a long time. Uh, <laughs> Lake Lake's there, right? Uh huh. I've been there forever, man. I grew up in Norwalk, so I wasn't that far. Oh, okay. You know what I like about these? They're pretty. They're really balanced, but they're also really bold. Like they got nice punchy line, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Be careful on this one. It's getting a little wonky. Okay. And by the way, everybody, no matter how long you've been doing this, everybody makes wonky drawings once in a while. The, the, only dif the difference is, is that you don't see their wonky drawings, then we'll show them to you, right? Okay, because when I look at it on the sketchbook, it doesn't look that wonky. <laughs> this one? Yeah. <laughs> it's just the perspective's a little wonky. I see. I think you could dip it over here a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, once in a while, I'll do little things. And I don't want to push you guys too far yet to make things up. But I might put a cap on that just because I, I want it okay. to finish, even if it's not there. I see. And, you know, as weird as it sounds, when you're drawing, okay, so when you're drawing, you're, you're flexing a bunch of different muscles. You're flexing your observational muscles, obviously. Mm -hmm. You're flexing your draftsmanship, right? Mm -hmm. But you're also flexing your design muscles, okay? So when, you when I look at something, I go... I don't like the way that thing ends. I'm going to put this on it, or I'm going to move that over there. Or I'm going to put a tree over here. What am I doing? I'm designing, correct? Yes. So what's great about observational sketching and stuff like that, or just working your sketchbook, is that you're constantly flexing all those muscles. Composition, editing, simplification, uh, stylization, uh, mm -hmm. indication, um, value. I mean, everything is, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just a constant workout of so many different things. And you're going to see it. You'll see this spill into your other classes. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. I had one time at arts and I don't remember what term it was, but I had a rendering and head painting in the same term. And I don't know why. <clears throat> and maybe one of the class I can't remember, but those two or three classes all dovetailed together somehow. Mm -hmm. And I went into head painting totally sucking. And then after about a month, I was knocking out head paintings and getting, and the, they just, they fed each other somehow. The rendering class really fed the head painting. It was really weird. And all of a sudden I just made a big leap. You know what I mean? I see, yeah. But it's it's not, you know, all these things, or or if you're taking perspective or, you, you know, all those things are going to feed into obviously all your classes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, you know, perspective, this class, you know, different ones. Okay, so here... I might just make a little more coherent mark making here, right? Mm -hmm. And you don't, if you notice, I'm not hardly putting any in, <clears throat> but it has quite a bit of an impact. Does that make sense? Yeah. Here, when again, I'm getting out here, I might show a couple of individual leaves. Okay. Why? Because where do I see? Okay, so when I, I think I said this in a video, when I'm looking at trees or bushes or whatever, <clears throat> The exterior is where I get the silhouette against the sky or against the background or wherever on the edges of the silhouette is where I'm going to get that clear silhouette of like, oh, that's a maple leaf. That's a maple tree, right? Mm -hmm. As it moves into the interior, I'm getting a lot of textural information, okay? Yes. And my mind's, unless I'm making an effort, my mind's not reading that as like, oh, those are maple leaves, really. It's just seeing a bunch of texture. Does that make sense? Yes. I mean, if I look at it, and I, yeah, obviously I'm going to see it's a maple tree or whatever, but so what I do is if I have that, <clears throat> I'll, and especially at the bottom, maybe around the top, I'll sprinkle a couple of the real uh, leaf shapes in there. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then I'll pull a couple of mints into the interior too. But then I do usually do like a quick sort of scribble language based on that shape. I don't just scribble. Mm -hmm. I kind of get my hands warmed up with that leaf shape. And I kind of go, okay, that's my little, my edges where, where it goes from light to dark, like I'm mm -hmm. doing here. They're going to have a little bit of that uh, uh, angularity that a uh, 
a maple leaf has, right? Mm -hmm. So here and there, <clears throat> here and there, I want to um, give the viewer some a little more information. Does that make sense? Yes. Like I might, you know, if there was a leafy plant, I might put that there, make sure I break it all the way up there. Uh, here, when you're doing these uh, things, now, let's say the light's here. I can do the same thing I do with everything. I can kind of hit the, the darker side of this. I'm not going to do it everywhere. It's just like when we do shingles. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to um, punch a couple of them. See how many punch them? It just helps it. Yeah. <clears throat> also, I'd be careful with all these shapes being the same size. I see. Now, yes. if they were, I'm still probably going to break them up a little bit, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm trying to get a good drawing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, if I was in France or wherever, and I'm like, that, that, and that fence is very unique and it, and it had all the same shapes, I might just draw it that way because I'm kind of capturing a place in a moment. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's a little different for me. If I'm just trying to make a good drawing, I'm going to change anything I want. And what I'm trying mm -hmm. to do is when you change little things, you're starting to get, okay, so like when I started doing this, <clears throat> I was waiting for permission to do certain things, mm. right? So, you know, I'd go, I'd be trying to draw what I've seen and then I wouldn't move things around because I thought, well, I don't really know how to do that and whatever. I was waiting for somebody to give me permission for some reason. And, um, um, and right now I'm not really worried about you moving stuff around and all that stuff. But what I am doing is trying to give you permission to do that at some point when you start getting comfortable with it. Right. Okay. So if I want to take a tree that's over there and I want to put it back here, because I do that a lot to put it against the geometry of the house to get something mm -hmm. organic. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, I do it. Right. Okay. I just go, oh, there's yeah. a tree over there. And I don't even have to make it up because in almost any environment I go, well, there's a tree. I'll just move that one over there. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm hmm. Or like when we usually go to downtown Orange, there's a building I usually do a demo of, and it's, I pick the most boring building there. Mm -hmm. And then I plus it up by taking the top off of that building and the windows off that building and the canopy off that building and the tables from over there and move the lamppost over here. And I, you know, and I just, it's a big Lego box, right? Yeah. I get all these Legos and I, it's up to me to make whatever I want out of them. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so this week, by the way, I'm going to want to really concentrate on getting these organics in here, right? Yeah. You know, you can also kind of, with something like this, which is what you're doing, you know, you can just do what you're doing and just kind of have the whole thing in silhouette like that. But by the way, <clears throat> I probably already showed you guys this, but you guys give me two seconds. I'm going to get a um, cup of coffee. Yeah? Okay. I'll be right back. Hang on. Oh, I was going to show you this. So you can take this idea. You guys can hear me, right? Uh huh. I can hear you. You can take this idea of going from the lighted area, leafy shape, and breaking the form into the dark area, um, and really break it in half. Hang on. You see what I mean? Mm. This is Jackie. By the way, Jackie's going to be teaching um, fashion sketching next term, uh, fall. Fashion sketching? Yeah. Wow. Her sketching was so good. Uh, and we we hire for the uh, fashion sketching falls under our umbrella. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so we're asking if I knew anybody. She has a fashion point of view anyway. But mm -hmm. I go, she can learn the 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 foundation of what you got to do with fashion sketching. But the mm -hmm. reason I hired her is because she's going to take it a much further because she has very good sketching skills, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, look at these drawings are great, man. Oops. Why can I not? Oh, here it is. But you see, it's basically a light and dark thing, right? So it's sort yeah. of a canopy and then a dark. Uh -huh. Really nice organic shapes for the trunks and things. I'll link this too. You guys should probably look at her sketches. Wow. Really cool stylistic point of view, you know? Mm -hmm. Let me get out of here. Oh. And then her just her observational sketches are great, like 
Yes. That's mm -hmm. at the Natural History Museum. This is, uh, I don't know where that is. That's probably out in the park or something. Those are cool, man. Yeah. She's, uh, and then starting to put together the buildings and the trees, right? See, mm -hmm. look at this mass right here. Okay. What people mm -hmm. sometimes they do is they pull that. If you look at a mass, a leaf mass and you, and you squint down, you know, it's, it, it's basically an abstract sort of an ink blot, right? Mm -hmm. So you're really just kind of, that's really what you're trying to capture really. Okay. And then if you notice here, she's using a lot of this, you know, dark to silo or to sort of surround this light rib uh, cage, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's another really important tool is to have that mass now, because I'm going to start having you guys add value and stuff into this. Okay. Is to use those, that, that light dark thing, right? Ted mm -hmm. Kotsky does that a lot with trees. I'll try and find one of his here in a minute. And then again, I think I showed you guys this before, but uh, what I like about, another thing I like about Jackie's work is there's always scenario and she's always sort of designing in the moment. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. So you have this same idea back here where these are basically silhouettes. He's a lighter value. Mm -hmm. Then she pulls this little um, diagonal, what do you want to curve in there to break it up? Mm -hmm. <coughs> and, you know, and then she stylized the seagull, you know, and then uh, the other thing I like about her stuff, a lot of it has interaction between people. Yeah. Okay. And when you're drawing people, when you start getting comfortable with it, when we start talking about this, which I'll probably start talking about next week. Okay. Um, when you start getting comfortable with it, that's the next step that you want to do is start trying to draw people while they're talking, mm. right? Because they'll be mm -hmm. gesturing and they'll be, you know, it, it's just, you know, I just drew a guy the other day <coughs> and he just was, he, he was so stone-faced. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it was weird because he had a kid with him and his, I'm assuming his wife, he was just like hipster guy, um, but he never smiled. Like the kid would goof around and do stuff and he'd just sit there with like no expression on his face. It's kind of weird. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because I'm waiting for him to start talking or joking around or something. He just never did. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> anyway, these are, I think these are really great. Yeah, this is a very cool. And then let's see if I can find this real quick. Because Ted Kotsky, I, I, I don't know what happened to my Ted Kotsky book. I didn't rebuy it. See what he's doing? Ooh. See all this negative shape inside of all this, this foliage? Look at that. Mm -hmm. Look how complex that looks and it's really not, right? Mm -hmm. And then if you notice, he's doing the water similar to what I showed you guys where I put a bit, one value down, I start pulling uh, reflections and things out of it. That's mm -hmm. the same thing. And then if you look at the rocks, they're, they're planes. You can see the planes here, correct? Yes. And then a lot of this negative shape. So in this case, he's using the, the foreground the opposite way that I did in that thing. I, may, I darkened it so it came forward. He's just, he's using a big negative shape. And mm -hmm. what's making it work are these like leafy shapes, these little indications of the leafy shapes, right? Yeah. And then look at, there's nothing here except for what I said. It's just silhouette yeah it really works yeah and boy does that just like it just reads you know mm -hmm. what i mean mm -hmm. okay. look and then here he puts this dark foliage down here and then turns the tree trunk white right there just to pop it out of that dark right mm -hmm. now normally if i sat here and said that you guys can look weird in the lighting it doesn't right mm -hmm. And he's doing it, obviously, mostly for clarity. Mm. So these are really simple little studies. I don't think that's Kotsky right there. Anyway, super old school dude. The book that I had, I had a picture of him on the back because he was probably operating in the 60s or something. Mm 
And he's he's that type of old school art teacher I like, where he's like wearing a starched white shirt and a tie, and he looks like a total <laughs> ass. You know what I mean? That, that sounds so cute. I like those old hard ass, old school teachers. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So here, <clears throat> I think you can give me a little more information on the shingles. Yeah. You know, and again, it doesn't have to be a lot. Now, what you can't, what I tend to do is. Some people look at it as the light crossing across it and that that rake of light, that's where they'll sort of cluster the um, the more a little more information. I just tend mm -hmm. to cluster it and fall it off. I don't really think of it that way, but it's not a bad way to think of it. Mm -hmm. I kind of made this a little bigger. I don't know. I think it's mostly the shingles. This one looks pretty good. Now here, I could probably pull some darks out of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As it goes from the top to the bottom or even the bottom up. I don't do all of them. I, I just do it here and there. It just tends mm -hmm. to separate the planks a little bit. Yes. And then I want to put the light here. And then, you know, I'd probably hit it a little bit here. Mm -hmm. Under here, I like to hit it. Mm -hmm. Away from the light. And that'll see how it pulls it forward a little bit. Mm -hmm. I might hit the bottoms of these a little. For sure, this. Okay. And you've hit it. I'm just trying to clarify it a little bit. Mm -hmm. What kind of visual development? Live action or, um, or I just want whatever? To, uh, no, I want you to work in the prop design and oh. background design. Oh, that's when you have a. That's interesting. That's good. <laughs> Whatever you, you know, when you go into stuff, if you, if you go into sort of a generalist prop person or whatever, mm -hmm. um, what tends to happen when you go, in, 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 whatever you come in as, mm -hmm. you'll start, those you and wherever you're working at will start seeing what you're good at. Does that make sense? Okay. And mm, you'll start, um, go ahead. Uh, sort of. Well, they'll, they'll just go, hey, Evelyn's really good at uh, blah, blah, blah. And they'll mm -hmm. just start giving you that kind of work. And after a while, all of a sudden, you're the background person or whatever it is. You know what I mean? Mm. Like at Disney, we had people, you know, like there's a lot of character artists at Disney. And the, mm -hmm. the character art at like DCP and uh, uh, Disney Store, you know, the, the more consumer product side of it. Uh -huh. or, or just throughout the whole company, actually. And they're not character designers. They're character artists. Okay. Um, and, and then you, you have certain ones where they primarily work on, like we had one guy, he, he's the guy we always gave the princess stuff to because he drew the princesses really well, right? And they're hard to draw. Uh -huh. And we had another guy who was really good at the Pooh character. So we always would give him all that stuff. You know what I mean? I see. Yeah. I mean, they could probably draw any of them, but they just had specialties for some reason. Yeah. I really like this one right here. Mm -hmm. What do you think? This is my 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 favorite too. <laughs> yeah, it's really strong. It's really punchy. You know, this is a kind of page. You know, I don't. You've probably done this. Like if I'm walking through when we're in class mm -hmm. or anywhere I'm at. If I'm walking through a room, or, you know, there's drawings or whatever. My eyes gonna go whoop, like a laser beam to that because it's it's really punchy. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. We're, uh, is this all around Rosemead? Yeah. I'm you, still got, you got some interesting buildings in Rosemead. Yeah, but most of them are closed. So the, the one in the, the bottom, they're closed. And I think that's really sad. And I do it. Yeah, it is, actually. But you know what's interesting? I was thinking about this. I might have said this. <laughs> if you like me and you're sketching all the time, mm -hmm. I didn't think of it until this pandemic thing. And, and the sketchbook is sort of like the rings of a tree. Right, mm -hmm. you know, they count the rings of the tree and they go, oh, right there and see where there's no rings for like this big space. And you go, yeah, why? Because there was an ice age or there was a, a volcanic eruption that blotted out the sun for 10 years or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with a sketchbook, but this one is like, oh, there's the ring of that. Oh, that's when we had the pandemic. Cause like a lot of your drawings are gonna have people with masks on, a lot of things are closed, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, There's something really interesting about that. I think I'd, it'd be really fun to organize a, a show around that, like in a couple of years. Mm -hmm. 
you know, just to get artists, you know, people who are going out and drawing and painting and all that kind of stuff, just do a show of all that stuff. It'd probably be really interesting. Yeah. I think so too. These are really good. Thank you. Really good. Yeah. I don't have a lot of complaints about that. Okay. I will keep on working on the straight lines. Uh, yeah. Well, just work on... Um, but how do you practice like drawing straight lines? Just like keep... <coughs> straight lines. Like, yeah. Go... Let me turn on my... Okay. Um, if, if I decide to turn on this other camera, I'll have probably have to take a couple of minutes, but I don't need to for this. But let me... I see. Hang on. Let me... There's a couple of things you should do. Mm -hmm. I think I've said them, but it's fine. You guys can see that okay, right? Yes. I'm still cramped up over here. Hang on. I don't know why that's showing. Up. Hang on. I haven't turned on my camera in a week. That's better. Okay. When you're doing a straight line, <clears throat> there's a couple of ways that I do it. And this is probably the the way that's more of an experiential thing like having a lot of experience doing it mm -hmm. i like to do I, I a lot of times i'll do that okay? okay can you see that line yes i can see that okay. line. um you know I, I just tend to start a lot of things like that <clears throat> you can see i can get it pretty straight but what i like about it is it's not exactly perfect mm. okay which mm -hmm. i like sometimes okay uh again if i'm doing a tree then I start to do, it's not a straight line. I tend to do that because you can see it gets a much more organic line, mm -hmm. right? And then, but mainly if you're doing mechanical things, it's this idea of like, I ghost it and I get it, you know, um, it's like rehearsing it in my brain basically, right? Mm -hmm. And then I just drop it and I sweep it, right? Yeah. And when I'm warmed up, I can get them to look almost like I did them with a ruler. Okay. Okay. The other thing is when you're doing this, uh, so you want to sweep it, right? The enemy of like wanting to do mechanical things mm -hmm. <laughs> is doing this. Then you get this wobbly, timid line. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I see people all the time, they'll go something in like a building and then they think to clean it up, they should do this. Right? Yeah. And my argument to this is like, if I'm drawing some, like a building, I'm probably gonna go really loose in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then I'm gonna use that technique to come in and go, okay, I wanna clean this up, you know? And then I'll tighten it up that way, right? Yeah. And then I'll tighten it up and I'll leave mm -hmm. some of the lines loose, right? So I get a variance mm -hmm. of my line so it doesn't start looking like a perspective ruler drawing. Mm -hmm. you know what i mean yes um and then the end and then the same thing okay so i think i said this uh start doing like a line and then trying to start and stop it exactly in which i'm terrible because i haven't done it forever mm -hmm. uh, start and stop see look how i went off so i'm not there yet and try and get the distance here to be consistent and the distance yeah. here to be consistent. does that make sense mm-hmm and then this is the one time where I'm going to say, do this in awkward positions, like do it this way. Mm -hmm. um, this really improved my drawing. And I think I told you guys, I had a teacher tell me this. And I thought it was total crap. Mm -hmm. Right. I go, I'm not going to, whatever, but he, he made us do it or whatever. And it really did improve my drawing. It improved my, um, uh, what do you call that? Catching skill? No, my, mm -hmm. um, I can't think I can't think of the word. Not clarity, um, accuracy. Accuracy. Okay. Really fast. Okay. And mm -hmm. my control. Okay. Mm -hmm. Same thing. You do the same thing with ellipses where you 
you ghost them, then you drop them, you ghost mm -hmm. them, then you drop them and then do the same thing on a page. Just, you know, do narrow ones, make sure they're never this, they're never pointy like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what you always see. Um, you know, do wider ones, mm -hmm. be really narrow. Sometimes I just would do it where I go, here's the horizon line. So there's my ellipse, then it opens a little, then it starts open a little more and more. Mm. And then you start getting used to that. And when you're doing a glass, because I do them all the time like this, you know, I can just, I know that that ellipse down here opens a little more, right? Yeah, yes. And it usually opens about, I think it's about 5%. But I mean, that's obviously a glass is a cylinder right mm -hmm. and like this down here where the glass is thicker i'll get a few reflections down here now it's you know i just get that then i can come in here and go okay it's got liquid in it the liquid shouldn't touch the edge that's going to make it look more like a glass with liquid in it mm -hmm. right yes and i come in here and i do my liquid color. Leave the top a little lighter. Come back in here and clean up this edge. And then give it a highlight. Hmm. And you got a glass, right? And then yeah. down here, I go a little darker. Maybe over here. So it's like a beer glass, right? Mm hmm. So if you notice, I wouldn't, I don't like this line. Um, I wouldn't, so with something like this, I, I, I sketched it out pretty loose and I only tighten up a few things on it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because I don't want it to get, I don't want this stuff to look like mechanical, like, especially if you're talking about visual development, okay? Mm -hmm. If you look, one of the things I think is really good to do, and I don't know if I put up that video yet. <clears throat> Did I put up a video on just drawing everyday stuff? Okay. Are you showing yeah. us your computer? Hang on. Let me turn that. Well, the video's not up yet, Mike. Okay, I'll put that up. It's just a casual video. <laughs> it's just a casual video, and it's just about that. It's just about drawing stuff around the house, right? Uh -huh. Oh yeah, I did see uh, a video that you uploaded about everyday objects. Yes, that's it. Uh huh. Spilling this stupid crap all over the place. I'm gonna get myself organized in here. So, my yeah. studio in here is just like growing exponentially with all this gear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when I, you practicing, you usually with the like a longer line, not like just working on your tip of your fingers. It's like with your whole wrist, right? I tend to draw the way I draw. I tend to start here. Mm -hmm. You the side of me, the pencil, huh? Just like you hold a pencil to um, practice the straight line or just use the side of the oh, pencil? straight lines, I'm going to go this way. Okay. Is that what you're asking? Yes. Yeah, I'm going to go this way because this is going to give me a lot of control. A lot of control. Okay, yes. This is, I still have some control, but not, I can't get overly tight this way. Mm -hmm. So that's why, like I was just showing you, a lot of times when I start a building or something, I'll drag the lines like this because they're not, they're straight, but they're not perfect. And the side of a building isn't usually perfect. Mm, yes. You know what I mean? I want a little bit of organic quality to my work. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but, but I tend to start way back here, right? Then mm -hmm. I go to here and get a little more control. And then when I want to go in and start like fussing with eyes and things like that, I'll go this way. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing is I, the way I draw, it really helps to keep me from getting stiff. Mm -hmm. By the time I go to this, I'm just reinforcing some lines. I'm dancing, just like that glass. I'm going in and going, okay, I'll darken this up. I'll hit this little line. I'll hit that and I'm out, right? Mm -hmm. I don't need to reinforce every single line. Some of this stuff, especially when you're talking about pencil, it, it's a it's a tone under there. And mm -hmm. I'm just I'm just dancing line over the tone a little bit. Does that make sense? Yes. Thank you. And then you got to, um, you know, and you're doing it already. You got to make bigger statements like, uh, hang on. You know, and then the next step of this, when we start getting comfortable, and I'll talk about this later, is sort of, you know, this kind of thing where it's starting to get stylized, right? Mm -hmm. 
like here. Oops. Here. See, there's that tree idea right there. See it? Uh, no. Oh, am I not scaring my screen? God, I always. Uh, no. You guys gotta always remind me. Sorry. See the okay, tree yeah. right here. Yes. Well, what I was talking about before was, you know, how he's starting to stylize these things, right? <clears throat> mm -hmm. Like here, here, obviously, here, and, and then down here. What I was going to show you. Look at these. These are great. These are exactly what we want to be doing. This kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Now the, the the drawing at a place like Disneyland and stuff is super fun. The only problem I have with it <clears throat> is early on, and, it, and there's nothing wrong with it, but <clears throat> it's already stylized for you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To me, it's more fun to go draw something that is not stylized for me, and I stylize it. Mm. Oh, here. So these are all, I mean, just everyday things, but they yeah. have style, right? Mm -hmm. And if I was thinking about visual development, prop development, I'd be doing hundreds of those. Mm -hmm. I'd be drawing my burger, I'd be drawing my, I do it all the time anyway, I just do it. But um, mm -hmm. um, if I see two people talking or whatever, uh, I had a sketchbook that got stolen uh, and it had a bunch of these brush pins drawings in it. And one of them was this couple that looked like they were kind of leaning in and angry at each other. They weren't really doing that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's just something that I just thought was silly because they're, they look like they've been married a long time and stuff. Mm -hmm. so i'm always trying to take whatever I, you know uh whatever i'm looking at sometimes i'm just drawing stuff straight but then so if i'm warmed up and everything then i start playing around and stylizing and maybe changing things and mm -hmm. putting uh something in front of the person on their plate that they're not actually eating you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah because maybe i want to draw a big lobster on their plate some giant lobster you know just something like that just to make it fun right mm-hmm <clears throat> and but what people tend to do what i okay so what i see the here's the the, the sand trap in uh entertainment design is people mm -hmm. they don't they're taking all these entertainment design classes not realizing that like a th those are fine there's nothing wrong with that but mm -hmm. they think that's the skill set oh i can kind of draw like that entertainment stuff and it's like, you're missing the point. What you actually need to do is what we're doing in here and just get really good at drawing and stylizing. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Then you can take that skill into all those classes and you'll kill it, right? Mm -hmm. But when you're sort of, when, when they're going, when they're jumping over draftsmanship and not getting good at drawing, and then they're just trying to draw stylized stuff and all that crap, it doesn't work. Yeah, but I feel if, that. I feel that all the time. Yeah. If you're if you're somebody that looks at portfolios, and I've looked at a lot of portfolios, I can see that man right off. I can look mm -hmm. at that. You don't really know how to draw well. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You see yes. it right away. The portfolio is closed. You move on to the next one. Like as mm -hmm. soon as I see that lousy drawing in there, I'm out. I'm not going to hire them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't think anybody else would either. Well, actually, I've seen a lot of people have jobs that are not very good, but that's an <laughs> That's in any industry, right? Okay. You go talk to anybody in any industry and they're going to go, oh God, I work with four guys who don't know what the hell they're doing. <laughs> it's everywhere. You know what I mean? But okay. if you can come out with these like monster drawing skills and sketching skills, mm -hmm. especially if you're talking about something like prop or whatever, because then you're pumping out a lot of ideas really fast, you know? Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's a business with a gun to your head all the time. Mm-hmm. Any kind of design is, is mm -hmm. just, you've got a gun to your head all the time, right? And I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just, it's a very fast industry. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And if you're lucky, you walk into a, uh, an environment that scares the hell out of you. Hmm. Right? Yes. <clears throat> Cause that's where you're going to um, get good, really good. Yes. If you look at Rachel Elise's work, she came out of here and then she went to Art Center and man, her work is good. What was the name, Rachel? Yeah, here. Okay. I'll, I'll link anybody I talk about. Yeah, thank you. Oops, hang on. What happened? 
And by the way, there's an interview I did of her up on, uh, it's on our Facebook page. This is Rachel's stuff. Wow. And I had her in this class, actually. Super, de super dedicated, man, you know? I like her style. Oh, yeah, I do, too. Rachel. So she works at the visual development too. I see a lot of like. Uh, she works at. Uh, she works with DreamWorks, I think now. Mm -hmm. She'll have a long career. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, this stuff is great. Yeah. Look at that. Like, what a great way to shoot or to to the shot. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's and that that staging is something that if you want to do visual development, you really need to know staging. Staging. Okay. Mm -hmm. And again, <clears throat> the reason I love this class and doing this class, and the reason I thought this class was important was because you can practice this in your sketchbook, right? Mm -hmm. And it's exactly what I just said. And it's what I just showed you with Jackie's work, where when she's drawing on location, she's kind of drawing it like this. She's sort of staging things. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. She's, you know, really getting that interaction between people. She's picking, she did one drawing. I, I, we went to a Huntington Library during the Shakespeare Festival in this class last year or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, it was super fun, right? So they have, and for some reason, I just was off that day. I was drawing like crap. And I wasn't staging anything right. I just wasn't inspired for something. But I was totally inspired by what I was seeing. I was just off. But, and then Jackie showed me this one drawing she did. And I go, God, that's exactly what I didn't do that day. You know what I mean? Mm. I didn't stage it. I remember seeing her drawing and going, that's what was wrong is I wasn't staging anything. I was just sort of mm -hmm. randomly drawing. Yeah. My brain wanted to, you know, I just didn't figure it out that day. And she did, obviously, right? Mm -hmm. Staging. Yeah, so she's... And by the way, talk to her. You know Rachel? what I mean? Jackie? Yeah. I mean, if you have a question for her, send her an email. Okay. I mean, she's a really nice person. Uh huh. And I think, you know, I wouldn't go pestering everybody, but if I was a, uh, if I was doing this stuff, you know, starting off, and I've had people do it to me, like when I was working in Imagineering and stuff like that, I get I get emails from people. Just I don't know how they found me or whatever, but they find you somehow. Mm -hmm. Some of them probably, some of them I know have found me through that Imagineering book and things like that. And they send you an email and they just ask you questions about stuff. You know, I mean, yeah. why wouldn't I answer those? Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm famous and I'm getting a thousand emails every day. Yeah, but I don't want to ask any like a stupid questions, like um, like waste of your time. <laughs> I, I don't know if there's a lot of stupid questions. I mean, yeah. speaking as somebody who's gotten letters from, or emails from people asking certain questions, I've never looked at them and thought that's a stupid question. Okay. I never have. Because I don't mm -hmm. think there are any stupid questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. <laughs> I mean, maybe if somebody's like, I, you know, if, if the only thing that would annoy me is if someone somebody sends me uh, uh, asking questions about super fanboy stuff or whatever, then it's like I don't care about because I don't really care oh, about no. design. I like design. I, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. But I mean, a lot of people are coming out of that culture of of fanism. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. And I don't think that's the right reason to want to do it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I think mm -hmm. the right reason why is you like design and and things like whatever film i worked in toy design some theme park stuff that's very mm -hmm. meaty projects to work on for a designer so for me it was about that you know what i mean mm -hmm. i didn't really care that it was about i mean i did but it, it wasn't like oh it's disney animation it was like any it was like no this is a big project it's fun you know what i mean mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's got 40 million bucks behind it or whatever it was Okay. Which means I get to do crazy stuff. Yeah. Okay, where's uh Gavin? I'm here. These look good. What do you think? Um, some of them I wasn't really feeling, but other than that, I had fun. Okay, so this one makes a big leap in value. Yeah, that was the first one I did, I think. Wow, really? I was just, I was going to say, that, was that your last one? No, that was the first. Why, why is that one so bold? Uh... 
I'm not, I think maybe cause that one I did sitting on my front porch. So I had like a lot of time to sit there. The other ones I like went out and didn't feel as comfortable. Maybe, I don't know. Um, add a little bit of that punch to these other ones. These other ones are actually pretty balanced. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think. You know, yeah, I think I think that one too is because I I added a lot of the value, and on the other ones I kind of just focused on the line. Well, that's good. But like here, I could punch these. Again, I could pull this up from the bottom a little bit and down from the top. See how that just starts to make the fence read a little better. I don't need to do it everywhere. Where it hits the ground for sure, I always hit that line. I'm gonna make wonky lines here because I'm not rotating my canvas. I'm showing my screen, right? Yeah, I am. Same thing here. I might pull some of these in. Under here. Under here. So on and so forth. But they look pretty balanced. It looks like you're seeing the shapes pretty good. You might even hit that a little harder. Pull it forward, maybe. You know, what's cool is when you go, okay, I, I punch this a little harder. Then I go, I need to punch this back here a little bit. I still got to keep it laying behind there, but I can probably punch it up a little, right? Yeah. Because I just made a big leap in value and probably too big a leap if I don't address it in the, the building behind it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, same thing here. I'd separate these a little more. Yeah, it might be the photo too, because I did. I think that's part of it kind of hint at that yeah because it looks a little uh soft focusy like it's the yeah in some of that yeah, this car is pretty good too what thank you, you it took off like halfway the good thing about cars is one takes off they, and nowadays they all kind of look the same yeah for the most part unless it's like a mustang or something you know what I like to do here, maybe you're not really going to see it that much from here, is get that other um, that other strut on the other side, mm -hmm. and maybe a little hint of the dashboard, and then usually they'll have a break somewhere like here, mm -hmm. and I'll just use that to break. You know, it'll it'll come down and then kind of do that sometimes. Then sometimes on the bottom they'll have a little thing like that. Then they have over designed tail lights usually. And then I might pull this back a little. Yeah, I probably wouldn't actually from this perspective. You know, and maybe a little ground shadow just to anchor it. Mm -hmm. Same thing here. You could probably punch this tree up a little and then you punch this up back here. Now, having said that, if this has got more value on it in the original drawing, then forget what I just said. And a lot of times with this, I'll just take the side of my pencil. And just give that some value. Mm -hmm. Oh, that just remind me, I got to do something after this class. You know, maybe a little line here or there, depending on what the bark looks like. This tree looks pretty good. Thanks. I don't like my line right there. I take that out, but that you get the point. If I give that a big mass right there, it's really going to sit in front. Mm -hmm. Could do it with a little bit of a containment line. What I'm trying to get you guys to do is balance between sort of, uh, I want you to understand what Viscom is, but I don't want this class to turn into a Viscom class. That makes sense? Yeah. I mean, you get so much Viscom like in entertainment classes, all that type of drawing is Viscom, okay? What I want you to know in here is what the difference is between Viscom and other, type, you know, this type of drawing or whatever. <laughs> but I also think that there's a lot of things you can pull out of Viscom um, that help your drawings that you're doing like this. Does that make sense? Yeah. Or when we go draw planes, um, I jump into a total Viscom skill set usually because Viscom is very good for mechanical things, right? Yeah. Which is why you see a lot of people who are very viscom -y coming out of industrial design and all that kind of stuff. And they go into entertainment design. If you ever notice, entertainment design uses that viscom language a lot because the headwaters of entertainment design is industrial design, right? Mm -hmm. 
like all those people they hired for the first Star Wars movie, a lot of them were industrial designers. That's why the ships look believable and all that. Um, so there's certain things you can pull in both, you know, across both skill sets. But what I want you guys to do is have both skill sets. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because there's definitely a place for Viscom, man. Like when you're just communicating ideas quickly, doing props, things like that, or in my case, toy design and stuff like that, um, that Viscom skill set is really handy to have, um, you know? Mm -hmm. But then when I see people's sketchbooks and it's all Viscom, I'm kind of like, well, who are you as an artist? Who are you? Yeah. Because that's not really a stylistic skill set. It's a, it's a communication skill set, mm -hmm. right? And communication is super valuable. If you can't communicate your ideas, nobody cares. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Because I get people all the time and I know I'm snotty about this and it's because I've been in the industry a long time and I just get tired of this stuff. And, I, and you probably have had this too, or people, they tell you they're artistic and then they go, I really got a good eye and all this nonsense. And I always go, where's the, where's the expression of this artistic mastery? Where is it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, where's the drawings? Where's the paintings? Where's the sculpture? What, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? Oh, I designed my house. It's like, give me a break. You know what I mean? And the reason it irritates me is because th this is a very hard skill set to acquire. Okay. Yeah. And it's a, it's a, competitive industry okay and all that kind of stuff it's like don't go around giving yourself the title that all the people who work in that industry work very hard to get you know what i mean yeah i don't go around calling myself a lawyer <laughs> or talk to a lawyer and go yeah you know i'm really good at law I mean, I see so we're, we're that's the bad part about this business is that so many people want to do it or think they can do it you know what i mean yeah. And that's where my annoyance with that came from is that there was, I was always dealing with people who would get involved in the process of something <clears throat> could be the president of some company, whoever could be the person's wife or husband. Oh, my wife or husband is very creative. And they said this, and you go, I don't need that person in this conversation on this product. You know what I mean? Yeah. The guy who was um, the guy who directed enchanted. Remember that movie enchanted? Yeah. He's a perfect example. He <clears throat> was a total asshole. And we would send him, we had scan, scans, obviously, of the characters that we got from like General Giant who scanned them off the actors, right? Mm -hmm. And then we would have, and I don't know who did this because as far as I'm, I know, that guy wasn't a big known entity before that movie, as far as I know. Somebody gave him product approval, which I would never do if I was Disney because Disney doesn't have to do that. So we had to send stuff past him and Disney, or we were in-house. So, you know, they had to go by this thing called the Disney board. But, um, and he would come back with the snottiest comments. And one time he came back to comment, he goes, I showed this to my daughter and she said this. And he just said something really snotty about it. And I'm just like, why are we dealing with this guy? You know what I mean? Yeah. And then we go to the event, you know, they have a screening of it or wherever it was, it was over at ABC. And, um, you know, he's super nice there because he's he's kissing everybody's ass because he wants you to make product based on his movie. You know what I mean? And yeah. him and that other guy, the actor, Patrick Dempsey, he was also a vain idiot, that guy. Anyway, that's why there was no action figure of him, by the way. I was I had a question. Uh -huh. I'm, I was looking to get like a Cintiq so I could draw on my, because I have a desktop but whenever I go and I have to like use my mouse if I'm going to edit something, and I was wondering if you had a recommendation. Okay, number one, you can get an Intuos, which is one of the little pads that sits on a you know sits on your desktop. What's it called? The Intuos, In the I N T U O S. You can get them like Best Buy. Right. <clears throat> They're just a little pad that sits here. It's not you're not drawing on the screen. It's mm -hmm. just it's drawing on your screen. I used one of those forever, and I thought it was fine. And I've seen yours, like when you when you drag the pen over, but you're not actually touching it, it shows where it's at on the screen. Will those do that too? Or well, they're just they're they're not a screen that you're. They're just a little. Uh, they're one. They're. They're these. Right. All right. But you know what I'm saying? Like when, when you're just hovering the pen over it and not touching it, because on the screen, I could see like your cursor moves when you're not even um, drawing on it, actually. That's probably because my hands is hovering over it. But that will do the same thing? Uh, probably. Now, the only reason I'm saying that is those, that one costs like maybe 99 bucks. Okay. Mm -hmm. This one that I'm using here, I think they cost about 800 bucks. 
and this is a 16 it's called a wacom 16 and i like it they gave it to me so i didn't have to pay for it but this is probably the lowest cost one i think right all right. Yeah, I've, I've just never had one of those. So they can get really expensive. The other one they gave me, which is a mobile studio that I don't have to have a computer with. Mm -hmm. I can just take it with me or whatever. That is like four thousand five hundred bucks. And then the the bigger, you know, the bigger ones, the whatever, the 24, whatever they are, I think those are somewhere around twenty five hundred. Now, the other um, option is XP pen makes um, a knockoff of the Wacom. And I think they're pretty good. And I think an XP pin, by the way, you could get what looks like a looks just like a Wacom mm -hmm. or Cintiq. And I think they're about 500 bucks. And it's All a right. bigger one than I got here that costs 800 bucks. I would definitely look into XP pin. I tried them. I thought they were great. I talked to students who have them and I go, are they robust? Are they, you know, are they durable, reliable? And they go, yeah, I have any problems with it. So to me, right. I think the Wacoms personally are just crazy overpriced. Mm -hmm. you know and if does anybody in here have an xp pen i have one at home uh what do you think it's really good it's really good i bought uh about like uh 600 two years ago yeah it's really good i would definitely i would look at the xp pen if you're going to spend a couple hundred bucks I'd, I'd look at the xp pen all right thank you i think that the wacom's are for I, it's a I hate saying this because they're very nice to us, you know, and we do a lot of stuff with them, but I, it's not a well-designed product. Okay. Now, maybe that's just my product design brain that I just go, this isn't well-designed. Well, undes badly designed stuff really annoys me. Okay. This now is a badly designed product now, ever since Jobs died. Okay. <laughs> um, and it's very obvious that the, that, that the design level just went whew, off the cliff when he died mm -hmm. because jobs is the one who and i know he gets criticized for this but i actually don't disagree with it in some ways he's the guy that if you brought this in there now he'd go what the hell is this you know what i mean <laughs> yeah go, you guys think this is this i can put this into the public are you guys crazy and what he would do is go he would always go you break it you own it the whole team's fired i'm bringing in another team that's how he ran his business and I don't believe in being such an a-hole, but I also think that to accomplish what he accomplished, I think he kind of had to be a little bit. Yeah. When you're going to change the universe, the universe doesn't want to be changed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like the people in the universe, trust me. I mean, I've done it on a much smaller scale with product where I go, hey, here's a whole new category I just came up with. Here's a, the, here's a, we can own this category. We can patent it, trademark it, do all that stuff. And because it hasn't been done, they're like, uh, and it's, I'm not kidding you. Some of these, and I'm seeing some of these ideas now, by the way, 10 to 15 years later, right? Yeah. So these companies, I look at this stuff now because there's like three of them I just saw just recently. And I'm like, those are three ideas I pitched at least 15 years ago. Those companies could have owned that 15 <laughs> years ago. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it took 15 years for somebody to get that through to the marketplace. And, and, and it wasn't from a company I did. So somebody just came up with the same idea because it was a good idea. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's just like when you guys work in a class. <clears throat> it's in my illustration class. This happens. It's like some, you know, people are going to land on. I give them this text and they're going to land on some of the same ideas just because those are good ideas. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. That helps. I'll, I'll check those out. Yeah. Check out XP pin. All right. And right now, I don't know if they've moved yet, but they are, they're based in Fullerton. I think somebody told me they're moving to Seattle. Mm -hmm. But they're based in Fullerton, and you can get them. You can get them on uh, Amazon, all that stuff. Yeah. But if you want a screen, you can draw, and I'd go that way because I just they get really cost prohibitive unless you have that kind of money, right? Yeah, I think I think I'd use it. Oh yeah, you'd use it. You have to. Yeah. What's your major? Illustration. Yeah, I mean, you're gonna have to use it. Yeah, exactly. It's 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 a standard tool. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's just what you use now, you know? I mean, there's certain things I would still do traditional, like my uh, my kid's book. I don't want that to be digital. Uh, you know, just certain things. Or if you look at Peter DeSev, he doesn't use digital. He probably uses it here and there to, to edit or whatever, but he doesn't draw that way. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, most I mostly do it traditional, but it would really help to have that tool. You, you what I, my thing is is you have to have both skill sets. Yeah, you just have to because like number one, <clears throat> who cares if you have a Cintiq if you don't know how to draw? Mm -hmm. Right? I mean that's just stupid. And then you still have to learn how to draw. I think there's a lot of people that think the Cintiq is going to make them draw well. <laughs> I think seriously, I, and I again I think that's an extension of video game culture. They see the Cintiq as some sort of game console. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like I see it all the time. And it's like, you don't even care about drawing. Like you want to go into this industry that's highly competitive with people who are un unbelievably talented. I mean, I've walked into places that I've just gone, what in the hell am I doing here? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like they hired me. They yeah. got that person and that person and, and they hired me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, you know, it just blows your mind. You know, and the reason, you know, they're just monster good artists, you know. Okay, where's uh, Jerry at? I'm here. These right here look pretty good. Oh, uh, I'm actually relieved to hear that. These look pretty good. Gets wonkier here. Are these yeah, the but... early ones and this is later? Yeah, I tried. I had a bit of a hard time sketching while standing. Most of the, the places around here, like, aren't really like. Sit on the ground. Yeah. Mm. I'll sit anywhere. I'll sit in a dirty alley. I don't care. I'll sit on a on a road medium. I'll sit anywhere. You know what I mean, Professor? I think your mic's getting staticky. Yeah, it's, my, it's not mine, it's Jerry's. Okay, so what I'd say here is, you can hear me, right? Yeah, I could hear you. What I'd say here now is go into like this one, or just do another one, and punch up this line based on where the light is. Right? And then this, you're doing this on the bricks, you're doing this which is sort of random mark making, you want to make sure that those look like bricks. Okay. And maybe put a little texture on them. Does that make sense? Yeah, I could see that. But I mean, just get them, like this one right here is pretty balanced. Get everything that balanced, this is pretty close. And then go in and start punching your line. Yeah? Yeah. For the collage, right? Uh, just for your drawings. Uh, In general, just go out and do new ones. Don't re rework these. Go out and do new ones. Because your uh, your your mileage is paying off here. These look pretty good. Uh, and then here, now you know, start separating this tree. You're giving me a little bit of information in there. Yeah. yeah. That's good. They're starting to get balanced. I'm muting you because your mic's doing something weird. Hello. What do you think? Um, I think good. it's better than last time. Okay, is this the first ones or later? Uh, those were like the first ones. Okay. Am I going chronologically here? Yeah, I try to put them in order. Good. It's it's helpful when you guys do that because I, I it's nice to see the you'll you'll see it yourself. There's usually a progression. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So like, look at, so all of a sudden they get punchy now, right? Mm -hmm. Look, compared that to that. There's a big difference. Yeah, it looks like you're getting more confident. Yeah. And then look at that. This looks confident and it's punchy. See how punchy it is? Yeah. That feels good, right? Yeah. Feels good to me and I didn't even draw it. <laughs> God, that house looks like that house in Norwalk. That's a trip, man. Uh, right by my house in Fullerton, there's a uh, like storybook lane where there's a bunch of houses that are like protected by the city. Oh, really? And it's like all houses that were like they're like a hundred years old. Well, you I just drive that. down and see all of them. That's cool. 
Yeah. When I was doing a, I was doing a workshop over at Disney, over at the animation studio, and every every day I'd take them out, kind of like this class, to go paint. And uh, I go, and so I go, where do you guys want to go? And they go, well, let's go on. It was the name of the street. I can't remember. And I go, is that that street right behind the studio? And they go, yeah. And I go, that's a neighborhood. I go, I don't want to be sitting in somebody's front yard. They're not going to dig that. And she goes, we own that street. It's not a real street. You know what I mean? Oh my gosh. Yeah. So if you go down the, if you go down the animation or no, the, the, well, it's across the street from the animation studio, I think this, the, there's a, a street, just if there's a neighborhood behind the studio, right. Mm -hmm. But that first street, I don't know how many streets back, but I think, I, I think it's just that street. It just looks like a suburban neighborhood, but they bought all the houses so they could film and stuff there. So then we went over there and painted there. It was kind of cool because you could just sit anywhere you want. That is cool. Yeah, it was totally cool. But it's just, they're just suburban. It's just a suburban track home. But it was kind of cool. Then I think when I went there the next time, they were filming something. They were filming one of those Disney Channel shows on there. Mm. They probably use it a lot for that. Because I think a lot of those take place in just like neighborhoods or whatever. But I want to stay in the studio a lot because there's all kinds of fun stuff to draw in the studio a lot. Right. But, you know, they, they work every day. So then it's like no big deal. <clears throat> okay, these this like this one here looks really balanced. Now I want you to start adding that information we're starting to talk about now in here, correct? Correct, yeah. Make sure that you give me enough up here. So I feel like it's actually, you know, see, I can just add that much and it helps it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I like that you kind of punch these a little bit. I could probably just put a couple of things around that and it's fine. That's all it needs. Okay. Cause I don't want all this empty in here. Now I also don't want it over full either. Right. Right. And then, you know, separate a couple of things here, like here, you could separate that. And separate this. That way we're going to get that to really pull forward. Yeah. Yeah. So now, and you're doing it like a lot getting punchy here. Like this one, I think is really good. That's nice and punchy and it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel incoherent in, in your mark making. So like sometimes uh, in this class, I only had one bad class in this class. Actually, I've usually had really good classes in here, but I mean, some are really amazing, but um Sometimes when we start talking about this line weight thing, then they come in and every single line is really heavy. You know what I mean? And I go, no, 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 you've got to, you've got to manage that line. So the viewer knows basically where the light is, right. Mm -hmm. Or where something's coming forward. Like you're, you're managing all that stuff with your line. <clears throat> and the reason that I, for all this time, I've been saying, don't add a bunch of value to it is people try to, uh, and it comes out of when you're a kid, I think people try to put value or they call it shading. I hate that word. Um, and they think that's going to make it look like a good drawing. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the reason I want you to use line is I want you to understand. I mean, line is super valuable. You've got to know how to do that. That's what's really going to push your drawings up where they look pro. And it's also how you're going to be able to do very quick sketches that are very readable. Does that make sense? Yeah. You never want to be in a meeting and people don't understand what you're presenting. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you do that, and I probably said this in here before, and the reason I can always say it is because it's really important. There's nothing worse than getting up in a meeting. You think you got something good. And then everybody starts going, what is that? What's that thing over there? And you're like, oh shit, there goes my presentation. <laughs> it's true. And then every time that's happened to me in my head, I go, we're not, this ain't going to fly. They're not going to do this. They don't get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it never, and it never has. Okay. So you understand that, right? Yeah. Now you're going to start giving me some, start really defining this kind of stuff, right? Yeah. You know, and then what's really nice when you get a handle on foliage, because I don't know if everybody's like me, but I was terrified of foliage when I was learning this stuff. Cause I just thought, I don't, it's billions of leaves. What the hell am I going to do with this? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's so much information and all that stuff. But then once I understood how to do it, it's a really good tool for your drawings because like if you have this, you know, and I do the same thing all the time, but if I have all this hard geometry, well, maybe I put a tree back here, right? Or a bush here or, you know, down here or whatever. So it becomes a, um, a really strong, powerful design tool, right? Right. 
you know, sometimes I'm doing like a big city scene or something like that. Then I have this area that's like, I don't know what to do with that. And then I go, oh, I'll put some trees in there. It needs trees anyway, you know, and it just eats up a lot of space very simply and it looks cool. Okay, where? All right. I got your lunch. Okay. Whose mic is on? Okay, Haley, does that all make sense? Okay, good. That's, this stuff looks good. Yeah. Now I got to go. Can you draw in that neighborhood? Huh? Is there a park or anything in that neighborhood you could draw the houses? Oh, my dad just drives me in and we just park across the street and I just That's draw cool. it. I have my own personal chauffeur. <laughs> That'll be a nice memory later. It is. We get a chat and he can't run away. Yeah. It's quality hostage time. Quality hostage time. <laughs> Which is good. That's cool that uh, he, you know, he supports you that way. Yeah. And there's a lot of parent, at least, I don't know if it's still like that. When I was young, you know, if you'd go, I want to be an artist, your, most parents would be like, what are you, insane? <laughs> and then they'd always go like, you're not living here for the rest of your life, because that's what they think is going to happen. They go, yeah, you're going to be down in the basement making paintings until you're 40? I know. You're not doing that. <laughs> luckily, my parents weren't like that, luckily. Okay, where's, uh, who is this? Jennifer. I'm here. Oh, there you are. Wait. Okay, what do you think? Um, so, uh, <laughs> some of them, I... I did during like my lunch breaks and those I really didn't like how they came out. I need to spend time warming up a lot more. Yes. The ones that I was able to spend longer on came out okay. Um, but I'm just maybe I'll try drawing at home. Like I work from home. So uh first before going out so that I'll have that time since I don't have as much you know time. What I usually do in this class, like before like when we're usually doing field trips. Because what you just said about warming up, I think I've talked about this, you have got to get warmed up when you're doing this, okay? Right. And, and part of the reason that I say that so much is like, I can usually in this class, I can get people to start improving pretty quickly, right? Yeah. And the reason I like that is because that, that to me is what propels you forward. When you start seeing your work get better, it makes you want to do it more and you, and you feel good about it, right? Right, yeah. And it's not like, here's a trophy for showing up. It's like, no, here's a trophy because that's bitching. You know what I mean? So you right. can tell people that it's something really good because it is. And um, but on the other side of that, I've had people where a lot of people where I go, where's my 10 pages or whatever it is. They give me like two half ass drawings and I go, right. I don't even have one page here. And they always go, hey, I did those two drawings and they sucked, you know, and I go, right. What's that got to do with anything. So you just, get right. and I go, you have to get warmed up. I go, you know, yeah. and I always pull out my sketchbook and I go, look at all these crappy drawings in here. You know what I mean? Look how many crappy drawings are in my sketchbook, dude. I mean, we right. all make crappy drawings. I've been doing this forever and making a living at it forever. And I still make crappy drawings. You know what I mean? And yeah. Here, what I usually do in here, and it speaks to what you just said. If we're going to wherever, we're going to the Natural History Museum, I usually leave super early. I go someplace, I get breakfast, and I start drawing people at breakfast to warm myself up because I know the first thing I do walking into class is I'm going to go, okay, everybody, here's how you draw a dinosaur. And I do a demo, right? I want to be warmed up when I do that. Otherwise, I just look like some dope. Like they're probably looking at me going, you're not drawing that very good. You know what I mean? Because I'm not warmed up, right? Right. And then on the other side of that, if you get really on fire, like I'm telling you, man, if you go someplace and you're having a, a, a coffee shop or whatever, or for me, farmer's market, went to farmer's market last week. I just hung out there all day and just drew people, wandered around, ate. Uh, if you do that where you're really into it and like you look at your watch and you go holy shit i've been here four hours and you feel like it's a half hour you will walk out of that place a different artist than you walked in especially at this stage of your development does that make sense yeah you will like do stuff that you you had no idea you could do and you'll do it in the space of four to six hours if you're just doing you know sitting there having a good time and drawing you'll get so warmed up it'll just start everything you do will start working and and then that to me is what's addictive right right yeah and what you said earlier about like um 
it was on someone else's about like how to do better like straight lines you've mentioned that before but like just hearing it again helped because I know that was something I struggled with a lot of these like I would draw the line and then I would try to try to darken it and I would not draw over the same part yeah and so then I'd be like oh now it looks fuzzy and it doesn't look clear yeah so you want to get that clear and by the way I'm going to repeat myself a lot in here because it's important to right I mean we're dealing with a drawing tool and line for the most part I mean there's a lot more to it obviously but um so I'm going to repeat myself a lot and I think a lot of those things I have to repeat because I'm not you know it's got to get smacked into your head you know what I mean right and what you just said is that <laughs> is a good point that I didn't bring up when you're doing that straight line thing so like if I go out sometimes I like to just go out with a pen and a, and a sketchbook or whatever and not have an eraser not have anything and then um, what's important there is I have one pen so and I usually use it like a g2 like an 05 or something or maybe right. a pen or something so what I to your point I have to be pretty accurate with those when I'm hitting lines again because I'm going to darken them up so it looks like a fatter pin but I'm just hitting that same line over and over again right like really accurately and building it I love doing that by the way I don't know why uh, I love hatching with like pins I just like all that stuff um and that's just something that's a mechanical um skill you know what yeah. I mean? like you got to develop it the, the thing that bothers me so much I probably said this and the reason I go back to like when I bag on certain types of educational approaches, it's because I found those very frustrating when I was a student. And it's because I just look at things in a very, maybe that's why I'm a designer or whatever, but I see things as like, that's a problem. Solve the damn problem. Does that make sense? Yeah. And they don't, they just keep doing it. It's, it's bizarre to me. I just look at these things and I go, guys have been teaching this like this forever and it doesn't work. Like, why would you keep doing this? You know what I mean? Yeah. And one of those things is the, the handling of the tools you're using. It, I just never understood that. Like you either have teachers that go, I remember teachers like this, you hold your pencil like that. Right. And I'm like, I know, but sometimes, you know, but no, it's like this or get out of my class. Is that kind of crap? Right. And it's like, okay, number one, there is no one way to hold a pencil. Okay. But what you do need to think about, and you'll develop your own technique around it. And for me, it, it, it's developed with that very far back, then in the middle. And then what am I doing? I'm going very broad strokes, loose, and kind of knocking everything in, sort of placing it. Then I'm getting a little more accurate when the middle, but not too accurate. And then I'm dancing my heavy lines and my more mechanical things over the top, right? Right. And that's just an approach that works for me. And I also like that approach, especially with pencil, because I like to sort of marry the line and tone a little bit. So one's not, it doesn't feel like a real hard um, outline-y kind of thing. It feels more, a little more painterly. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what I want, what, what I think it works for drawing and this kind of thing, sketching and everything, um, is, is you need to have, uh, um, what do you call that? Technique. Yeah. Right? And technique, I and mean, the thing that bothers me is they teach a technique and everything else. They teach technique in baseball. They teach a technique in basketball. Here's how you throw, you know, here's how you do this. But with art, they don't do it. And I, you know, and, and a lot of it gets couched in hippy dippy doodah artist, artist crap. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then you, yeah. and I say this is that you have to identify this. You're responsible for your, your education, right? Right. And you're responsible for making sure that you're getting value. Okay. It makes sure yeah. you're in a class where somebody's really teaching you something, okay? Because I had a lot of classes when I was uh, going to school where, I, and now I look back on it, I go, I didn't learn shit in that class. You know what I mean? Yeah. I didn't learn anything. And now when I look back on it, you know, because sometimes I look these people up, you know, and I go, whatever happened to that person? And I'll find their work and I go, oh, that's why that class sucked because his work sucked. He doesn't know how to do this. He doesn't know how to draw. I, yeah. You know, now I go look at their work, you know, and then I figured that out and I, I would start really seeing what teachers were good at what and I go, oh, I'm going to take a drawing class with that person. They draw really well. You know what I mean? Or I'm going to take a drawing class or whatever class with that person. Cause they have an approach that I don't necessarily like. And I think it'd be good for me to get pushed out of my comfort zone. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you know, there's a lot of ways to do this. I'm not saying this is the only way to do it. There is no only way to do it. Okay. <laughs> but what I'm trying to give you is technique. Hopefully I'm trying to give you something that's quantifiable. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's not hippy dippy doo crap. I'm, I'm trying to do this where when you enter this class, you exit it better than you entered it, right? Yeah. Hopefully a lot better. And I get that a lot, okay? And I think a lot of that is just because 
they get you guys get a methodology and just that alone in whatever you're learning it in when you get a solid methodology then you repeat that methodology over and over again you're gonna get better at it you know what i mean yeah but the problem is like when i was a kid i was drawing all the time but totally unstructured totally unschooled totally not really getting getting little glimpses of information from the library maybe so i didn't really have that you know i was drawing all the time but it wasn't structured and it wasn't um there was no technique around it. it was just the, what i did you know what i mean yeah and then i didn't really get any technique i never i don't think i ever drew much of anything from life until i went to college and that boy the, doing this in college is what shot my drawing through the roof you know what i mean right okay so you got to get a little bolder here right yeah i feel like i need to take better pictures too oh, okay that could uh, be some of the detail is like not that looks okay. like well not that, that it was like necessarily better detail or better like what you um, need to do when just you're taking i tried pictures, getting when you're taking pictures go uh -huh. to go, uh, take them somewhere with diffused light right like i have i think i've said this but I, like in our living room the, there's no direct light in there so it just gets a lot of diffused light throughout the room mm -hmm. and it's a really good that's where i film my tutorials and stuff because the light's really good in there you know, right. you don't want to be in any kind of direct light. You don't want to be in too dim a light. And I wouldn't shoot it under unnatural light. I'd shoot it under natural diffuse light. Okay. Like on a porch. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you don't want to get that big glare because that'll blow everything out. And then you don't want it too dark. You know, you just want a nice even light. Yeah. Some artists like North Light in their studios because North Light is diffused all day. There's never a, a glaring light coming in the window. It's always diffused soft light. Right. <clears throat> which is the best thing to paint with but, or the best kind of light to paint to like this one here is starting to work this one up here yeah yeah i i did feel that i'm there were some things that were a little bit like easy like not maybe not easier but that i i found that i was doing that worked better than last week or the week before last week just by trying to like make the the lines heavier if they were more in shadow yeah and and um what you know what's what's really fun about the learning process and this kind of stuff is that if you keep doing it all of a sudden you're probably already having these moments all of a sudden you'll crack it in your brain something will open up and you go and all of a sudden you can do it and all of a sudden it's just clear you know what i mean right like i crave that i'm actually trying to do that right now because when you've been doing it a long time, your your kind of victories are further apart, right? Right. And I know I'm right on the verge of a couple of different things, but I can't quite crack it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I'm right there. It's right out of my fingertips, which is frustrating. But and I'm not even quite sure what it is. But I'm like, I know I'm about to hit some new plateau, but I I can't quite get there. You know. And then in between that, I go through these periods. Like I just went through a really bad drawing period where I was drawing like crap. Okay. And it's super discouraging, you know what I mean? Because you're like, well, was that what happened? Yeah. You know, what like what happened? I just all of a sudden I can't do this anymore. Yeah. My friend calls it uh because I talked to her and I go, What do you uh I don't know? We're always talking about art stuff, and she and I go, What are you doing? She goes, trying to learn how to draw again. And I go, What do you mean? She goes, I forgot how to draw. And ever since she said that, I go, I'll call her up and go, I forgot how to draw. <laughs> Yeah, okay, so when you're establishing these big shapes here, let's see. What I'd say is it feels not here. And then when you're getting things, okay, so when you're getting things that are in perspective like this. Right. Try and take that out of your brain that it's perspective. It's just a line at an angle, right? Right. My hand's shaking. Um, and then it kind of takes it out of that. Okay. And again, that's another step of trying to teach your brain to see abstractly. Right. Yeah. Um, and see, I kind of try and flatten everything into a sort of a pattern. Right. And then mm -hmm. I'm just sort of putting the puzzle together, sort of. Right. Um, but like, what was I going to say here? That's not too bad. Here, here, no. Here. This one feels a little bit like it's going shape to shape and you didn't knock in the, the big super shapes in there first. 
Right. It's like slanted. -ish. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is that what happened here? Um, I don't. I'm trying to remember. So what I do is. Um, you know, I just try and get these big ideas in here and I, I, I draw them super loose. I don't even worry about them being all that perfect or anything. And I go, how far does that come down? Is there an eave there? That. And then I go, okay, where does this line up? Just like you did. Okay. It lands right there in relation to the roof line. Then that comes out, goes here. And then, okay, then that does this. And I just try and get all this blocked in. And what I'm doing here and, and what will help you, like I said, get a little mirror, right? Right. And then when I, after you get it, this, see, this is starting to pinch quite a bit in perspective. Yeah. And then what I do is once I get this in here and I'm, and I'm off too, but um, then I go, is, are these shapes working? Right. Yeah. So the mirror is going to do this. And I can see if this is holding up or not. Right. You know, and then I go, okay, well, this isn't right. You know, so I'd have to fix that. And actually it's probably whatever. And if I know if these, these shapes are holding together, I'm probably going to be, it's probably not going to be a bad drawing. Does that make sense? Yeah. But don't move forward until this whole, the main shapes are working. Right. And then... And then go, right? Yeah. And that's the stuff, when I'm blocking that in, that's the stuff where I'm way back here on the pencil. Right. Because I just want to keep it nice and loose, you know? And yeah. what I'm trying to, okay, so what I'm trying to get you guys also to understand is <laughs> another thing that I've identified in, in just in general with students is they don't know how to make a finished drawing. Does that make sense? Yeah. So what we're trying to do in here is go, the philosophy is if you start this thing off really loose, you're probably going to end up with a very much, much more natural feeling drawing. Does that make sense? Yeah. Even if I'm going to, even if it's something mechanical, like when I do planes, I, I ghost that in pretty, uh, even though I'm using a real inky pen, I usually use a pen there. I'm sort of just throwing those shapes down as light as I can and just lining up the shapes. And then I, I go at it. Right. And that's going to even make that mechanical object not look so stiff. Right. Yeah. And then, so what I'm always trying to go to is go, look, you can take any super loose sketch you do and tighten it as tight as you want to go. Right. But yeah. I get people right now, we're doing it in illustration and we're doing it in a, a traditional media. Right. Yeah. We're, we're getting, I'm, it, the, we've been on this, just the drawing part for like this whole term. Right. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, is because they have to paint that. And there's a certain level of finish and design that has to be in that drawing to be, for it to be paintable. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then what I notice is a lot of people fall apart on that, right? And it's not, it's not a bad thing. It's just part of the learning process. If you realize like, holy crap, the stuff I've been drawing doesn't really hold up when I tighten it up. It's, it gets really stiff and really wonky and weird. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. And I've had it happen to me a lot when I was, when I was working. I throw something down. I'd have to tighten it for some reason. I start tightening. I mean, I go, this drawing sucks. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was really, it was really irritating because at first I go, oh, it's fine. Then I start. Yeah. It, it just looks like crap. So you want to know how to go various things. Okay. Presentation. Like, let's say thumbnail, very clear thumbnails. Okay. Very clear, rough presentational kind of stuff. Right. Then maybe very, you know, much more tightened up if you were going to do a background layout or something, right? Yeah. You want to be able to take all your stuff through all the different types of finish. In this class, I like a fairly loose, um, sketchy, you know, we're doing sketches in here because I believe that sketching this, this, this skill set is one of your most important, it's probably the most important skill set you'll have. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, if you're a 3D person and you're a monster at that, then that's probably going to be your major skill set. But if you want to do visual development, if you want to do any of that stuff, any kind of design or whatever, um, this is going to be your most important thing. And it's right. also going to, this isn't really, I mean, yes, I couch it in the word sketching or whatever. It's really drawing too. 
right? Yeah. So part of this class for me was also, it was a couple of things. It was everything I just said, but it was also a reaction to basic drawing because people come out of basic drawing and all of them tell me, this, and I, I was the same way. I go, I didn't learn anything in there. You know what I mean? Right. Like you taught me how to draw real stiff, you know? Yeah. Thanks. Now I got to wash that out of my drawing in five years when I figure out that I'm drawing stiff. You know what I mean? Yeah. So what I'm trying to do is, is hopefully cut that part off your learning curve. Yeah. Okay. And, and knowing now, yeah, you have to go take base drawing because it's a requirement or whatever. But if you go into that now with this mindset, you kind of know like, oh, that's not a good technique. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or that way that you're talking about doing tree bark is horse crap. You know what I mean? That doesn't work. Like, are you yeah. looking at tree bark? Have you ever seen tree bark? It doesn't look like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like all this texture stuff they do in there. It's just, it's not practical. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to get you guys on a practical skill set that's again quantifiable and employable. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So are these later, these ones here? Um, that was the the first one actually, because I was on a, a weekend. So I was able to sit down for longer to do it. Yeah, especially when you're first starting out, um, you need you do need some time. Yeah. Now I don't negate though, you know, if I sit down, I always say this, and I know it's a bad analogy, but I, I always say it's like smoking. If I sit down or if I'm hanging out, whatever I'm doing, you know, I'm somewhere, I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to sketch. That's just what I yeah. do. You know what I mean? And what, I, and another thing I want to do is I want to make this habitual for you. Okay. I want you to get where you're just naturally in your sketchbook all the time. Is that right. Like, yeah. Not, not I'm going to sketching on Saturday. And, I mean, that's, right. there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. It's, that's fun. Like I just told you, I went out to farmer's market. I went out to farmer's market just to sketch because it's just fun. Right. And I yeah. get super buzzed off doing that, especially lately because it's there's not as much of it. I haven't been able to do it. I got so buzzed drawing at uh, farmer's market. I sent my girlfriend a text and I was like, I'm having a blast, you know, a bunch of exclamation points and stuff because I was having so much fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. Man, you put headphones on and, and a, in a good spot, sketch or paint or something. It's just like, it's that thing that everybody's chasing. It's like meditation. It's like Zen. It like gives you this euphoric feeling. I mean, I hope you guys are getting some of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you'll get it really the buzz when you start getting better at it. The better you get at it, the more addictive it becomes, the more fun it becomes. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I love drawing. It's like afterwards, it's disappointing when it doesn't come out the way that it I thought it was coming out or I didn't welcome, stop welcome and check it out. Right. I, but I mean, I love the process. It's just sure. like therapeutic. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I like uh, the finished things. I, I think I tend to go, Hey, these are pretty good. And then like a day later I go, why did I think these were good? Yeah. You know, and then once in a while I get one, I go, eh, I think that one is good. You know, My thing is whenever I see something off balance in the drawing, that's what drives me crazy with my drawings. If I see something off balance. Okay. So like these obviously punch them up. Right. And then is there a garage door here? Yeah. The whole thing was kind of weirdly like. I would have just I, made this because it's a pretty simple shape. Right. Maybe it's a roll up door. I might put a couple of windows. They have like these windows in them. And that way it just gives it some, something there to fill that space. Right. And again, I know when you're first starting this, you're not really big on like, I'm just going to make stuff up. I get it. That, that comes, you know, with time. Okay. Yeah. And all that drawing out of your head stuff and all that stuff. I probably said this already, but it's, um, it's, uh, it's experiential. It's experience, right? Yeah. You just start understanding how things work after a while and you draw enough things you, you just start knowing how to do it it's weird i don't know if that happens for everybody but i think if you don't overly focus on it because i think a lot of people focus on that idea of drawing out of their head or painting out of their head or whatever uh, and then i think they start to put it together in this weird systemic way which is usually like a very viscommy style where it's like build a box anybody's telling you this like i'm going to teach you how to draw out of your head they're going to do basically viscom and like make a box and do this and do that and it's like okay that's just going to make me draw totally stiff. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, yes, we're using basic shapes when we're looking at basic shapes, but what we're trying to do is do it in a, in a, in a cool artistic way, right? Not just mechanic. Cause this to me, I love this drawing, but the problem with it is it looks like technical sketching, like almost like a technical drawing. 
Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. And that's great for like presentation or something if you got to do that. But if it's the only way you can draw, it's very stiff and it's very limiting. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you're not going to probably be working on organic things or characters or anything like that because they're going to go, that person's got an industrial design skill set. It's not really, I had people like that on my team. And I remember right. the man, I remember a drawing, I might've told you guys this. I remember a drawing going past me and the guy was really good. Both of them were really good industrial designers, but industrial designers draw like that. And then I saw a drawing go past me one time and my manager was, the manager works for me was standing there and I go, and I saw it go by and I go, wait a minute, what's that? And it was one of the princesses or something. It was like a final drawing or something for some, I don't remember what it was. And, uh, and he goes, oh, that's for the blah, blah, blah product. I don't remember what it was. And uh, I go, is that a final drawing? And he goes, yeah. And I go, by whose standards? I go, that's so far off model. It's ridiculous. And it's crazy stiff. And then uh, I go, who drew that? And he goes, Brian. And, and I didn't know that it was Brian's drawing and Brian was sitting right there. So he got all bummed out. And right. I, didn't, I didn't mean to do that. But um, it, what I was actually angry at was my, the, as the manager who worked for me, I go, and I, and so I pulled him aside. I go, Brian, it's fine. I go, you're not a character artist. That's fine. You do what you do really well. Because he did. And, um, and I pulled Marty aside and I go, why would you give uh, a character f uh, art to an industrial designer? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, why would you do that? I, and I go, plus this place is lousy with character artists. Like we have two of them on this team. That's what they're here for. Give right. it to Mario, give it to Dwight. You know, those guys are character artists. They'll nail that stuff all day long. Why would you do that? It's just a stupid management decision. You know what I mean? Yeah. The point is, is that, you know, you can have a drawing skill set that doesn't translate across a lot of different things. Okay. I, I think it's much better to have a, just a great drawing skill set. And then, yeah, you can draw in that Viscomi way. Yeah, you can draw in a luster way. Yeah, you can draw characters. Yeah, you can turn things around. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Put things in motion, right? And that's the next phase of this. When we first people, just getting the idea of people down. I'll start talking about that next week. And then, um, and then starting getting comfortable enough with the people. Well, now I'm starting to get nuance and I'm starting to get gesture and I'm starting to get mid conversation. I'm starting to get interaction between, you know, all that stuff, right? Yeah. Because if like you want to go in the animation world or anything like that, you better have that. You better have a lot of miles behind you on drawing people. Right. Otherwise, I don't know. I was just talking this about this yesterday. I don't know how you could possibly think you're going to be an animator if you're not in a sketchbook checking out people all the time. That's your job. Yeah. Your job is, is not just. Um, uh, I mean, the, the job of an animator is, t is acting, obviously right yeah i think a lot of animators you hear them talking and, and it's weird like a lot of them are really into the animation the acting but they're not really into drawing which is totally weird to me like they're not not into drawing but they're not that they're not crazy into drawing you know and you know, glenn Keane is he's crazy into drawing and you know look at where he's at he's like considered the best living animator on the planet right right but when you hear glenn by the way i, I suggest all of you do this there's an old podcast. He doesn't update anymore. And was done by Clay Cadis when he was over at um, Disney. Now he's directing and stuff like that. And he's not there anymore. Um, and he was really smart. He was working there and he goes, man, there's all these guys have been these legendary guys who've been here forever. I'm going to do a podcast just so I can interview him. Cause this stuff should be put down and recorded. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So he did this thing called the animation uh, podcast. It's still out there. He doesn't update it anymore, but the old ones are up there. Listen to all those because it's just shop talk, which is what I love about it. It's not promoting anything. It's just talking about shop. And I love that. Okay. And Glenn Keen, every time that, that one in particular, I think he spends half that thing just talking about drawing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and you can just tell how much he loves drawing and how much he loves art and how much he loves animation. And, and he's got some really good stories in there about imposter syndrome, okay? How he got imposter syndrome when he was at, uh, working on Beauty and the Beast. He was already a huge big deal. And he's sitting there going, they're going to fire me. Wow. You know? And it was so um, good to hear because I had that. I've had that before. I Probably everybody has. And right. I just thought it was me. There was no word for it back then. I just thought it was me. And he's sitting there and he, in his thought process was exactly what went through my head at the same thing. I was sitting in my office going, they're going to fire me. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. What the hell am I doing here? You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I just go, oh, well, whatever. 
I'll just, you know, and he did the same thing. He's like, he, in his thought process, did the same thing. They're going to fire me. <clears throat> they finally are going to figure out I'm a fraud. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, I'll get a smaller house. I'll, I'll drive a uh, more reasonable price car. And he started planning his life after this when he got fired. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then he went out and he looked at some, I think some Rodin sculptures. He loves Rodin. And then bingo light went off because he was working on, I think he was working on the scene in the beauty and the beast where he transforms uh, back into being a human. Okay. And he couldn't crack it. Okay. Where's Joyce? What do you think? Uh, I, I, think I, really pretty damn good. Really? I struggled with uh, like time management, like, some drawings that spent like an hour plus and I couldn't even finish them. And then some drawings okay. that were like- Are you talking about the length of time you're spending on the, the drawing? Yeah. Oh, don't worry about that right now. Okay. Don't worry about that right now. This is not a class. We're learning how to sketch quickly and observationally and all that stuff. But the, the, this is not a class where, okay, I'm gonna stopwatch and click and then start doing a drawing. That, <laughs> the, the drawing, the speed will happen. You don't have to really concentrate on that. What you got to do is just do this and yeah. you will get faster at it. It's not about speed. It will be, it, speed will just happen. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I just think that like um, some of them, like I could have done better if I spent more time I, on I, it. I, I can pull, I can, you want me to sit here and pull out the hundreds and, or thousands of drawings I have in here? Every single one of them I could make better. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> That's why I hate that when people use that word perfectionist. Okay. That's a, that's a BS word. It doesn't mean anything. And then right. and most of the time when people tell me they're perfectionist, like I go, how come you didn't finish this? Cause it's usually they're not getting things done. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm kind of a perfectionist. And I go, I, and the, I, it's always the same thing to me. I go, what's perfect about this. You know what I mean? I go, this mm -hmm. is a lousy drawing and you're telling me you're mm -hmm. a perfectionist. And the reason you're not getting mm. the work done is because you're a perfectionist. What a bunch of crap. That's an excuse. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And, and I don't like that word because it's like, to me, when people tell me that, number one, I always go, well, where's the perfect work then? You're such a perfectionist. Where's this perfect work? Because I've never made anything perfect. You know yeah. what I mean? Now, yeah, I think Bill Anton yeah. has made things that are perfect. You know <laughs> I, mean? I think, uh, uh -huh. I, was, I was thinking about this this morning. Bill Anton's probably made paintings I think are perfect. That I look at and I go, well, I wouldn't, I don't know what you change on that. It's perfect, you know, mm -hmm. or a couple other painters, like, or Rupert von Kaufman. I think he makes paintings that are kind of perfect, uh, you know, to my eyes. But if you go talk to Bill Anton, that's not what he's going to say. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's going to go, do you think that's perfect? Look at that. How I do. <laughs> all he's going to see is all the stuff that he thinks sucks. Right. Yeah. You know, it's just, that's why he's so good. You know, mm, yeah. what I, I really like this one a lot. And I like the way the front end of it is sort of, you know, worked out and then it sort of vignettes off. Mm -hmm. And then it's got this, it's a nice little designy thing, this little thing here. The thing I do here is probably just get that a little more, like I'd make a bigger statement with this tire. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason for that is I'm not seeing the whole car. So I got to use, a lot of times I just draw this as one shape and then put that in. Then I'd put the little, I'd shadow in the little, Stuff I in like the, the interior. Oh, I see. And a lot of times, what I'll do is I'll just put the whole, I'll just put a little tone there, and mm -hmm. then I'm, and then I might just take my eraser and kind of just swipe out a little bit, and and then the other stuff. It's kind of like if you watch that video that I put up this week. When I put the the pond in, I put a big shape in, right? Mm -hmm. Then I start pulling a few dark shapes in, so I'm reflecting in, and yeah. then over the top of that, take a kneaded eraser and then pull the the ripple highlights out over it. and then you all of a sudden you notice uh, everything sits down underneath that ripple highlight and it feels like a water reflection does that make sense yeah so mm -hmm. <laughs> it's always the big idea right and then yeah. we're moving into the smaller ideas does that make sense yeah i tend to get like i start big and then i get like caught up in like something small and then i spend a lot of time on okay, that that's and okay that's okay so what we're trying to do is undo uh I'm usually trying, and I just think this is how everybody's brain kind of works. Mm -hmm. We're trying to undo that. We're trying to, to go, um, and we're trying to have a solid methodology, okay? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And that methodology means training your brain to go, I put lock this thing together with these big shapes. Mm -hmm. Then I go to the next small shape. Then I go to the next small shape. Then I go to small shapes and I'm out. Okay. Right. Yeah. And the way I always put that is there towards the end of the drawing. I like the whole mm -hmm. process, but I love it towards the end when I'm, I'm going to hit that line a little bit. I'm going to darken that <laughs> yeah. up. And, and I, yeah. it feels like dancing to me. Mm -hmm. Like if I have music on in my head and I'm drawing something, it totally feels rhythmic and it feels very joyful and dance-like to me, if that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. That's right. And um, in my mind, I always say this, in my mind, they see some schlubby old guy over in the corner looking into a book, but in my mind, I'm like dancing at Studio 54. You know what I mean? That's what's going on in my head. Like that kind of, mm. it's a party in my head, right? Mm, yeah. Weird. Like the world perceives yeah. you very quiet over there, but what's going on in your head is so active, right? Mm, yeah. But, um, you know, so, but we got to put a methodology around that, okay? And then it gets, and then what I always say about it is when I get to that last part where I'm dancing over it and just having all this fun with it, yeah, that's the dance, right? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. what I always say is you've got to set up the banquet hall You've got to mm -hmm. hire the band. You got to put up mm -hmm. the balloons. Notice yeah. my analogy is about from the 1970s, by the way. You got to put up the <laughs> balloons. You got yeah. to decorate. You got to invite everybody. Yeah. Put Try everything out. The and then everybody yeah. gets there. And then you get to dance because you built the, the environment. Mm -hmm. You got to do that. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You have to follow a methodology. And by the way, I know your methodology will probably change. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Or evolve. And that's fine, but I'm trying to give you a very solid methodology that you can grab onto now. Yeah. And start and start to put your your repetition and your mileage in service to an actual methodology, so it's actually paying off mm -hmm. more. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. In that way, I don't have to think about it later on. Yeah. I feel eventually, like really eventually you won't myself. think at all about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like at one point you couldn't read. And it was very difficult. And then you were like, uh, uh, you know, now, now think about it. You can't see a phrase written down that you can't not read. You, you automatically read it. Yeah. Like try and go through the world and not read anything. It's impossible because everything you see, you just automatically read it. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, it, this is the same thing. Mm -hmm. You don't think about how you write your name and eventually you're not going to think about how you draw either. Other than you probably just want to get better and all that. I might put a bumper on here. Hmm. and part of that's because i want to break this edge of that silhouette a little bit my bumper is clunky but you get it and there was nothing on this wall here i was i just didn't finish it or i couldn't finish it i forget what it was so yeah this would be nice to have something up here hmm. yeah <laughs> and then get a little more um now you're going to start you know getting a little more information in here hmm. yeah it probably doesn't have to be a lot you know maybe i put something here like a plant or something yeah. and again the plant might be over here i'll move it over here right yeah design choices like something like a plant i don't think that's a big leap to move because they're like it's not that they don't have perspective but they tend to be very yeah. uh amoeba right. shapes and stuff like that right yeah yeah i like this one too thank you I like this truck. I'd give it a ground plane. See how it anchors mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This tree I might have gone darker with. I would have mm -hmm. gone darker with it. We probably okay. would have silhouetted that. Maybe yeah. put a few things back here, something back here. And mm -hmm. by the way, I'm probably back here if I was going to put anything. I'd probably just do what I just did and just kind of put a, a silhouette there. Mm -hmm. Just give you the leaf edges on the sh on the edges, the leaf shapes. Yeah. On the hey, that looks a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> what what is it doing? Why does that work? Uh, it's it's like sticking up the front shoes more. I don't it's, know. Like it's it's a it's a unifying mass. Uh, okay, so okay. what it's doing is it's locking that area together. It's locking the tree and all that stuff together. Mm. So it's a unifying mass, which is why you want to mass your shapes. You want to find. And by the way, massing shapes is in this case is a design tool again, right? Mm, right. Because when you're drawing even observationally you're designing correct yeah so and then over here i might put you know there's some plants or something over here because mm. i don't want to probably do the same thing i did here maybe so maybe it's a lower thing against the house mm. yeah, and also too. you got a little bit of it to make sure that fascia boards there sometimes if it's blank like that i'll just add in 
the little mm-hmm. boards there just to make it more interesting looking. I think that one reads pretty good. Mm-hmm. What's this person doing? He's stolen orange and <laughs> He stole an orange. It was like the Orange County Fruit Exchange. Did he actually oh. steal an orange? No, it was my imagination. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> he looks like he's dancing with an orange. <laughs> right? Oh, gosh. <laughs> he's supposed to be like sneaking away, but it's probably going to be that way. <laughs> well, how would you do it? He'd be, you know, probably shoulders up a little bit. He's holding the orange here. And then I get what he's doing. And then it's kind of sneaking away. <laughs> I'd probably hunch him up a little more. Mm. And uh, when we get to people, there's i uh, I've already talked about this, that guy, Ian Abondo guy, but there's an, a lot of things he does. Oh, I like this one too. Where's that at? It's uh, Andrea. Coney? Oh, Coney. Yeah. You remember the Coneheads? That's way before your time. Uh, yeah, I mean, I can forget them. Where is that at? And Brea, it's this like hole in the wall, hole in the wall restaurant okay. called Place Burger. But I'm starving, man. Yeah. <laughs> making me hungry. <laughs> Actually, a burger sounds good. Okay, these I think are pretty balanced, and they're um they're pretty bold. Yeah, these ones I spent a um, longer time on. They're what? I spent a longer time on these ones. Okay, so you have questions? Uh, I no, know those two gorillas, by the way. <laughs> Wait, what? I know those two gorillas. <laughs> You've seen them before. <laughs> huh? Nice. <Creepy. laughs> yeah, I, I think... Um, I guess not right now. I just feel like I need to like. What we're going to move into this week, I want to start really focusing on foliage and adding it into your scenes and things. Mm, Okay. Are we still going to do buildings along with foliage? I just want environments now. I'm going to want environments. Oh, okay. Which is, yeah, it's buildings and stuff, but now I want to add foliage into it Mm -hmm. and all that. And then next week we'll start talking about people. Oh, okay. So we're just like building up from like what we started. Yeah, because when we get to people, here's the thing. When we get to people, it's no different than this. Does that make Mm -hmm. sense? Like building a scene or like kind of like Well, it's just no different in the sense of how you start to, what we're doing. Well, number one, (laughs) drawing buildings isn't about drawing buildings. Drawing foliage is not about drawing foliage. Drawing airplanes is not about drawing airplanes. Drawing people is not about drawing people. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're all things that are categories that will build a a pretty well-rounded skill set. Okay. But what we're doing here is starting to train our brain. Just like you said, you go, well, I tend to go to these smaller ideas or anything too fast. We're trying mm-hmm. to regulate that, how we're doing that, okay? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, then, and then I can move the same concepts into foliage. I can move the same concepts into people sketching, animals, mm-hmm. all that stuff, okay? Mm-hmm. And you'll see that when we get to people, because we're going to talk about clothed people, that there's just a bunch of graphic shapes and shapes just like this. Mm, okay so yeah. it doesn't really change and what i'm trying to train your brain to do is to do what my brain does where i don't really look at anything i don't look at anything and go oh god that's a blah 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 it's hard to draw i don't i just don't even look at things that way it just it's just mm. a bunch of shapes you know what i mean okay. yeah so it doesn't matter if it's a person a tree a crowd of a thousand people downtown la I, it doesn't matter to me you know what i mean mm. i just get excited by what i'm going to draw i just look at that and go oh that's cool and i draw it mm. So yeah. that's what we're trying to do is kind of untrain your brain to work the way it's used to work. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And we all come at this basically probably the same way mm-hmm. with the word detail. Hey, look at Johnny's drawings are so detailed or, <laughs> or shading. You know, mm-hmm. I'm sitting there shading this piece of crap drawing. You're like, it's not going to save it. It's a bad drawing, but they think shading is going to save it. Mm. Uh, that's why a lot of people in here really struggle at first when I go I don't want any shading and they keep coming mm. in with shading and I go that drawing doesn't work and you keep putting lipstick on a pig you know what I mean <laughs> doesn't yeah. work like stop doing mm. that and the other thing we're trying to do in here you make a bad drawing who cares you turn the page you make another drawing right mm. you don't yeah. trying to fix a bad drawing 
You learn from that experience. Every time yeah. you pick up a sketchbook and you draw on that thing, I don't care how long you've been doing it, you learn something every single time. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every time. Okay. And especially if you're pushing yourself, you know? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I, I push myself out. I'm doing it right now. Where I'm, I'm try, always trying to push myself out of my comfort zone. And then I'll notice something I'm doing. Like I get, like I'll notice um, for the last two weeks, I've been drawing three quarter views, people kind of vignette off the bottom. And I go, okay, stop doing that. Stop, start drawing the whole figure again because you're, you're getting stuck on this same formula. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. And I don't want to be stuck on a formula. Yeah. And then sometimes I go out and I just go, I'm going to really push the stylization here as far as I can. Mm. Yeah. And those doing that, I do that a lot <laughs> at McDonald's on those little brown napkins with a pin oh. and, a white, and a white paint marker. And it, the mm -hmm. reason is there's something psychological with drawing on such a disposable thing. Mm -hmm. Take all these chances that I just and I just and I know what I'm doing. I'm like I'm just trying to push myself. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. Ninety percent of them probably look like crap. And then every now and then I hit a cool one. You know? Mm -hmm. Hang on, I'm gonna screen grab the room one more time. What's today, the 20th? Nope, that's not it. Oh, it's just so irritating. I always have to go find these things. There it is. It must be this one. Yep, here we are. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, those are good. Thank you. By the way, you know, I'm going to see stuff in your drawings that probably you won't see yet. So sometimes I get students that go, you think this is a good drawing? It's like, it's not that it's a great drawing, but I can see you're starting to move to something. I can see it. Does that make sense? Um, yeah. Because people all the time, they do that. And also, by the way, don't be one of these sad sacks I get in here where they're, um, oh, what? Well, and there's people that you go, God, that's a really nice drawing. They're like, mm, really? I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you're going, okay. Okay, I'm all excited about this. <laughs> you know I mean? And and you're yeah. not even excited about it? Like, I, I don't get that. Like, of it's, course. Okay, it's okay to do a cool drawing or whatever it is and feel good about it, okay? Yeah. It's, it's not okay to feel good about it for the next four weeks, but feel good about it for a couple of days. And then, okay. and, but keep drawing, right? And then it, it, there's nothing wrong with that. You need to do that. If you don't feel yeah. good about what you're doing once in a while, why would you keep mm -hmm. doing it, right? That's true, yeah. Why would I want to do this if I if I just thought of it as a chore? Yeah, that's it's not a chore at all. It's like it's yeah. the most friggin' thing you can do in the world. <laughs> it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. There's mm -hmm. nothing cooler than than art. There's just nothing cooler than that. Mm. Except for me, I'm cooler. <laughs> I can yeah. laugh out of that one because I'm uncool. All right, who's this? <laughs> who's this? Oh, those are mine. These look good too. Have you done this before? Um, like sketching buildings? Yeah, or just sketching uh, observationally like this? Not really, no. Well, then you got a good start then. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, I was sitting under it and it was pretty tall, so I had fun kind of leaning it. Did you, so. did you, yeah, did you deliberately put that three-point perspective on it? Mm -hmm, yeah. That's great. That's really cool. I love that one. Get this perspective's a little wonky. But when I first look at it, it doesn't look like that at all. Like this line here, where this line here is starting to go up this way. Do you see that? Yeah. Should be going, well, it's going a little bit that way. More like, you know, just following that perspective. So you always know if you got this, that it's kind of doing that. Right? Mm-hmm. 
like when I do those big whiteboard drawings in class, I kind of step back from it. I pull my hand out and I look over there and I put, and I, I put a horizon line because I know it's going to be a bird's eye view up here. And then I kind of look out here way, you know, eight or nine feet off that board. And I go, that's where my, that's, and I follow the line. I go, that's my vanishing point. And I do the same thing over here. They're imaginary. They're out there though. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. And then if I can, I'll find some like stain on the wall or something that lines about up with it. And I go, okay. And then at first I'm just pulling my hand from that thing. And I'm just putting a real loose grid down. It's not gonna be perfect, but it gives me some sense because it's such a big thing to draw and you're so close to it, it you can get really wonky with it if you don't have a little bit of something to kind of ground it you know what I mean yeah and then and then at some point I don't need that anymore and I, I can I can do it off of the other buildings that are there and I can just figure it out from that so what we're trying to do is get very um and what another thing I used to do <laughs> when I first started doing a lot of this stuff is I'd come home with the drawing sometimes I just xerox them or something and uh, and I put a piece of trace over it, and I find out if my vanishing points were working. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or that my perspective was working because I didn't I didn't want to use grids and all that stuff on location. I feel like that's a kind of a crutch. It's not a crutch in the context of you doing like a finished drawing or any of that kind of stuff. Perspective is a hundred percent necessary, but I want to be able to do it without having to do that. Does that make sense? Yeah. I want to be free. Is what I want to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I liked drawing like that. It helped me do it a lot faster than focusing on getting everything perfectly. And you're also going to get, uh, you're going to get looser, more artistic work. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Than this very mechanical yeah. looking. You see so much work that's so mechanical. And it's just not very, uh, like if I was hiring, if I see somebody with a bunch of mechanical drawings, I'm like, why would I want to hire this person? I don't need a bunch of, I need beautiful drawings. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. not these stiff impersonal things i got a steven silver here a life drawing in front of me a costume life drawing and like he it's very much his style it's very angular does that make sense yeah but it's his and it's super cool where's this at um those are in laverne Oh, I always want to go there. They got a lot of cool houses over there, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have like an older style. I see it off the freeway. It's off the 210, right? Yeah, because I live in Pomona. So Laverne is like a city over for me. Well, you guys are all over the place this term. Yeah? Mm hmm Is that because we're online or you just, you, you, you go anyway? No, I go anyway. Oh, yeah. Okay. The good thing about that, and what you know what bothers me sometimes with students? I go, hey, I think that, I don't know. Cal State Northridge has a good program I heard or something they go ah, that's pretty far and that to me just it's a red flag that I go oh you're not that serious about your education then you know what I mean mm -hmm. like I don't care if I had to crawl through broken glass to get to art center I would have you know what I mean yeah yeah or or Fullerton and I went to Fullerton specific, I mean I didn't know anything when I went there but I did know enough to go in there and go this place the art department looks better than other places other city colleges mm -hmm. sure. and yeah. that was you know 100 years ago And then I can give you my old man story about how I had to walk uphill in the snow both ways and all that. Because <laughs> I, I kind of did. I kind of did have to do that. These are cool. I like these. This one right here is pretty balanced. Okay, cool. And then now we're going to start really focusing on all this stuff a little bit, right? Yeah, I just kind of masked it out. No, that's fine. And no, sometimes that's a solution too, by the way, right? Mm -hmm. Like you have to manage that. Yeah, how should you know when to focus on the foliage and when to just kind of leave it as like a shading? I think part of it's distance. Okay. And like, if you go out and look at palm trees, you know, they're, when they're out in the distance, they're just total silhouettes, mm -hmm. right? And then sometimes it's, again, it's, it's something in relation to something else. So I might have a house there, or like we were just talking about with that other one where I just put that bush mass in there, right? Yeah. I just wanted a unifying shape there and I don't want it to really be that important. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. So if I want to pull things together, um, if I want to mass an area, if I got something lighter in the foreground and I put that mass of uh, silhouetted foliage, just like those Ted Kosky drawings, then I, you know, I got those things popping out front because they're lighter. 
um, it's, it's always what's next to what the drawing needs, what's next to it, you know? Okay. Well, that part of the drawing's not working, but if I put a mask back there, now it works better, right? Oh, now, and then that'll lead you at some point when you get good at this, or maybe now, um, to go, oh, now I got that over there. Oh, now it needs something over here. It needs a taller element over here to balance it out a little bit. You know, oh, I'll put a cypress street right here, right? Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Because what you're doing, like when you're making drawings, especially on location, and there's nothing wrong with like wanting to be real observational and everything. I am too, but I'm going to move things around and make them better. And and the thing, and then it's sometimes people are weird about that. And then the thing it's I always tell them, I go, look, you're making a cool drawing that people are going to see and go, wow, that's cool. And you know, where's that? It's farmer's market. They're not going to go, wait a minute. That tree's not there at farmer's market. They're not even going to know. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. they, they don't know that. The only thing they're going to do is if I completely change the arrangement of the place or something. And, what, and, and I might do that too. Who cares? Yeah, just adding a tree helps some of these. All of these elements, like I told you, are like a Lego box, right? Or yeah. Box of Legos. You have all these tools in there. Now we're going to add foliage in. And I see foliage totally as a design tool. Okay. Like if I'm doing a fast demo in class or something, a lot of times I'll just put a tree in there because I can, I can eat up that space very quickly. Right. Yeah. Or I need an organic. You're, and then you're going to go, I need some overlap. I'm like uh, Old Town Orange is a good, I usually draw this one building over there. I'm mean, actually, maybe I'll go there and draw it live. Um, and because then we're starting to talk about designing from life using this skill set. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And I think that's super valuable because like if you were doing a, if you were doing a, well, okay. If any of you have, I think it's on the DVD of Up. Okay. There's a making of documentary on there and you guys should watch that. Or maybe I, I can't find it on Disney Plus because I, I actually wanted to tell you guys to go watch it on Disney, which is weird. It's not on there. But in a lot of those cases with films and things, They go, okay, we're going to the, whatever those, where the film ends up and those, those, those plateau things. They went to the real place, right? And then they climbed, you know, they climbed it. They went up there. It has all these crazy rock formations. Well, what are all of them doing? They're sitting there with their sketchbooks, right? Sketchbooks and a little bit of watercolor, right? And what's happening there when you look, because I think you get a couple glimpses in their sketchbook. They're already starting to stylize on the, on the spot. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that is super valuable, Okay. Because now at night when they're going out and having cocktails, everybody's showing their books and, some, you know, the art director, whoever, <clears throat> you know, is going to, he might in that moment go, that's really, I love the way you did that. What were you thinking? You know, and then, you know, then you can start going, hey guys, you, know, you can start, you're already starting your creative conversation on the spot, right? Yeah, that's really cool. <clears throat> From, by the way, unfiltered, okay? That thing is right in front of you and you can walk around it. And you can get different views and you can see what it looks like from under here and up here. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm going to climb up on that hill over there and get a view of it from the top. You know, all my information is there. All my lighting information is there. Nothing is filtered. A photograph is flat. It's a filter. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I hope you can see the value of going and doing this research from life. It's so valuable. Okay. Um, and then the shadows are blacked out. And then the uh, usually the color is not exactly right, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's a fill. It's, it's great reference, obviously, but it's not the same as going, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You know? This is interesting the way you popped all this stuff out. Yeah, there was a huge bush and a tree, so I couldn't even see the other side of the house. I'd probably separate this guy out a little bit to get it more in, f in f the foreground. Okay. Might even pull it out a little. Feels like it's right up on that house, right? Yeah, I realized after I drew it that I put it in the wrong spot. <laughs> okay, so that's where that shape spatial relationship thing comes in, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. But I, let's say the base of it, and I might just do this. I might go, okay, where in relation to this house does the does the bottom land right mm -hmm. and then i'll go oh it's about this far down then i go where does it land in the in the silhouette of the house oh it lands right here and then i just go okay if i connect that then it's correct 
Yeah. Because I'm placing it, it's a puzzle piece. Where does it fit in that? Where does it land in my shape that I already put down? And if that shape is already accurate, I can place things against the accuracy of those shapes, right? Mm -hmm. And it also will really quickly tell you when you're way off, right? Because yeah. one of the things that I do a lot is all like, let's say I'm drawing somebody, I might have said this before, but I'm drawing somebody and their hands are like this, or they got a drink here or whatever, right? On a table or whatever. And then I go, maybe I'll knock in the front of their head and then I'll go, where's that hand at in relation to the front of his face? Or I'll, not, I'll knock in this mass. I'm just like the front of the face, the shoulder and this mass. And then I'll go, where does that land, right? And then sometimes I'll, I'll, you know, I'll throw it down and I start doing the drawing and then I'll maybe look at a negative shape or something like that just to double check myself. And all of a sudden I'll realize like, holy crap, I put it way here. You know what I mean? And it looks actually mm -hmm. normal, but I'm like, his hand is way out here. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I, and I, and I usually catch that before I've really dug into the drawing. You know, once I start building things then I'll look at the, I'll reach, I'll re uh, visit the hand where it is and make sure it's, it's where it should be. Um, and the, you know, and then adjust it or whatever. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> I wonder if the school would let us do a field trip. That would be fun. Oh, that's why I miss that. You have no idea how much I miss that. There's nothing more fun in the, this is my favorite class. And, and there's nothing more fun than going places with 30 people and sketch and like a class. It's so fun. And I end up drawing all day because I just do run into students. They go, hey, how do you draw a boat? And you go, oh, you know. Yeah, that sounds really fun. Yeah, it's totally fun. I'm going to, I mean, I, you guys are all going to be invited to every field trip I ever do from here on out. You know that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when we go back on campus and this class goes back in, show up at the field trips. Okay, cool. More the merrier. This is really nice. This one down here. Now you see how you've unified that with those trees back there? Yeah. And then how that, that organic shape against that building, it, the whole thing pulls together as a, like a little scene. Mm -hmm. And what, did I already ask you what your major was? Uh, no, illustration. So what kind of illustration? I'm not really sure. I just kind of want to get good at everything and figure it out, I guess. Okay. So you want to do multiple things? Yeah. That's my favorite thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Have fun doing various things. This is a nice one here. So it looks like you're moving along. Is that in a, where is that? Is that in Brea or not? That's Brea? in San Dimas. San Dimas? Mm -hmm. I know where that is. A lot of the buildings there kind of have like a Western look to them. Yeah, yeah. And don't they have a, they have a um, wagon there. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they have a KFC, McDonald's. Yeah. Well, uh -huh. Home Depot, gas station, then this building. Yeah, you know exactly what it looks like. <laughs> and then right next to that building is a tobacco shop. <laughs> you know why I know that? Uh, no. Because I've drawn there. Oh, cool. I, I don't remember anything, but if I draw stuff, I remember everything. And I remember a whole bunch of stuff about art, but I don't remember anything else. Yeah, there's a the little grocery store that I always go to there. I don't remember. Uh, is that Vitamin across City? the other street by the Carl's Jr.? Um, it's by the World Market. Oh, the World Market. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love world market. <laughs> this is a nice balance drawing right there. Thanks. And I like that you took this one on. Did you build that sort of as a cylinder? Yeah, kind of. Okay. Like the, the, when I, when I talk about the Viscom stuff and I go, okay, it gets very technical, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't mean that once in a while I don't throw down a cylinder or something or, mm -hmm. or square or something. I just don't tend to do it all the time. Cause I don't, I just don't, again, I don't want it to look like a ruler perspective drawing. Right, but your perspective here looks pretty good. And that's a tricky one. You know what I mean? Yeah, I wanted to try it since I would have to be underneath like the ellipses. One thing I might have done here though is like in this part here, and I know I didn't tell you, I told you guys not to use tone, so it's fine. But now, just a real velvety side of the pencil, just silhouette that whole interior roof and the and the pillars on the other side. Okay. And same thing on top, and then again, you got that mass. You got those lighter. Uh, pillars cutting across the mass right 
-hmm. And then what's going to happen? That's going to come forward and that's going to go backwards. Yeah? Yes. Okay. No questions? Um, I think I'm good. So now what we want to get, because like this is a really nice drawing. You got some really nice drawings. You got a lot of really nice drawings in here. Okay. Thank you. This here, that uh, post, I would have pulled it up to break that edge. You got a tangency there, right? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's just making it go either up or below it. In this case, up would be make more sense because if you pull it down, it's going to look too short. Okay. So you got a lot of nice drawings here. So now... And you're pretty consistent. I mean, here and there, you got one that's a little wonkier, but. Yeah, some of them I didn't. Really okay, but again, who doesn't do that? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. But what I'm tr also trying to get, and I haven't talked about here, is I'm trying to get to consistency. Okay? Because mm -hmm. if you're going to work, you have to be consistent. Yeah. Right? And also, this drawing's ability, and, I, and you know, everybody has a different process, but a lot of times, because people always go, hey, where do you get your ideas from? And. The answer is, well, usually research. Oh, that's a really nice one. I didn't see that. This is this is a nice page. Yeah? Yeah, I really like this one. Is this later or early? Uh, I actually just spent a lot of time on the top one because um, I was just sitting down and I liked the way it looked. So I just kept working that one. Good. Are you having fun with them? Yeah. Some of them I get a little frustrated, but then some of them go more smoothly. If I was getting this much payoff. Uh, I'd be pretty stoked. Okay. It's just like those ones I showed you from Jackie, like when she was in this class, I go, holy shit. I go, I'd love that in my sketchbook, man. I'd be proud of that. That was in my sketchbook. You know what I mean? Yeah. Thank you. And you should be, by the way, you should be proud of those things. When you're doing good work, man, you should be proud of it. Thanks so much. Don't be a sad sack. These are weird angles. Uh, yeah, I had trouble taking pictures of them because some were the camera and it didn't like, you know, show the right side. Where am I at? Who am I talking to? Uh, Catherine. Oh, Catherine, okay. Okay, so what do you think? Uh, I liked some of them, but some of them I had like trouble with the angles and you know the roof okay so here's what i want you to keep aware everybody to keep aware of because i'm sitting here talking about um what did i just do oh, there it goes um i'm sitting here talking about all this design stuff and like oh you could push this and do that and all that kind of stuff that's weird why is it doing that um you have to go at this at your own pace, okay? So you have to get comfortable with one sort of phase of it and then move into the next phase. Does that make sense? Yeah. So like if you're having a little bit of trouble with um Yeah, like I struggled a lot on perspective and everything. Yeah, that's it's all normal. Um, how can I not lighten up on my, oh, that's why. Um, there you are, okay. Um, so then focus on it a little bit, right? All right. I just do, drew houses around my neighborhood. So. Yeah, that's all you need to do. And, and I realized I drew pretty big, so some pages just fit in one house. Is what? Say it again. I noticed I drew pretty large, so yeah, on a few pages I only had like one house. So you want to um, probably want to work a little try smaller. And draw smaller next. Yeah, time. try and draw smaller. Start to separate things a little bit with the line. Like this stuff. So this house here and this one too, they're getting very flat, right? Yeah, I know so, that. So now the your your uh whatever you call it, your antidote to that is your line quality, right? You can start to separate things out a little bit. Give me some, you know, of this stuff. You know, and then these lines, see how they're getting very furry, these lines here? Yeah. That's because you're doing this. Right? Yeah. So do this, sweep. Okay. just sweep it across, right? 
because we want to make lines our our lines have to have intent like they have to look like they've got intent does that make sense yes it does who there's some famous artist that said a quote and i heard it when i was in school and he said show me a man's line and i'll tell you if he's an artist and i remember the time thinking what a bunch of crap that was and now it's so true like you can look at somebody's line and, and know you know what i mean yeah <laughs> and like by the way painting. go ahead say it again i like that paint a lot that one's like yeah this one's pretty good like. this one again starts separating these things okay and then sometimes i don't think you really need it here sometimes I'll, there is like a huge tree in there so i'll need you like the trunk then this don't get cotton bally with it okay it's it's you know make that big silhouette you know in your trunk and whatever and then like I just kind of do that, make sure it's it's asymmetrical for the most part. And then uh and then I work into it. Okay. Okay. Which I did on that video. I just uh, free uh freestyled it on that video, but it's fine. And then you know, here this is the front. I might have put that whatever sidewalk. This I might have pulled out a little bit to break the edge, so on and so forth. Here, was this a uh, fabric or steel? Uh, steel. Okay, maybe I'd make it fabric so I can put a fold in it. And I put these things in it, which wouldn't make any sense. And then even here, under these little boards and things, I'd probably pop them a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're going to, you know, if you're having a little bit of trouble with your perspective, just really start thinking about, you know, okay, getting this basic, you know, take a little three quarter view of it, maybe, and just getting this basic thing down, this basic uh, box, and then go, okay, I know this fits here. Now I know that goes there. Then I know that there's a this here, and then there's this here. And then, you know, if you want to think of those stairs as a wedge shape, you could start that way. Mm -hmm. Then put this in, you know, because then if the stairs are, if you're thinking of it this way, and this just helps me get it in perspective sometimes, you know, if I think of it as a wedge, and then I can just follow the perspective here, and then I could just break it up. And then what I usually do is then I'll put a railing on it. You know, and then I, I like to turn the path, you know, and then the porch comes out of here. And they're all just a bunch of boxes, more or less, right? Yeah. That makes sense? Yes, it does. Mileage, man. It's all about mileage. And I think actually picking just regular houses is kind of cool because you don't really have any big handles to grab onto. Yeah. I mean, it's really fun to have buildings that are, that do have big handles, but. Hey, Daniel, where's your stuff? Did I, would I miss you? Yeah. Wait a minute, I started, who did I start with? I missed this whole top part. I have to go back, damn it. I blame you, Daniel. Thanks, Daniel. Yeah, thanks, Daniel. Yeah. It's okay if you guys all turn on Daniel, it's fine. This is nice. Is that Old Town? Yeah, I kind of mixed up. That Blaze Pizza's not there, I, I just put them together. I thought Blaze Pizza was there. It's not, it's not across from that building. Oh, I see, okay. Does that place have good pizza? Sure, why not? <laughs> because now I'm a pizza snob because I'd like my girlfriend's restaurant's pizza. Oh, then of course it's not as good as your girlfriend's restaurant's pizza. Well, it's a commodity pizza, so it couldn't be. She's making artisanal pizza. These are great. Now here, I'd get that a little more organized. What kind of roof is that? Yeah, just shingles. Yeah, I, I, 
I kind of just did a texture. <laughs> Honestly, I was like, actually, oh my God, this group is so huge. <laughs> I actually don't mind thinking, because it is texture, yeah. right? But it's sort of organized texture, right? Yeah. And I think I, you could actually go in there and just pop a couple of them and give me some a little more information about the actual shape and it'd probably be fine. Yeah. I guess I got overwhelmed by how long the roof is on that building. <laughs> no, that, yeah. that house is so, the roof is so long. It's a good one. That actually, that feels like almost like a Robert Crumb drawing in a weird way. What kind of paper is this? It's just white paper. I have a just a sketchbook. I don't know, just normal paper. These are not, these are good. Now here now, you can start to add a little. Um, yeah, the texture for trees. Yeah, because that's what I want to start doing this week. You know, yeah. I usually will, again, with the cypress tree, I can't remember if they go up. They go up, I think. The mm -hmm. texture goes up. And then I'll just use that break, that shape of that break to shadow it out. Because mm -hmm. they, they're very textural. They don't have like leaves. Mm -hmm. I noticed in the video, by the way, I say leaves, not leaves. Just kind of embarrassing. It's like I haven't watched it yet. It's just this stuff. Yeah. Um. I mostly didn't draw the plants in, but uh, this coming week, I'll probably do that. I just no, I wasn't expecting you to yet, so it's fine. These here, a little bit of texture and, you know, some value. And they're really going to sit in front of that. It's a nice one here. Those are nice. This is a nice solid drawing. You know what I mean? Thank you. And I think I've up till now been saying don't use tone. We're gonna to start using tone. Nice draw. I love you know what I like about this one? It's the way it's vignetted. Mm. Like, do you see how that can be more effective than drawing the whole thing? Does that make sense? Yeah. I'd probably pull in a few of these cracks. Yeah. That's why I put a tree back there to like make the roof pop. Yeah, this for sure. For sure. What's this one? Where's this at? Uh, it's also an old town. It's like a church. There's like a little that one. Yeah, I don't remember that. That's weird. The side wow. streets. Um, all these houses are on the side streets of that road. Oh, you went down the. That's a great neighborhood, man. Mm. A friend of mine just bought a house down there, but it's a total disaster. He's got to fix it all up. Oh. But he's like walking distance to Old Town. Nice one. It's kind of an unfortunate name. <laughs> I think it's weird and people don't notice things like that. Nice one. I know where this building is. I know where this building is, I think. Was this guy really here? Yeah, it was a guy with a goose. Just like walking his goose. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> That's why he has a goose, because he wants to be noticed. So loud. Yeah, they are loud. Yeah. They're mean, too, man. They're super, they're mean. Yeah. Maybe if they're your pet, they're not. I don't know. But I've been chased by geese a lot when I was a kid. I like this. I like the stylization of the um, uh, palms. I like this uh, silhouette-y thing. This could get darker. This uh, hydrant. Yeah. hydrant. Really pull it forward. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of times when I'm doing like this kind of value, this is good. When I'm doing this kind of value, um, and I think some of the value is getting washed out in this image. I think some of it's that. Mm, yeah. That makes sense? Because it feels like over here it's fading out a little bit and that's the camera, not your drawing. I love the um, silhouette of this stuff. I think this is great stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'd probably pull that out a little bit. Pull. You did a little bit. And just see if you punch some value on it, how it's, things start to separate a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, what do you think? Yeah. These are these are pretty fun. I felt, oh man, so yeah. 
what? near the end i just felt like i was rushing to get as much stuff done as possible so <laughs> yeah again the, the speed stuff will just come along yeah People always think it's like about, I had a guy, I don't know if I ever told you guys this, I had this obnoxious idiot in a workshop I did one time. He was an older guy and he was just a pain in the ass. And he was like, I mean, he was probably 68 or something. And he's always trying to pick up girls. It was totally weird. And, um, but anyway, in the class, he goes, it was called a fast sketching workshop or something. And he goes, uh, aren't you going to time us? And I go, why would I do that? You know what I mean? (laughs) This is fast sketching. I go, that's not how it works. I go, I'm giving you the tools. If you just go out and do it, you will get fast at it. Oh, and then he just kept bringing it up. Aren't you going to time us? Aren't you going to time us? And he's, oh, he was such a pain in the ass. <laughs> he, all this, he said all this inappropriate stuff in class. I mean, in the class, and it was a small class. It was, it was all women except for him. And um, he would say super inappropriate stuff. Where I finally went to the museum. It was at a museum. And I got, I, I, this guy's got to get thrown in my class or he's got to shut up. So either you throw him out or I'm going to do it. You know what I mean? It was really um, embarrassing. Okay, I don't have a lot to say about these. I think they're cool. I like what you're doing when you like vignette things like this. Like this one. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then I like this one because it's so bold and controlled. It feels very controlled, right? Which is good. These feel controlled. Uh, this I love this one because of the vignette. So what's nice about this, to me, this starts showing design thinking. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And all this draftsmanship, that's what you got to put it in service to is design. Because that's what people actually ultimately pay you for, really. Those last few are like near the end of the day. So I was just doing really rough. I was like, I got to get these done. Rough is fine, man. (laughs) No, it's just, I wish I could spend more time to like, I guess, like, dude, I don't know. But it just, it just felt like I was rushed. When I go someplace fun like that, like Old Town Orange or whatever to sketch, man, I just, I try and do it when I have nothing on my plate. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And just yeah. hang out all day and, and eat and until I feel like I'm running out of gas. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I just naturally kind of run out of gas. Okay, I'm going to go back up to the top here. Those are good, Daniel. Really good. Thank you. I have no idea. I should probably actually, okay, here's what I'm going to start doing. I meant to do it today, but I totally forgot. When I'm going through drawings, I'm going to start at the top one week, and then I'm going to start at the bottom the next week, right? So I'm going through different people in a different order. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Because otherwise I get, you know, if I don't get through all of them or something, then, you know, the same people are getting neglected and I don't want to do that. Or if you have questions, you know, if I'm going through these things and, you know, and I feel like I'm winding down or something then, and you go away, I got a question about this and make sure you get it to me. Who's this? Uh, it's me. This is Aaron. Have you ever done this before? Um, sketching from life? Not really, but I've taken a ton of life drawing classes. Okay. Well, this is a different animal. I mean, there is a similarity in it in some ways, but these are pretty balanced, man. It's a nice drawing right here. Oh, thank yeah? you. And what's your major? Uh, well, right now I'm I'm on the I'm on the uh, track for the illustration and entertainment arts certificates. Okay. But I also have my AA and BFA, so I'm just kind of in going what? back in. Huh? In what? What's your BFA in? Uh, it was in well, it was in studio art. My emphasis was in printmaking. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Did you go? Uh, to, was it Cal State Long Beach? Yep. I had, I heard they have a pretty good printmaking program, right? Yeah, it, it's it, it's as good as it gets in, in in California. Well, I didn't know it was that good. That's cool. And uh, but but like, I kind of got the burnout, and now I'm kind of getting back getting back on my feet, and you know trying to get more confidence and. Try, just trying to get some direction. Confidence comes with skills, I think. Right? Yeah. If definitely. your work's good, why wouldn't you be confident? Well, I think I think in my time at Cal State, uh, there was kind of that time I was just 
kind of phoning it in and did and probably by my own volition I didn't really learn a whole lot so I was just kind of stuck and uh so I came here just to kind of get out of this rut and my, my drawing has since improved dramatically what do you want to do? In a couple of years well I'm still trying to figure that out like uh I've been taking a lot like just with a lot of the entertainment arts classes a, a lot of the aspects of the animation industry is pretty attractive sure but um you know and generally just illustration <laughs> is is very interesting to me and that's what my work seems to gear get, get geared towards anyway illustration oh. to me is a um it means a big different it means a lot of things now okay yeah not like it used to be it used to be all print um but now it's this to me a good solid illustration skill set should include design obviously right yeah really good strong draw, drawing and uh, really good strong painting i think so you know color and all that yeah you just know how to make an image obviously and then with that skill set to me and now you would probably have to add 3d into that even though you know it's a, a little different yeah but i think if you have that skill set you you're there's a lot you can do does that make sense yeah like you could go into animation and now animating specifically to me you've got to get trained in it right yeah yeah but like if you're doing backgrounds or design or props or whatever you don't you don't need to be trained as an animator to do that um that's more of an illustrator's thing right right um but then you can go in and do those things. and that you know the ones that i see like in that world um visual development all those kind of things the ones that are really monsters are the ones who um paint well and draw well obviously you know what i mean yeah they're just yeah. really monster illustrators really and really really good designers you know John yeah. Navarez is a good example of that. The guy's got monster draftsmanship, monster design, and just, he's amazing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he really pushes his designs and all that kind of stuff in, in, in his drawing, you know? They're really fun to look at. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think these are solid, man. Thank you. This, yeah, all, this page right here is really nice. Oh, yeah, all of these were in uh, Old Town Orange, and... I didn't really need to go anywhere else. Like, <laughs> especially the houses, like they were all really interesting. This perspective, I feels like it should be going this way to me, or maybe even I don't know where you were sitting. Were you sitting on the ground or like on a bench or something? Or I was across the street in my car. So probably you were about at ground. You were about at eye level almost with this trash can, then, right? Yeah, prop maybe a little bit above. Because it feels like it should be about there to me. But I mean, all the other stuff, your perspective and everything is really good. Do you have any questions? Well, I'm just uh, uh, just trying to figure out how I can take, um, I could, how, what I can do to take these drawings further or take, take the approach further. I think I would just now go in here and really punch i mean I, i'm i'm a broken record on that yeah right well that's okay <clears throat> but i can punch these you know and light actually is probably over here or i'm making it over there and now we can add in that second skill set where we're going to go in and start adding tone right mm -hmm. and then we're going to add another layer into it later on where we're going to go okay, let's start taking this methodology and this ideology and let's start stylizing, right? Yeah. So we're going to kind of run through that because I think it's important to know, build this, you know, start building. The, and and by the way, overall, I haven't seen any that are, I don't feel like anybody's not getting it. It's a pretty strong bunch of drawings, okay, so far. Um, it's weird to get this much consistency this early on. You know what I mean? We're only like three weeks into this or something. Yeah. Um, that's kind of, it's interesting. You know what I mean? Cause it's like most people, they don't really, I mean, when I started doing this, when I was in college, I didn't know how to do this. You know what I mean? At all. Yeah. And I, I think most people, they just don't like, I see if, if, if I see somebody out sketching most of the time, which is rare, most of the time they're either students from Fullerton yeah. or if I ran, I run into somebody randomly, they'll be like, I ran into these kids randomly. They were probably 20s early 20s or something 
because I used to go to a, uh, what's that called? Grand Californian, the one down at California Adventure, the hotel, right? Because sometimes they have a piano player in there and I'd sit there and draw the piano player and stuff. Yeah. And I saw these group of kids over here drawing. I go, oh, that's cool. They're all, they're drawing. You know, it's funny. I go over there and like, yeah, you guys and talk to them. They're all drawing superheroes, anime characters. And I'm looking through the sketch guy. Hey, can I see your sketchbook? And looking through it, the entire sketchbook was that. It was the, kind of the same thing on every page. And like yeah. anime stuff and all that kind of stuff. And I go, this, you're never going to get good at this. <laughs> you're practicing terrible methodology. And I get it. It's fun to go out and draw with your friends, but it's like, you've got this environment, any environment you're in, right. the drawing from life thing is, is it's, it's about drawing from life in a certain way, but it's actually an all encompassing way to flex all your muscles and, and tighten all your muscles in a bunch of things all at the same time. And that comes out of observational sketching, observational sketching, makes your drawing fluid, makes you more loose, makes you more confident, and then becomes, makes you very confident in your shape language. And then you start stylizing and then you can pull all that stuff off and it looks correct and balanced. And, you know, cause you're sitting there designing all the time and your eyes become measuring devices. You know what I mean? And you right. really clearly see uh, spatial relationships and design uh, tools and all these things you're putting together in one thing. Whereas if you go out and you're just sitting there drawing superheroes and you're, and you're drawing them badly, you're just drawing them badly over and over and over again. You're not gaining anything from that. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. And and by the way, I don't think there's anything wrong with once people want to go out because you know they just drink and draw groups and they they all do character. They all draw crazy characters or what, and they're just getting together and having a good time and have some drinks. That's fine. I get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But I think this is where your bread and butter is. This, plain air painting and design. You get those three things down, you're employable, I think. Okay. okay. Now, now there, again, there's other tool sets in there now. Or if you go in, if you want to go in and work in whatever, the entertainment industry or something, they're going to add that 3D skill set in there. They want to see that probably, not everybody, but probably. You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> last i worked on this toy job for tonka a couple years ago i don't know when it was um uh, tonka you know those trucks or whatever i didn't even see anybody in there could draw anymore they were all uh in a i don't know what modeling software what they were in like uh whatever it's called that cad modeling software i can't think of the name of it solidworks right yeah. i think they were in solidworks now they'd probably be in fusion or something but um you know, and, and the reason that's good, by the way, is because it sort of keeps the, um, it's different than when I was doing it. So it keeps the, the, the product through the process in the hands of the designer longer. Okay. Cause they're, they're pretty much designing. If you got a good industrial design skill set, you kind of know how to engineer it a little bit. They know where the, you know, flange has got to be in the screw holes and they'll figure out and they're doing all that 3d and then they'll send it off to China. Um, and maybe a product engineer will come back and go, ah, that we got to move that screw over here. But it, it just, it holds the designers holding the, the product longer. You know what I mean? So what yeah. you used to do is you do final mechanical art and drawings and turnarounds and all that stuff. And then you'd send it to the factory and the factory would come back and, and come up with their solutions. And there was this long back and forth. And now that holds that part of the process in, in the designer's hands, really. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then if you have a phone call with the factory and they say, hey, blah, 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 then I'm going to go to the designer and go, hey, change that, whatever they said, but I want you to do it because I want to keep the integrity, the look of the product. When we did, and here's a good example of this, by the way, when we were doing Ratatouille product, we went over to uh, China to look at the production, right? Mm -hmm. And this is what's weird about Chinese manufacturing. They don't think about things like this. And they would, they, they put the screw hole, it was the main character, whatever that rat's name is, I can't remember. Um, the screw hole right in his butt. Hmm. You know what I mean? And then you, and you're looking at it, you go, really, you guys? Like, you don't get that that's a bad idea. You know what I mean? So you're always problem solving, right? And in this, you're always problem solving. So here, um, I'd probably punch him a little harder. That's the first place I'd start. Okay. And by the way, I'm looking at him, you know, probably from a screenshot or whatever it is. So I'm probably losing a little bit of value, but I think you could like this overhang right here could really get popped. This overhang could really get popped, right? 
Yeah. Yeah. Probably this. And then, you know, when I start doing that, then I go, okay, now, because now I have to bring other things up to the right level, because it's like if you do too big a leap in value in a drawing. Yeah. Or, and you just, you, or too dark, and then it goes, boom, it goes up to light or whatever, and you missed out that mid-tone or whatever, right? It's yeah. the same thing with line. Like, if you start punching things in, you go, oh, now the rest of it's sort of falling off, so I need to kind of pull parts of it up. Right. And I want to pull parts of it up because I want it to have <clears throat> a really nice readability where I'm, I'm kind of passing over all that line work and it's, and it's you know, I'm, I'm directing the eye. Does that make sense? Yeah. Then this guy, I might even do a little kind of containment line on this one. Now you're going to have value. So <clears throat> you're going to be able to, you know, put this into value. Like this car is one of those things where I might just go, Put a real velvety um, uh, 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 wash on it. What's the word mm -hmm. I'm looking for? Tone, right? Yeah. Real even, right? And then I'd probably just right here, I would probably just take my kneaded eraser and go and just pull that where that plane, because it's doing this. Mm -hmm. You're looking at the car in a cutaway, right? Yeah. And then when it comes up here, it usually tilts off. It squares off a little bit, and then they have the... Uh, cut line right there there's a line name for it i can't think of it but um the break line and uh so this is going to get a little bit of light so but it's going to be a pretty subtle transition so if i do it that way then i can just swipe off where it turns into the light and then i'd probably just put a barely a little indicator of sort of a core where the break is right and that's it and then i'd pull some shapes out of the windows and i'm done right because i what you want to do is you you want you want to know this stuff so well <clears throat> when people don't know how to do this, they go like to draw a car and they'll spend three hours sitting there trying to draw a car. You know yeah. what I mean? Because they think it's very complicated. And like most things really aren't that complicated. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, I think a car is reasonably complicated, but it's only because a car has to balance off all these shapes. You've got ellipses in there. Yeah. And then yeah. you've got very subtle transitions into things like tail lights and all that stuff. You know, I mean, I don't think it's hard, but it's just, you know, there's a, there's a balance there. And, and the way the that the components of a car, the shapes and all that stuff, the way they roll out around the sides and all that stuff is kind of, yeah, you know, that, right. Um, there's usually, I think, three wheels in between the two. I think that's the ratio. It's like five, one, two, three, four, five. I think is what it is. That so I think sounds there's, about right. I think there's three in between, if I remember right. Um, which is sort of like the five eyes thing, you know, one, two, yeah. three, four, five. <clears throat> But that's what I do. I'd start punching them. And now start to play with tone. Yeah. Okay. And what we got to start doing here, you guys, when we start talking about tone. Oh, that was a cool one. I like that one. Um, you have to have a coherent tone. And where I kind of want to start with that is with a real velvety. Um, what people do is they do this. I probably said this. They go, okay, here's my building. So I'm gonna shade this and they start going, oh, that doesn't look good. Okay, I'm gonna cross hatch it. Well, that doesn't look good. All right, uh, all right, I'm gonna put a tone over. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'll just smudge it. You know, and they end up with this mess, right? And the reason they're doing that is because they don't have a coherent grasp on any of these techniques. They don't really know how to uh, hatch. They don't really know how to smudge. And by the way, I smudge in that video that I showed you. I don't usually smudge that much. I What that video was for is just to throw out a bunch of techniques, okay? Um, yeah. and, and kind of how I would approach a bunch of organic landscape stuff. Um, you got to be very careful because smudging can be really, I, I used to hate it. Okay. And the reason mm -hmm. I hated it is because most people abuse it. Right. Especially right. early artists, they really abuse it. And it just looks gross. You know what I mean? It yeah. looks all metallic -y and gross. It just looks gross. And they're doing it on really uh, pretty textured paper, which also looks gross. It looks like a stain. Right. Mm -hmm. So if I've got nice smooth paper, which by the way, I just went and bought another ream of yesterday. Right. See that? Um, and that paper is very smooth. 
<clears throat> okay, I love smooth paper. And a lot of these techniques with pencil and things like that, they work really well in smooth paper. Mm -hmm. Heavily textured paper, or I'm just not a fan of textured paper. Now that's a personal thing. Um, and a smudge here and there is really nice. I do a lot of noses and, and ears and things like that. But I kind of keep it so you don't really notice it. It's one of a bunch of techniques that end up creating an image where I don't think you're that focused on any single technique. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So don't get crazy with the smudging. Just use it when it's nest when it when it works. Does that make right. sense? Because otherwise it'll be like I was talking to my class about this. <clears throat> that Klaus movie. I just saw that movie. Okay. There's all this buzz around Klaus, and I and it's deserved. I've said this before. It's a, it's deserved. I get it. And then I kept hearing about the shading technique they used in it. And when I saw the movie, I hated that technique. Okay. I don't know why everybody thinks that's a good idea. It's all soft. It all looks like airbrush, which drives me crazy. I can't stand that look. <clears throat> I think part of it's because I'm a child of the 70s. I was born in the 60s, but grew up in the 70s, right? And there was like airbrush van paintings and stuff everywhere, right? They were pretty hideous. I'm sure at the time we thought they were cool. It was always like a Frazetta painting or something, but it was done in airbrush on a van, right? Mm -hmm. And when I see that airbrushy look, that's what it takes my brain to. It takes my brain to like cheesy. Does that make sense? Yeah. And yeah. also having everything have a soft value on it is weird. Like the world doesn't work like that. Right. <clears throat> and then the other part of that movie, that, and the only reason I'm talking about this is it's a design thing. And I want you guys to look at things like this and make up your own minds. Okay, you don't have to agree with me. Um, the other part of that is it felt like there was two very different design styles in that movie that felt like they were from two different movies. Okay. There was a very angular sort of Tim Burton style and then another style in there. I didn't really care for the Tim Burton style at all. Um, mm. I think they took that way too pointy and sort of off putting. And then there was another style that wasn't like that. It was really odd to me. It felt very disconnected design wise. Does that make sense? Yeah. Have you guys seen that movie? Uh, I've seen it. What'd yeah. What do you think, Megan? Um, I think it was pretty okay. I the backgrounds are absolutely gorgeous. I, yeah, I, the, I'm not knocking the movie, by the way. I like the movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with you. The the shading and just like, the animation was really good, but oh, yeah. the the way that they they shaded it and made it look like 3D was like a little bit offsetting. But, and you know what? That's a good point. By the way, it's like does everything have to look 3D? You know what I mean? Like just, mm -hmm. you know, they looked better, at, in my opinion. The animation, you know, Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast, I think that animation looked better. And that's 20 some odd years ago, 30 years ago. I don't even know how long ago it is. But anyway, okay, you guys, let's take a break and we'll come back at 1240. Does that sound good? Sounds good. Okay, yeah. I'll come back yeah. at 1240. I'm going to go stuff something in my face. All right, thank you. All right. I'll go through a few more of these and then I'm going to see if you guys have any other just general questions on ones I haven't seen or whatever. And again, next week I'll be more ordered. Don't go from the bottom up. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Okay. Where's uh, Cindy? I'm here. What do you think? Um, I don't know. I wish I could have done more, but the thing is every time I had the chance to go out, it was kind of late. So I only had a limited time before it got dark. It looks like you did all your pages, right? Yeah, I did. I think it's pretty good. I feel like my lines, like the, the line weight, I think they all look similar. Yeah, this one I'd say that. Yeah? Yeah. Here. And then here you're starting to punch a little bit. Yeah, so then once you start, okay, so do you have any questions around that, around the line thing? Um, I just I just think I had to spend more, more time on it. Okay, but you understand the concept, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you just have to spend more time on it. Here's what I'd also do, because these are nice drawings. They're pretty balanced and everything. Um, this one's working pretty good here. Mm -hmm. Give me my stupid cursor there. Um, that's pretty nice. But all of them are pretty balanced, right? Mm -hmm. This is a, a, an example right here with this tree where I'd probably move it over here a little bit. Mm -hmm. If you can. Yeah, you probably could. You could move it right there. Do 
give this a little bit of a ground plane maybe i don't know what's there i don't remember that's is that in a uh, birch street um i don't really know my streets to be honest is it brea or yeah um, hold up It's Chapman and Brookhurst. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Well, I don't know what's down here on the ground, but I'd give it some, whatever's there. I'd just give it a little indication that so it'll ground it. The mm -hmm. plane. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, and the, what I was going to say is, see, you're starting to punch it here. <coughs> is you, um, I'm sorry, I, I think I'm coming down with a cold or something. But um, uh, when you go in and do the next ones, you know, like, push your line don't worry about if it's if it does if it fails you got to kind of push yourself and and sometimes you fall sometimes you don't and it's fine because then mm -hmm. you'll sort of you know if you go too far you'll rein it in and you'll just just go for it does that make sense yeah to me a sketchbook is just a it's a laboratory i think it's a laboratory slash entertainment center Where's Eli at? Oh, I'm right here. Sorry. Shouldn't I have four more pages? Oh no, wait. This is one too. I get it. Yeah, I just I I uh just put it through Clip Studio and no, that's fine. That's fine. Here, yeah. What do you think? Um, to be honest, I feel like I was drawing pretty frantically just to get the pages in. So, um, I feel like I could have taken my time a little more. Was this over on Chunking Road? No, actually, like I'm temporarily living in Las Vegas right now. I'm at my oh, mom's wow. place. So um, that was in Chinatown. They have a Chinatown in Vegas? Yeah, it's actually pretty nice. That actually sounds interesting because I don't find Vegas interesting at all. Oh, yeah, it, that's true. <laughs> I mean, I, some people love it. I, I don't get it. Like, I've, only, I've been there like four times. It's honestly not the greatest place. <laughs> Well, it's just sort of if you're not into Vegas, you're not into Vegas. Yeah. You know? And the last time I went, I was like, God, this town is just so hard to move around in, and everything was super crowded. And then, and then, what I don't like, and then there'd be like a shopping area, and I go, cool. But all the shops were just like the same shops you see in a mall. Yeah, pretty much. It's just like dirt, rocks, and a mall. That's that's Vegas. I don't mind the desert. I like the desert. <clears throat> <laughs> but if they have a Chinatown, that actually sounds kind of interesting. Is it pretty big? um it's pretty small but the food is really good like it's easy to find good food stops there yeah i wish i would have known that that would have been a cool place to go sketch because <laughs> i i went out in the city and, or whatever and i I, just, I don't know it's just it's not my thing the only thing that's cool about it is the weird surrealness of the artificiality of it yeah and how everything's like a cartoon version of like paris <laughs> or New York and then there's weird scale things because they do stuff to make that stuff look bigger yeah I like wish I was able to go downtown and like sketch places like that but it's just it's like the worst place to go during pandemic how like, is it right now is it empty um no actually there's a lot of tourists right now people don't care they just want to go out like yeah, I'm kind of yeah. there I'm kind of there too <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of like I've had enough of this. You know, I think everybody <laughs> has. I think every, you know, we're humans. We got a breaking point here. That's true. You know, and I'm a person who's not home that much. You know, I'm always out and about doing something. And I'm in San Bernardino, and then I'm in LA, and then I'm in uh, Santa Barbara, and then I'm out in Ventura, and then I'm here, and then I'm there, and I'm all over the place. That's how I usually am. Mm -hmm. And I haven't been able to do that. It's kind of like, it sucks. Yeah. It also, you know what sucks the worst about this whole thing is how everything is just a normal everyday thing is now hard to do. Right. Like right like, now I want to go out and eat and I'm like, <laughs> it's going to be cold. I have to eat outside. I have to find places that even have outside. So it's just, it irritates me, you know? Yeah. And it really irritates me because it's one political party that created this mess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. America is so much greater now. Thanks. <laughs> whole economies in tatters, you know? I think he's a pretty good. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. 
Now, the one I think is my favorite is this one. Well, that's like my last page where I was like, okay, I, I, I want to go home. <laughs> How can you want to go home, man? When I go sketch it, I never want to go home. Well, it was really windy out. <laughs> well, that can... Lately, every time I go out to paint, mm. <clears throat> the wind kicks up. And I'm like, are the cosmos like conspiring to keep me from painting? Right. It's, it's pretty hard to set up a easel and all that stuff. You know, shot box or whatever when it's windy because it'll just knock it over. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the thing I like about this is the looseness of this palm. Oh. I just like that. It has kind of a designy feel about it. Again, start coming in here and separating a little bit. Okay. I mean, look how I can just put a couple of things on here and it just completely changes it, right? Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. And what I like about that, about, the, you know, because usually I spent in, <clears throat> these are all very consistently good drawings that everybody's doing, which is, I haven't ran across any, I think are, you know, wow, this person's not getting it or anything. It's a really consistently good batch of drawings so far, right? Mm -hmm. And what's weird to me is like, I can go over these things. And if you notice, I rarely do much of anything to them to, to make them a little better, right? So the thing I want to get out of that is the simplicity of this stuff, right? Right. I mean, you know, at the end of the, it's it's such a weird thing, but it's like you're trying to get to simple. And then when I look at things that I love, I go, God, it's so simple. But it takes, it's like this weird Zen thing where you're trying to to get to simple, does it, you know, and you kind of tend to go through complexity to get there. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Which is totally weird to me. It's just a weird like why can't I? Like why couldn't I have gotten the simplicity like when I first started? And it's like it's, it, I don't know why. Yeah, I just punch these up with a little bit of. Let me put a trash can over here. I always try and find something to break things up. And then this, no random mark making. Okay. <laughs> None of this, right? What is that? Give it to me. At least a little indication, you know? You don't have to put a lot of it. Same thing here. Give me a little more information. You guys ever go to the Friendship Bell? Anybody? Over in San Pedro? No? I just moved out here, so what is it? <clears throat> it's this uh it was some uh gift from like south korea or something they called the fr it's a friendship bell and it's here i'll show you a picture of it and it's in a park i love san uh san pedro anyway oops i have been there now that i think about it yeah yes. it's it's really i drew it one time i sat there and drew it god it's an old drawing too now that i think about it um <clears throat> it's this right but what's mm -hmm. interesting about it when you sit there and draw like you when you just look at it you don't really notice all this stuff but this all this stuff in here and the way the roof is done is so elaborate you know what i mean yeah and it's i just it's a cool area i mean i love san pedro that's a great place to go paint and draw and stuff but this is sort of like up above the water. And it's just on a big expanse of grass. It's a really good spot to go draw. And then San Pedro is just an interesting town, period. Mm -hmm. And the Port of LA is really interesting. Here's this. There it is. But when you get up into this stuff, man, it's crazy. And this, what, this weird, like these tubes that they put on the roof, super weird. Like I don't see it, that kind of construction anywhere else. Mm -hmm. But anyways, it's a good place if you like drawing that kind of stuff. Because like Chinatowns, at least the one like in LA, tend to be, they're sort of box architecture. They put, you know, Chinese architectural elements on. 
Does that make sense? Yeah. It's sort of a little different than, you know, uh, well, it's really different than how it really, I mean, it's fun to draw there. It's super fun to draw. That's also a great spot is go to, you go to Alvera Street, mm -hmm. you get taquitos, right? It's Salita Lindo. They have the best taquitos. And then you go down the street and that's a great place to sketch. And then you go down the street to Felipe's and you get a French dip sandwich. And that's a great place to sketch. And then you go down the street a little further, all within walking distance. You go down to the north, what's it called North something plaza in Chinatown. And that's a great place to sketch, right? You can spend the whole day out there. You can spend three days out there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And they have some really good alleys behind Chinatown. Uh, yeah, it's Chinatown. Really cool alleys. Like if you like those like tenement, those old tenement looking alleys, but they have the big buildings with the fire escapes and then the laundry hanging between the buildings and all mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Yeah, I was looking for places like that, but I could LA, man. Yeah, LA would probably be the place to go, not Vegas. LA or, uh, and then on the north, uh, south side of the 10 freeways, you're going through like downtown. Mm -hmm. That's a totally trippy area over there because it's kind of industrial. So there's a lot of really cool stuff there. I would, uh, uh, I'm trying to think, and just downtown LA in general, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just punch them a little bit with the line work. Yeah? Yeah. Why are you in Vegas? Um, well, like my I was living with my grandma uh -huh. and um, she had to be uh, put in like a memory care place because she had Alzheimer's. Oh, so um, like I'm temporarily living with my mom in Vegas until I figure out how to get back out there. <laughs> I'll go through, all right, I'm gonna go. Okay, who has specific questions on stuff I haven't gone over yet? Anybody? Oh, Professor? Yeah. yeah. Um, did you receive um, my sketches? Where are you at? Uh, Kelsey Gomez. Oh, Kelsey? No, but I can look at them. You got uh, something specific on them? Where are they? Um, oh, yeah, they are. I was yeah, I was just having a lot of trouble with um, because like my biggest struggle is when I'm starting out, I have, like, I, it's hard for me to, like, find the basic shapes. You mean, like, say this simple, like, uh, rectangle or whatever? Yeah. That's a tricky one. <clears throat> I think... I mean, you can see them, obviously, right? Yeah, but like certain like designs that are more intricate, like sometimes it's hard for me to see through all that um, design stuff. Okay, so let's think about that because that's a good, that's a really good question. Like, uh, I'm trying to think of something that's complicated. Well, maybe that friendship bell, maybe. So, man, I don't want to put it there. Hang on. If I'm going to build something, fair, you know, reasonably complex, because this in here, if you look at it, there's a lot of stuff going on in there. You see that? Yeah. Even this, it's like layered down. The way I'm going to start approaching that is, again, I'm going to go into the big shapes. So I know there's a big rectangle or a triangle up here. Then I know that there's sort of this idea. And then there's this idea. And I'm gonna flare these stairs out a little bit just because I think it'll look better. And then we're just gonna get all these simple shapes in here. And then there's a little shape right there. And then as I get back into here, now I'm just gonna go, okay, what are the big, oh, and then there's perspective here. 
And basically, that's my basic block in, correct? Yeah. So and then I'm going to go here. I'm going to probably land somewhere else. I'm not going to worry about it. Um, and then, yeah, and then I'm going to have these little shapes in here and, and blah, blah, blah. Okay. But then I'm going to go up here. Another big shape here, another shape here, another shape there. You know, and I'll go in and refine those out a little bit. And I just notice there's a ridge line right there. There's a big, so I'm just looking for the, the big obvious shapes, right? Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to go, okay, this is very clear. These are tubes for some reason. You know, and then I just got to get that going. So there's that. And then when I come in here to all this complexity, <clears throat> I'm still going to break this down. I'm going to try and look at it and go, number one, how much of this do I even need? Right. And I need some of it, but I'm going to come in here and do the same thing. I'm going to go, I got to squint down maybe and just go, what are the kind of basic shapes? One is that there's a break line right there. And then there's another shape right there. And then these start going up into here and I'll deal with them. I'll shape them out more later. I don't really need to shape. Like there's a little ellipse on the end because they're also like these tubular ideas. But this stuff in the interior, I'm just going to go, okay, it's, I need, I need to look at one and just kind of go, okay, there's the basic shape. So if I got one here, oops. I got one here now. I'm just going, okay, that shape is basically that, that, and then that, let's say, right? And then I'm going to put a couple of those in, very simplified like that, okay? Are you with me so far? Yeah. And then now I got that shape. <clears throat> and then I go, there was, there's a couple here where they break the silhouette. And then... And then there's a little bit of decoration on it. And then there's also a cross piece right here. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm not really going to do a whole lot more than that, but I'm going to look now or later on, probably I'm going to go, okay, there's a little decorative thing here. So maybe I'll just put that in there very simply. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to start indicating the complexity of this shape by kind of making it look like there's a lot of complex stuff going on here when there really isn't. Does that still make sense? Yeah. So I'm sort of using the, I'm just using the big shape still. And as I'm going through this, I might decide like, oh, I, I want to put another shape in here. Another thing I would do is back here, you've got another pillar back there and that I'm going to put in the silhouette. And there's another one. Yeah, you know, there's another one here. I'm not going to put any detail on it. It's totally silhouette. There's one here and then there's one out here. And there's these little shapes down here. So what I'm actually starting to do is give you the impression of complexity through density of shape. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. There's I'm putting quite a few shapes in there. None of them are very complicated. They're all pretty simple shapes. But because I'm going to pile a lot of them in there, it's going to look like it's complicated. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then I'm picking the biggest, I'm still going overall shape, smaller shape. And then I'm going, okay, what out of all that complexity under the roof can I take? Oh, there's this big silhouette idea. I'll put that in there. And then, oh, there's this one where it breaks the edges. I'll put that in there. And then I'll put a little bit of the decorative stuff on it. And then, you know, and then I'll start adding in like these little round things or uh, these little whatever those are called on under the roof, you know, I'll make sure that these are tubes. I'll start adding all that stuff in there and none of it's complicated, but when I put it all together, it looks like a lot of stuff, which makes it look like it's got a lot of decorative elements on it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Does that answer the question? Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. And then I'd also probably put, well, I would put, you know, wherever this roof line comes up to, I would put a value in there. Just a soft value. Same thing over here. 
you know, and then I draw back into it. A lot of times if I smudge something or something like that, then I got to go back in and reinforce the line sometimes. And then sometimes I let some of those lines sort of sit back and I just pick and choose which ones I want to pull back out, right? Yeah. So you can see how quick you could throw that down, right? Yeah. And another thing that's cool, you know, you come in here and you add these little things in here because that's another simple shape. I can't quite see what they look like, but I'll just make it up. And then also what's cool is you have these little shapes going back. So that kind of tells people that it's going back in one point perspective. And then look, look what you got here. Look, hang on. They usually have some big plants right here, like urns, I think. Uh, you got this big hill going back across it. Got a palm tree in there. And then I'm just going to come in here and just give that a value, right? Yeah. And what does it do? It silhouettes my building, pushes it forward. And then I'd have to punch these a little bit to sort of make sure that they're popping forward. You know, and start adding all this stuff in. And then, you know, dial this in a little more. And then look, there's cracks. I'm going to get those. It's a nice little shadow off here. You know, and then I'd come back in here and I'd hit this a little more and I'd make sure that it looks, you know, I've got enough complexity in here. And then it's a back and forth. Now I got to make sure that all this stuff is popping out in front of that foliage back there enough. Yeah? Yeah. You know, so on and so forth. I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't put this kind of a shadow on there. I think that would end up looking confusing. This one on the stairs. Right? Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. Yes. So what I'd say here now, your proportions aren't too bad. I make this a little looser, this idea of the, whatever you call it, the roof. Mm -hmm. And then like this, what is this, what was this made out of? This was brick. Put that in there because what this is going to do, it's the same thing I just said. This is just a more simple version of it where I've got it. So one of the things you're doing when you are painting or drawing, I don't know if you guys have ever thought about this, but what are you doing? You're, you're building all these shapes and you're piling up enough, up enough of these shapes that eventually it starts to look complex. And it's just, a, it's really a density of shape sometimes. Does that make sense? Yeah. So like, looks, so we, I had to get the perspective right on that, but I'm not gonna worry about it. But um, look how putting that on the, on the chimney helps, right? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, this, I'd sweep these lines a little more. So they're a little more architectural, pull them out. Is there any trim on the edge? I'd hit these windows, maybe put a curtain in them. Be careful with, see this roof right here where it feels like paper? It's very thin. It just ends mm -hmm. like it's razor thin paper. That's yeah. a really common thing. You gotta make sure that things that they have thickness, that they have thickness, right? Okay. Yeah. And almost everything, almost everything you draw, unless you're drawing a piece of paper, um, it's gonna have some sort of thickness to it, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I think a little more density of shape in these. Okay. Because we didn't do hardly anything to this just now and it's helping it out a little bit. 
like there's is there a, a walkway here you know what i mean yeah can i put cobblestones on it oh that's cool can i put some smoke coming out of here you know whatever whatever i need to do and you know and now we're going to add in you know trees and things like that and get a little more information here and you know is this grass down here and if it is then break up the bottom right yeah things very rarely architecturally or whatever they very rarely look like a, a cardboard box sitting on a sidewalk you know what i mean mm -hmm. they usually transition into the ground somehow Okay. Yeah. In this case, you can use the grass. You can use the bushes. Um, and I know there are some things that are just a blank wall and they hit the ground. I get it. But, or if like it's a city or something, I see a building, I don't think it's that interesting the way it transitions into the ground, then I might put a, a, a newspaper kiosk there or whatever they call those things, machine. Mm -hmm. Or I might put a, if it's going turned down an alley that's really boring, I might put a dumpster there to break up the side of the building. Um, if there's not enough going on in the sky, I might put a tree back there and just silhouette it. Maybe a telephone pole with a uh, telephone line going across the scene. I get a curve. I get a diagonal. I get all that stuff in there, and it starts to become a little more dynamic, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and I think I told you guys one thing that was really interesting to me when I was it was when I was at Art Center. I think it was my I think it was my senior year or whatever, and they. Um, for whatever reason, we're over to our, oh, I know why we're working with Universal on something, but anyway, um, they, they, we went over to Universal Creative, I guess is where we were, and they had all these concept paintings up. I don't know if I ever said this, but it, what really hit me about those things, and they were all in gouache and stuff. They were pretty big, you know, pretty big paintings. Every single one of them was just crazy dynamic, you know, because it's entertainment stuff, you know? So you got to really think about that as you're building your skill set, if you, that's what you want to do. I think you have to build this anyway, but you got to think about it because um, is your work st static or is it dynamic? And part of the dynamism of that kind of thing is you better know how to draw people pretty good. Does that make sense? Where did everybody go? Yes, it makes sense. Oh, okay. Um, and, you know, so everything I looked at, I go, God, they just never just did you know everything was at a canton angle the guys behind a building with a gun like this and there's a guy down below running and there's a car exploding and all, just all this crazy stuff but they were very um they pulled you in you know what i mean you're looking at that whatever it is they're doing you're going whatever that is i want to see that you know is that a ride is that a movie what is that you know i think it was all theme it was all theme park stuff okay that answers that right who else I'm kind of having sort of the opposite problem of that is I'm able to see the simple shapes, but then going back in there, especially seeing some of um, the other students' drawings today, um, and I don't want to use the D word because I know you don't like it, but I'm seeing so many like just intricacies in people's drawings that I'm like. The D word, I like that. <laughs> I, I don't like using it either. The, um, phrase, the phrase that shall never be named. Yes um so I'm, I'm trying to squint a lot i'm trying to take a step back and see bigger picture mm -hmm. than just oh well that's a staircase oh and look at the you know ornate design on the little tiny thing because and i know you're saying you know don't sketch fast don't go fast that'll come with time but i also found myself like sitting for quite some time on something that was so stupid you know what i mean like or not not stupid but like not as important to the bigger picture yeah okay. so Everything it was stressful describing, by the way is part of your process it's and mm -hmm. it's totally common okay mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we all start jumping ahead of ourselves it's the reason that you see so many bad drawings part of the reason <clears throat> is that the people are doing exactly kind of what you're saying they're going and they're jumping ahead to small you know they they, they get the reason i hate that word so much is that it and I don't know if it's like this in other countries. I've always wondered about that. Every time people see stuff, what's the first thing they see? If they look at a drawing that you're doing, they go, oh, there's so much detail, 
right? Always. And then I, and I'm looking at going, okay, and I don't mind that because I'm making it look like there's a lot of detail. But it's always weird to me how they always focus on that. Or they come up and they go, wow, so much detail. How long did it take you to draw it? And it always irritates me because it, it, I have this stuff from working in this industry for a long time where I feel like going, what are you, my boss? Who gives a crap how long it took me to draw it? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it's like five mm -hmm. minutes or whatever. And then their mind's blown or whatever. But anyway, mm -hmm. that's just me being crabby. But um, what you got to start doing is, or what I try and practice this week is, okay, so like, I don't care about speed right now, okay? But if you're if you're bela if you're if you're laboring over something you don't want to, maybe just speed it up a little and try and run past those. Like do this, try and go what I just did with that friendship bell thing. Mm -hmm. Just I mean, just throw in all those big shapes. And then what you what you want to kind of start doing is is what I was just talking about, which is going, okay, I'm gonna reduce that ornate bit of detail over here and over here, and I'm just gonna go past it again. I'm gonna put it in there just as a big shape, like I just did, then I'm going to move on to the next shape. And then I'm going to move on to the next shape. And then once I get those things laid in, then I'll go back and go, oh, I need to pull this forward a little bit. I, okay, I'll punch that a little bit on those couple of shapes. That's what I'll push. And then start dancing around it and, and adjusting. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it just takes a little bit for your brain to lock into it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't think these are bad. So I think the red ones are sort of my last pages. This one here? the yeah, the, like the that one there is for sure the last page, whereas the black ones are and they're labeled as to which one's page one and so on and so forth. I'd say what you want to do now, because actually they're pretty balanced from like a they're pretty balanced from a proportional perspective. And some of these are pretty complex shapes. Like that's a pretty complex shape. Is mm -hmm. that what the roof did like that? Oh, I see what it did. Yeah, it 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 was though it's um it was in like uh, Santa Ana, those like historic looking houses over there. And some of those roof shapes were real wonky, doing all kinds of funky things. Yeah. No, I was so it was over, hard to kind of capture that. I was just over at that Founders Park. I don't know why I was super lazy. So like when I sit down to draw something like that, a Victorian building or whatever, it's got all these shapes. It's over to like, you kind of got to, if you're kind of being lazy, you got to sit there and go, Okay, I'm gonna start this thing. You know what I mean? And then once I get yeah. placed, I feel like, ah, okay, I can relax a little bit. I got all those shapes there. Now I got to just work the drawing. That's fine. It's that getting that first lay in right. Because if that's not right, the whole thing's screwed up. Right? Right. Right. Um, but what I'd say here now is like try and loosen it up a little. Right? Yeah, that's, that's where I'm struggling. Because then those next couple of pages, I was like, okay, try timing yourself. Not because you know, get faster at drawing, bro. But because like, try and not spend so much time on, you know, the little itty bitty tiny things, because right. I think the subject matter was really complex too. And so that kind of sort of <laughs> hindered me a little bit because I was looking at something that was so ornate. Yeah, but you're I was also, like, okay. you're also getting some balanced drawings in here as far as the individual parts and all that. Like, that's pretty good. But okay, so now if I got it to this point, what I could do is one thing I do a lot because when I'm first throwing down those shapes, I mean, I'm trying to keep them loose. It doesn't mean they always are. Why can I not? There it is. So sometimes what I'll do is like I'll keep this, this lay in very uh, light, right? And that way, if I keep it light, when I come back in here, then I can go, I can loosen it back up. So I can come in here and just start coming in here and maybe loosening up a few things. You know, if I feel like the line's too rigid, then, you know, I'll just come in or I'll just go in and like dance around and just go, okay, is that, can I short or can I round something off? Can I add a little more information here? Cause these probably have thickness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then you know is there anything on top of these if there isn't I'm, i might even put something there if there isn't there was there were some weird funky designs on there that i was yeah. just like too much <laughs> yeah well you're gonna simplify it right right just like okay. we did with that friendship bell you know then i come in here and i go well the top part has these circles and this line 
then it has this like curly thing and then I'll go, okay, that's all I need. And I'll just put it here and let it fade out or whatever. And it, 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 it feels like it's more complex than it is. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's sort of the same thing. Cause if I go in and, and then I might get really loose in how I'm drawing those little curly cues and things in there as it moves out. So it starts to become less of a focus and it also just gets loose and it comes, becomes again, sort of textural. And it's also an element in front of the building. So it gives me a foreground element, right? Or you could do the thing where people always do where they put a tree in here or a branch coming in. You know, mm. sometimes I'll do that so I can overlap the building. There was a lot of that happening, but um you'll see that, man. You go back okay. 500 years, you'll see that. Yeah. It's a device that artists have used forever. And it's because right. usually a lot of times you maybe don't have a really strong foreground element. So I can always just say there's a tree out of frame and yeah. drop in a big dark silhouette of a tree right 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 and, and it's going to go instantly make everything go back right yeah right right but anyway I come in, you know, another that. thing like here again i might come in here and put a curtain here mm -hmm. and then i also i just do this kind of stuff all the time i might go i like to do this like in a house like this i can get away with it Maybe I put a piano here. Now I know that's making up stuff, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it looks cool in there. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So a yeah. lot of times, what I'll do is I'll just put like a uh, an, uh, a lamp or something here, and I'll just put a couple of things in the window so it just starts to get a little more. And also, I can get some folds here, so that just gives me like a uh, an organic-y kind of shape and gives me a curve. Right. And it's super simple to draw. So I don't really have to think too much about it. What were these? What were these? Were these blinds? Um, yeah, those were just like regular. It was it was funny because like the it was like a Victorian looking house, but then less like regular looking blinds, <laughs> like nothing special. Yeah, it's really weird. You know what happened years ago? Out like mostly in Palm Springs. There was all the Palm Springs obviously is a mid-century modern Mecca, right? Mm -hmm. And there's all these Neutra houses out there and all these crazy houses by these crazy famous um architects, right? And then it all sort of faded away, right? The idea of mid-century modern sort of fit because the mid-century modern period ended. Mm -hmm. And then people bought those houses, didn't even know it was a Neutra house or architecturally significant historic house. And then they went in and they just 80s out the whole thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. They just did whatever cheesy, like suburban 80s crap was going on. And then, yeah. And then people, when they started rediscovering these things, they were just, they were buying them because they're just horrified by it. And they'd put them, they'd take them back to what they were supposed to look like, you know. Frank Lloyd Wright would design your house, right? If he designed your mm -hmm. house. Mm -hmm. And then he would design the furniture, he would design the light fixtures, he would just everything, right? Mm -hmm. And they mm -hmm. said, if like the people who he designed those houses for would, would invite him over for dinner, like years later, he wouldn't have dinner until he rearranged the house and went, no, 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 this table goes here and that goes over there. And I'm not eating here until you move all of my stuff back the way it's supposed to be. You know what I mean? Like he was mm -hmm. everything designed by him, you know? Wow. I love that about him. You know, he was <laughs> such an obnoxious, arrogant guy, but he was like, he really was that good. Yeah. You know what I mean, so to me, it's like, well, he is Frank Lloyd Wright, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> like he has permission. <laughs> yeah. Go find the interview with him on uh, it's Mike Wallace interviewing him in probably the sixties or something. You go watch that. It's a trip. Like he is so like full of himself. You said but Frank Wright? Frank Lloyd Wright. Frank Lloyd Wright. There's an interview with him. I think it's with Mike Wallace. And it's all black and white. It's probably 60s. Give me a little bit of this texture up here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And another okay. way I can break this up is I can show these little breaks in the shingles. I'm exaggerating them a little bit, which is fine. And then I got this. Okay. Okay. And then I've got this, and then I can break this up a little bit because there's a ridge line up there with more shingles over. And, and just doing that makes a big difference, okay? Because what yeah. am I doing now? I'm pulling it out of the idea of it being built out of boxes now, okay? Yeah. That's what I'm trying to do. Like, can I break a silhouette? Can I make the edge of a building a little more interesting? You know, um, you know, put curtains in the windows, which is not a big deal, right? Or And in this kind of house, too, I might even put the little valance thing. It does that. Mm -hmm. One of the mm -hmm. curtains, you know? Mm -hmm. And then something, somehow this this connected to here, this this shape, correct? Yeah. 
But what I'm guessing is there was something here, like a piece of trim or something. Yeah, there was there was so much trim and so much. Yeah, that okay. So you, have to go, like, you have to fight. Now I'm going to take some of that, like here. Maybe I'll curve it and give it a pedestal pediment or whatever the hell they call that that's not a pediment. like i don't like right above where you're drawing see all those little yeah like wedges there was literally that many <laughs> I was like, yeah the way i'll draw that <laughs> literally i'll just go across it and then i just literally go it's almost like i do leaves i just do a very quick i'm not worried about getting it all like you know i'll get it reasonably square or whatever but i'm not really worried about it. i'm just just go across and then as i look and then when I step back in the drawing, when I'm getting closer towards the finish, then I'll look at it and go, oh, I need to tighten up two or three of those. And that's it. Okay. Right? Okay. Or I might not need to tie, a tie any of them up. Because again, what that starts to become is a lot of cake decorating. Once you get that big shape down, which you did, then I'm just decorating it, more or less. I'm, okay. And I'm going, <clears throat> how much decoration do I need? <clears throat> you know, I don't want to make a big gaudy <clears throat> Vegas cake. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That was a shot at Eli's over Eli. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I want to make. I want to know when to quit. That's to that's enough, where that's what I struggled with. I want to have enough density of shape where this thing feels complicated, you know, because they are a complicated surface. And then, but I don't want to have so much of because if you put too much of it, it starts to reverse and starts to look childlike, right? Because like mm -hmm. you know, kids, you mm -hmm. give them, hey, draw a tree, and they tr they start drawing three hundred leaves. Hey, draw a house and every shingle, you know, and, and it just looks like a kid drew, you know, there's not that, that editing brain in their heads yet. You know, they don't yeah. know what that means, you know? Yeah. Uh, back down here. Was this on the sidewalk? Yeah. This would have been on the sidewalk, right? Yeah. I get that in there and have that drop down. So if I have a crack, I drop it down. Cause then that shows. And I don't have to do a lot of work again. Cause I'm lazy. And then here I might put, um, you know, just a little incation of a bush, just to close off that edge. See how much that helped? Why? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. now we've got so much hard geometry. I'm trying to break it up a little, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Breaking it up a little bit, <coughs> breaking it up with a few curves and things, because we have so much rigidity here, right? Because you know it's a building, right? And then you want it, you know. And then here, I want to pop that forward. I want to hit these a little. And then in here, if these are blinds, and I'd probably come in here and go, and then this, you know, how they go back like that. Mm -hmm. But it's what? It's just, but it, it, can you kind of see what I'm doing? It's just mark making. Yeah. yeah. It's mark making. It's all it is. Yeah. Right? I'm just going, boom, how can I interpret that? Really yeah. simply. And then I yeah. and then I take it out of that. And what you're really doing is you're doing visual shorthand. You're trying to figure out ways to take complex things and visually shorthand them, right? Mm -hmm. So that starts to become symbol making and mark making, where that's the abstraction part in my head where I'm not seeing it as a blind. I'm just going, that's the language of that shape. It's a line, mm -hmm. an angle, mm -hmm. line angle, line angle, line angle. Okay, those are done. And I do that all over the place. I just, I find the logic and the language of whatever the shape is. That's the, your key thing that you got to do when you're doing a drawing is you got to find the shape language. And I mean, really simplify it. Okay. And then you're going to find out, and it's really weird because sometimes when I'm doing this and I'm really on fire, it doesn't even feel like I'm drawing. It just feels like I'm making all these marks. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. It's really weird. It feels almost autopilot -y. Yeah. Well, there's a lot at this point when I draw, and I hear this from songwriters all the time. Talk to songwriters who are really famous or whatever, and, every, and they'll go, what's your songwriting process? And they go, I don't know. And they go, look, I got my antenna up all the time. And once in a while, all of a sudden, something just hits me. Or I sit down to do, you know, and they'll mention some famous song. They'll you know, go, what about Sunday afternoon at the park or whatever it is? And they'll go, oh, that one came in 15 minutes. I wrote that in 15 minutes. What about this song? Oh, that one took me a year. Mm -hmm. I just kept whittling away at it, you know what I mean? But the, the main thing is with this kind of thing, sometimes if I look at a drawing far enough back in the right frame of mind, sometimes, and I'll just stumble on it and I haven't seen it, sometimes I'll look at it and go, I have no idea how I did that. And I have, I have no concept of like, 
there's a because I can see it with a little bit of distance, almost like somebody else's drawing. And I'll go that decision making in that particular drawing or painting or whatever. That's the kind of stuff that I admire in other people's drawings. And I have no idea how I did that. I just don't know. And it just feels like when you're doing this, when you get good at it and, you know, and uh, affluent with it, it starts to just feel like these things draw themselves. You know what I mean? Yeah, I see what you're saying. I don't know if I've gotten there yet, but I, I, oh, it takes a while. I understand that, like, like you were saying earlier, that um, Zen mode, because there, and, and there were moments too where sure. I was really enjoying this. And then many moments where I was yelling at myself. Well, guess and, what? You know, <laughs> That's going to go on until you're dead. <laughs> okay, good. I mean, it just is. Unless you're one of these idiots that goes, oh, man, I'm amazing. Like, once you get there, you're done. Like once you think you're amazing, you're done and you can be amazing and you can know you're amazing, but I, I'm not saying you can't do that, but you could, you're probably, I think always going to be in, okay, I've hit this. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to hit the levels, you know, oh, I want to be this, you know, wherever, then you hit it and then you go, oh shit, it's not here. I need to be up there. Okay. So I'll start climbing up there. That's where I want to be. And then you get up there and you go, oh, damn it. It keeps going. You know, it never ends. Yeah. You yeah. Hit the ledge. Yeah. And you think that's the top and it isn't. You're never going to hit the top. None of us. Are. No, but man. that's not to say that you're not going to be amazing. Never going to hit the top. Got it. <laughs> you can't because that's what drives you to get better and better and better. Right. right. You know, you look at Richard Schmidt, who's probably in his late 70s. Mm -hmm. And the guy's a monster painter. But I guarantee you, if you talk to him, he knows he's good for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I guarantee you, he's got other horizons out there for himself guaranteed okay and he's a he's a monster painter and he's a master artist and all that and he's everybody's like you know worships at the altar of richard schmidt and all that but you know how that is i mean you, right. you make something you know everything about it you know how the sausage was made and all that stuff so it's different than people looking at it right i know bill anton's uh process it's a pretty straightforward oil painting process but that doesn't mean when i stand in front of a, a bill anton paint it doesn't blow my head off Every right. time I stand in front of that guy's paintings, it blows my head off. Like you just look at it and go, this is like, I, I can't even find anything to critique on it. It's so good, you know? And then, you know, go to the Masters of American West show. If they have that this year, if they have that this year, we're going somehow, okay? It, it won't be an official field trip. But I'm going to go. If you guys <laughs> want to go, you can go. But it, it's like, you need to see that show because that show, it's all Western genre stuff. And I get students every once in a while and they go, oh, I don't care about that. And I go, I don't really care about that. I care that these people are such good painters and I become a fan <laughs> of Western genre, probably because of that mostly. Right. Mm -hmm. But some of the best painters in America are, are in that genre, you know, Western mm -hmm. painters and, and Western, by the way, doesn't just mean cowboys. It means landscapes. There's another guy there named um, Chris Blossom who does Marine paintings and they're unbelievable. Like of all these tall ships and stuff, unbelievable. Yeah. You know, the first time I saw his paintings in there, I couldn't believe how good that was, you know, and the way he paints all the rigging and all, it was just amazing, you know, and what sucks is that I want to show the students that and get this feeling that you get from that, you know, and if you pull it up online, yeah, it's amazing, but it is not as amazing as standing in front of the real thing, you know what I mean, right. or, or right. Morgan Weasling, who I'm not even a huge fan of, because this stuff's very, it's really illustration-y, but I don't care, he's a monster oil painter. And he came out, and by the way, almost all these guys came out of illustration, mm -hmm. right? Why? Mm -hmm. Now, why is that, do you think? Uh, I do not know. Solid drawing and painting skill sets, mm -hmm. okay? If you go into a painting program in, a, in most of the country schools, you're going to get a whole dose of hippy-dippy doodah conceptual nonsense, Okay, and I like conceptual work. I love abstract work. I like all types of work. I like Rauschenberg. I like everybody, right? I like uh, Basquiat. I like all that stuff, okay? It's not that I don't like it, but I firmly believe you cannot teach from that perspective. If I let people come into a class and it's all hippy dippy doo -dah, me talking, and I'm not really that much of a, you know, representational painter, and then you come into a class and I go, okay, man, you know, and the student goes, oh, I covered myself with paint and I rolled all over the canvas. So what does that mean? Oh, it means this, this. Yeah, that's great. I'd argue you're coming out of that school with no skills. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what I say about this, even if some student, and I've had students like this, where they're like, I really love like abstract painting or whatever. 
And I go, you need to learn to be a representational painter first and a good draftsman first, and then move into uh, conceptual work and uh, abstraction, whatever you want to do, right? Um, go look at those big Franz Klein paintings, those crazy black and white ones are just abstracts. They're, man, I stumbled on those at MoCA. They, they were having a show from the permanent collection. It was an amazing show, right? They had Klein there, Rothko, right? So you go one room, I think it was Klein, and then you work through the room, and it's like Rothko, right? So I go in that Klein room, and I'm like, holy crap, these things are powerful, you know? And like his surfaces were really beautiful. It was like big, thick. He put down a big black mark, and then he'd take white, you know, kind of off-whitish paint, and he kind of recarved the edges. And they're powerful paintings, right? I think they're awesome. And then you go into the Rothko room, so those things have this big, powerful kind of big message, right? And then you mm -hmm. walk into the Rothko room and, it, and he did those color field paintings. They're just soft fields of color. And they're amazing. Like they're mm -hmm. one to three colors and he just sort of stains the canvas with them. And I was just showing this to my girlfriend the other day and she's like, well, could you do that? And I go, no, because I can't, it's his thing. I go, can I stain a canvas like that? Sure, but I'm not gonna hit that magic. It's his thing. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. And I can't explain it. And that's the kind of work I really like is when I look at it, I can't tear it apart. Like I can't look at it and go, oh, he does this, this, and this. That's the technique. I like it when I look at it and I go, that's just magic. That's mm -hmm. just, mm -hmm. Like a lot of Picasso stuff is just magic. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I don't mm -hmm. know. I can't mm -hmm. define it. But I, and almost every time, and he's got a lot of bad work like every artist. But almost every time you see a, a, a pretty, you know, great Picasso piece, it's got some kind of weird magic about it that yeah. I can't define. You know what I mean? Right. But that's what's so bitching about it, you know? Anyway, that was a tangent. <laughs> but the, what I'm trying to get to, by the way, with that kind of talk and all that, is I want you guys to get out of your own ecosystem. I want you to go out and um, look at different types of work. I want you to go to museums like MoCA that are contemporary work. Um, you know, like, you know, fill up your cultural brain. You know what I mean? Because if you're uh -huh, going to uh -huh. be a designer and you don't have any knowledge of like, quote unquote, highbrow culture, you're in trouble. Uh -huh, yeah, uh -huh. Because that stuff's going to sophisticate your brain. And by the way, when you look at something like something like that, let's say you look at an abstract show and you don't like it, okay, which is totally fine. Why don't you like it? And, and, and beyond that, it's actually not even that. To me, it's like, if, let's say it's a significant artist, okay? If you're looking at it and you go, it's not my thing, which is totally fine. But then you got to, what I think is good to do is always ask yourself, but why is that so famous? Why is this so revered? And have an appreciation for it. You don't have to like it. But I try and look at things in that way where it's like, oh, it's not my thing stylistically, but it's, it's a beautiful, you know, it's beautiful. It's just not my thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't like to go, I mean, and then some shows I've seen where I'm like, this stuff's terrible. Like this just isn't good work. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's different. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the ones who are significant and all that kind of stuff, I usually try and if I don't like it, I, I just want to know why it it's revered. Right. Because I, I learned something out of that. You know, I always say I like to be wrong. I love being wrong because every time you're wrong, you learn something. Right. If you're wrong, you learn right. something. Like you correct your behavior, you know. Mm -hmm. And then if you're going forward into the world as an artist, you better keep your ears open and you better keep your antenna up and you better be forward thinking, in my opinion. Because if you're not forward thinking, this world moves too fast now forward. Okay, right. didn't for a long time. It didn't forever. And now mm -hmm. it does. And it moves mm -hmm. exponentially fast now because the, the technology is begatting more technology. Right. You know, and it's begatting more and more crazy types of entertainment and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? So you got to be on top of it. And it's hard to keep up on all this stuff, man. You know yeah. what I mean? If you really yeah. start breaking down the design fields and everything, it's so micro shattered now, you know, UI, UX, experience, experiential um theme park and then within the theme park thing there's fifty thousand disciplines of design hey that's the person who designs all the fake rock work hey that's the person who designs the landscape architecture mm -hmm. hey that's mm -hmm. you know on and on and on you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's it's mm -hmm. everything mm -hmm. you're in that room you're sitting in every one of you every single thing in that room you're looking at was designed by somebody correct everything yeah so that's, by the way, if your parents ever give you crap about being an artist or whatever, and it depends on what kind of artist you want to be, I get it. But one of the arguments I always tell them to use, and I've done this when I talk to parents, and I go, look at this, look, everything in this place, everything you look at was designed by somebody. You don't think that's a big industry? 
You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And by the way, when you're driving down the street, it's really the same thing. Other than the grass mm -hmm. and the trees, somebody designed all of it. Mm -hmm. right? From the hubcaps on your car to the steering wheel on your car. I had an employee who went over and started working for uh, some car company, Ford or whatever, in Detroit. And I talked to her afterwards. Or yeah, because she ended up coming back. And I go, why are you coming back? She goes, because I've spent the last year designing door handles. <laughs> Okay, which wouldn't bother me to be honest with you, but it tells you how many iterations of just the door handles they go through. Right. They just keep right. refining it and refining it and refining it and refining it and then changing it and refining. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we understanding how we're breaking this up. Yeah. And see how it's just making it feel a little more friendly. Yeah. Okay. Mm hmm. So, you know, it's breaking silhouettes. It's um, making sure that like, okay, and this is a big one here. This top of this pillar, however it was, how that transitions to that shape is super important. How one thing transitions to another is super, 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 super important, okay? It's what I see over and over again that people make mistakes on early on, okay? And it could just be the way we break up the ground with the grass. OK, mm -hmm. it could be that maybe, like I said, I'll put a trash can or something there to break up the building on the bottom or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. I want mm -hmm. things to transition correctly into other things. And it'll become important when we start drawing people, which is next week. Right. And then we're going to. OK, so here's what we're going to do. We'll start talking about people next week and then we'll start doing that. OK, then we're going to start talking about getting people into our environments. Right. Mm -hmm. So at first, we're going to concentrate on people just like we're doing this. And then I'm going to show you how to draw crowds of people. And then I'm going to show you how to draw an environment with, I don't know, somebody sitting here having dinner and, and a big crowd of people and whatever, all this kind of stuff very quickly, okay? Mm -hmm. Because it's going to be the same methodology and breakdown of shape, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, does that answer that? Yeah. Actually, did that over answer that? I mean, made sense, so... Yeah, you just want to soften it up and break it up now. Because what we want to do is like, like this one's a little rulery, right? Uh, yeah, actually, I didn't use the ruler at all, I but I was I just becoming like that. Very, very square. So now we got to get a little few things in there to, to sort of soften things up a little, right? Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, you want them to be inviting. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Unless you're, you know, doing some dark thing. You want to off put everybody. Okay, who else? Thank you, Mike. Appreciate it. I have a question. Yeah. I was wondering if you could look at my sketches and yeah. tell me if they're too messy. Can I just say they are? Uh, I suppose you could. Okay, where are you? Oh, there you are. How do you say your last name? Uh, it's Regenfuss. It's German. Oh, so it's just like it looks. Exactly, yeah. I thought for sure. And whenever I see something like that, I, it looks, I go, well, it looks like Reagan fuss or whatever. Then I go, it can't be that because that's just too simple. Yeah, I know. It's, it's strange because like it's, you pronounce it exactly the way you see it, but. By the way, how old are you again, Reagan or Megan? Um, I'm 17. Yeah. Take that. Everybody. Man, I wish I was as smart as you are when I was 17, man. These are great. That's this one right here is really nice. Oh, thank you. Man, you know, getting into this like early on at your age, ugh, you could just get so far ahead of the curve. You know what I mean? I couldn't draw like this at your age. You know? Why'd you go quiet? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm still here. But you know what I mean? Yes, I, I do. So what my thing is, is when I get, you know, I get a lot of young people in here, obviously, not usually 17, but when you when you get started, it's, you know, it's it, it's so weird to me because it's like, I just didn't know how to put action behind anything when I was that age, you know? Mm -hmm. And when I see people who are doing it, I go, it just, it's exciting because you go, man, you can really, you could be smoking good by 22 or three or maybe even less you know what i mean mm -hmm. because you're starting out so early you're like you're getting you know getting methodology into your equation that early on it's it's the whole difference 
Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it's a whole difference for anybody, but you know, when if you, the sooner you can do it, the better, man. If you can figure things out, the sooner the better, man. Okay, so you're asking me if they're too messy? Yes. No, I don't think they're too messy. Okay, cool. And, and yeah. by the way, I want you to take some, draw too messy once in a while and see if what comes out of it. Does that make sense? Uh, yes. I'm not going to penalize you guys. I, I'm not going to look at these sketchbooks at the end of the term and go, no, oh, there's 10 crappy drawings in here or whatever. Right? That's not high grade, okay? What I'm mm -hmm. looking for is, is, you know, that your, your skill set's moving up that you, you've worked hard in here, that it looks like you've understood the concepts and things like that. And I want you to take some risks in your sketchbook and try different things without thinking that I'm going to like look at that page and take five points off for it. I'm not going to do that. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. Now, that also doesn't open the door for people who are lazy to go, oh, cool, I just make half-assed drawings. No, because I'll know they're half-assed drawings. Right? Uh, yes, of course. Where are these at? Um, They are just houses around my neighborhood. Yeah, it's this one like really punchy. See that? That one's one of my favorites, yeah. actually. I like that one. Let's go through here. I like this page just because they're that, punchy. That was my first page. That's a good way to warm up. So this is all on one page, just a bunch of small ones? Yeah. Uh, they're, my neighborhood's like very mixed. There's like a lot of very small houses and then a lot of very large ones, so. I was just able to fit all the small houses on one page. And is this the second page? What's this one? Sorry, say that again. Um, the mm -hmm. microphone uh, muted out for a moment. Is this the second page that you drew this? Yes. One? Yes. So are, so are these all chronological? Yes, they're chronological. Interesting. See, usually it's like this: as you, you as you look at the pages they just keep getting better and better as you get warmed up or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. And you can just so clearly see it once in a while. I'm wrong. But usually I'm not. Cause sometimes I'll go, Oh, that's your last page. Right. And they go, that's my first page. I'm like, how are they going from here down? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a good. Pick. Um, I did most of these on different days. So like not all of them were in one sitting. So that's why, Yeah, but you're still getting sort different. of, you're getting, this is what I say about this. Because I'm usually drawing all, I, like I always say, I'm never more than eight hours away from drawing ever, right? Mm -hmm. And the only time I'm eight hours away from drawing is probably when I was sleeping, when I was thinking. Okay. And then, so what does that do? It keeps the skill very fresh and at your fingertips. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. And then I had it in my head that that didn't matter, or not that it didn't matter, but I, I just go, no, nah, you just, you get, you know, you draw a lot and you've learned all this stuff or whatever. But then now in the pandemic, I went through this real bad patch of drawing and I'm just starting to come out of it now. And I realized it's like, it's because you usually are always drawing all the time. So it, it, you're kind of warmed up all the time. Does that make okay. sense? Okay. Yes, that makes and sense. And you're also doing some methodology over and over again. So the methodology starts to get more cemented into your skill set, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that's what you have to do with this. You have to get this cemented into your skill set. Like you can't take this class and go, okay, cool. I'm done doing sketches. Now I got that down. No, that's, this is just the beginning, right? Okay. Yes. This is a lifelong thing. You got to do this for the rest of your life. No, I don't think they're too messy. Okay, cool. This is really interesting. This one, that's a different approach there, right? Yeah, that was my last page. So I kind of, to I decided to go a little bit wild on that page. I like that upper building. That's cool. Thank you. You were using the side of the pencil a lot? Yes, I was. Yeah, see how that, see? You just change the the technique and it, everything changes. Mm -hmm. That's a really cool drawing. Thank you. It looks really confident, which is what we want. Okay, who else? Anybody? Okay. Now, so everybody saw the video I put up, correct? Yes. What I would suggest doing, okay, so here's another thing I want to talk about real quick. I don't need to put my second camera for this. I'm not going to do much, but um, <coughs> I 
I want you to start uh, using your value. Um, I don't know why I don't like the word shading. It sounds amateurish to me. Um, your value. I want you to get a good smooth gradation. So I want you to kind of practice. See if it, it should pick it up differently. Okay, I can see what you guys are seeing now. <clears throat> so now we're gonna open up the thing for value, correct? Correct. Right. Okay, so what you're gonna need to do is you gotta get, <clears throat> and I'm gonna start this way um, because it'll give you a nice, um, what do you call it? Um, What's the word I'm looking for? Nice velvety clean thing, right? So you're gonna to wanna to start getting used to just doing these big kind of swatches of um, just nice clean value. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Now, a lot of times when I'm doing this, like let's say I'm doing a tree. It's probably gonna to be too big this tree. That's good enough. Uh, come down here. I might want to come in here and just make this one start off with a value. And let's say I go out a little bit like that. I'm not worried about this bottom part. I might come back in here and just to keep it loose, I might go out. And I just come back in here with a kneaded eraser or this eraser and I just recarve the edge, okay? And part of the reason I like doing that is I actually like the way it looks when I carve the edge out. It's like a painting. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And then I might come in here and put a little indication of a core or something in here just to kind of turn it a little bit. Now, hang on a sec, I'm gonna grab something real quick. And then, you know, if I got light up here, then I might start going into this side, kind of darkening that up a little bit. And again, I'll come back in here and just carve that out. Because I just like, see that? I like that edge it makes. Does that make sense? It's a painting technique. You always carve in shapes in painting. And, you know, and I get this stuff sort of fleshed out. And then over this idea, then I can start floating ideas over this idea. And I can start adding in a little bit of texture. You know, maybe these little textural elements down here, maybe even around that. And some of these I just put in across different things. Just to, it also helps me show the viewer that this is a round object. Correct? Yes. Like a cylindrical right. shape, right? Again, now I might very simply come in here and just kind of indicate some kind of bush or something, right? And I'm not gonna put a lot of information in here. And I might just go and silhouette that all together. <clears throat> and then I go, do I need anything else? Maybe I'll just put something else in front of it like some leaves or something. And I'll just pull that value out and I can start to silhouette that against the plant. Then I'll go, I need a few leaves here. And you see how loose I'm being with the pencil, you guys? Yeah? Yes. Yes. Yeah. 
I'm trying to be as loose as I can. And this is another one where I go way back here usually. And then I can sort of push the pencil and get a lot of different interesting ground shapes. I can get sort of um, overgrown grass. I can get little textural marks. Like once I put down <clears throat> a ground value, then I might, and again, I might just come in here and carve that out. You know, and then I can sort of start to add. So what am I doing? I'm giving the viewer, I'm giving, I'm locking things together a lot with this value, correct? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, and then here, I could put the bottom of this tree down here. Start to build that in. And this is basically what I do in the video. I'm just uh, freestyling some environment. And then another thing you want to make sure you do is like get some leaves in front of these trees, in front of these branches. They're not kitty trees that are like, you know, that, right? Make sense? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, I want to block out some of this stuff. I want leaves in front of things. I'm going to put a couple of off here. You know, I could have a branch coming out here and have a mass here. If I want to break it up a little more and put a couple of not connected. And, you know, and like the one I was talking about before where you sort of have this idea of maybe a pond. But then I just go in there and I'm going to have the strokes go this way <clears throat> because things are reflecting into it. I'm going to say this is a still pond, right? And the trick with water or anything like this. <clears throat> now, in this case, I don't care that the edges are a little ratty because I'm probably going to give it a, I'd give it a shoreline. So this would become sort of a, you know, grasses and plants and things like that around the pond, correct? Yeah. Yes. So then if I put, Let's just say there's some trees here. Some rocks. Um, let's just say it's this. I'm just going to say it's a big pine or something. And then look, I can use that stroke now to start showing those little pine edges, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. <clears throat> and what does that do? It just gives it a more natural look. Does that make sense to you guys? Mm -hmm. Yes. It's a lot like painting, okay? It's really a lot like painting. If you ever watch a good painter paint, <clears throat> you know, they're way back here on the brush and they're sort of very, you know, deliberate, very, you know, uh, artistic brush or mark making and stuff like that. And it's the same thing with the pencil, I think, okay? You want to let this thing do most of the work, okay? But anyway, I can now go, I'm going to have this tree. And the way that tree will reflect basically is if I take it from there and pinpoint it down. And I'm going to kind of cheat it a little bit. I'm just going to go, you know, there's some reflecting into the water a little bit. And I put a couple more out here. And then, you know, there's this light value. Right? So I could probably say that's sort of reflecting into this. That's probably a little hard to see, but I could reflect some of that. <clears throat> now I'm gonna darken this a little bit. Feels too light. Yeah, you can see a little better, okay. You know, and then again, like I did that video, I might come in here then find where the surface reflections are and put them right over that. And you see how that starts to feel like water? Yes. Mm -hmm. So the trick is really, to be honest, it's just knowing that these things are reflecting into it. And then if I can find a little surface thing, once that surface reflection goes over there, that starts to look like water or a reflective surface, correct? Mm-hmm. 
That all makes sense, correct, you guys? Oh, another thing. <clears throat> something lighter will reflect a little darker in the water. Something darker will reflect a little lighter. So it's opposites. Does that make sense? Yeah. I have no idea why it's some kind of physics thing. I have no idea why that is. You know, I start building this up. Start putting something back here. And then again, like this, this uh, hill or whatever back here, when I'm putting down that shape, I might come up here and just sort of serrate that edge a little bit because there's trees on the ridge line, correct? Yeah. You know, I'm not gonna do it everywhere. I don't want it to be uniform. And plus I'm saying there's a pine tree here. So there's probably some back there. And I just get a value going. This value would probably have to get a little lighter. Actually, this would just have to get a little darker. You know, then I get this edge of this thing of value. Some plants. I put this in the foreground. Put some cattails. Then start to build a little scene. Does that all make sense? Yeah. But the main thing I want you to start shading, or oh, hate that word, value, nice and clean. The other good thing about this, is to, to this point here, is then I can take this and I can start drawing into it with my different kinds of erasers. And I can get all sorts of cool effects with that, okay? Also, so we know, so we're talking about this, like pushing the pencil. If I'm drawing a tree, I might push this line upward instead of, um, you know, and then I'll pull it downward and I'll build my branches. And then my branches and things start to come off looking more natural and organic, right? Right. Yeah. Okay, now the yeah. other thing, <laughs> so the, the point I'm trying to make here is like this, it isn't just this. It's not just this writing position all the time, okay? Now I might go into that here where I come down here and I go, I wanna put a little, you know, start highlighting things and maybe put that and maybe I wanna separate this rock from that rock, and put some ground. And, and then I jump over to this or here, I might go, I wanna give these a little more pop. So I'm gonna give them a little more line. And then I jump to this, okay? When I'm starting to try and flesh this stuff out. Um, another thing is like these nice big chiseled marks you can make, okay? If I'm doing a fence maybe, like maybe there's a fence, old fence here. I might just start with this and just start to build it. Because why? It's giving me already my fat brush mark or um, pencil line. Then down here, I'd go this way again and maybe pop some of these, you know, ground texture here. And then I'm gonna go, okay, maybe I'll put that there so that feels lit. Maybe I'll hit that and hit this side a little harder so it feels darker over here. And then what am I doing? I'm carving into these silhouettes, correct? Mm -hmm. But what am I also doing? I'm letting the pencil do most of the work. You know, I put some ground texture here. You know, maybe put a big no trespassing sign here. Then I go, okay, these edges are too uh, sharp, so I'm going to round them off. And maybe there's a nail in there; it's holding it onto the thing. You know, sometimes if you're drawing like a building. Maybe a barn. What I'll do is and then look, I'm going to put some of the planks, but then I'm going to put you know, that over it. And I can just come back in here and take out the line in there if I want. 
But what am I doing? I'm building over a big area. I'm building over these lines so they don't disconnect. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then there's probably a board here. I can put these here. Then there's usually some trim. And then, but what I'm gonna start doing from a value perspective, and then maybe there's a path. Actually, this now is starting to fit in with that one. And then I'm gonna go lights up here. And I'm just gonna to totally block this thing out. And on things like this, I do like to go with the flow here, the plane. I'm also going to put this under my hand. Now, see, look, we've got that pretty blocked out already, right? Yeah. I'm going to tighten these lines up a little bit. Look at them, sweeping them. And then I'm going to go across this. This should have something up here. I'm going to say that this is also the, the, the village church. So I'm going to put this up here. Then I probably put a cross or something up there. Same thing over here. It's got to follow the same lighting scheme. Somebody's mic is on. And this is going to be brick. And okay, so you see how we're starting to block out this scene, correct? Yes. And then, you know, I'm going to, and then I go, I, I wasn't planning this, but we could say this is sort of this, this trees in front of that. And I could probably even connect that if I wanted to, but I'm not going to. So now this, now this tells me, because we talked about this earlier, by the way, I'm going to give this a little value. I don't like it totally white like that. And that means I can probably give this a little more value. And that, well, and notice I'm leaving that out. So it feels like that's a little bit of a bush in front of it. And then this one, I'm going to darken up. Why? Because it pulls it in front of the, the barn, correct? Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And then I don't like this empty wall, so I'm just going to put some planks in it. I'm going to bust this edge up a little. Maybe this is a chimney. Put some smoke. Might have to get rid of this. And then this Professor, is where, yeah. Do you think that over time, the more that we draw buildings and such, it'll become easier for our eyes to recognize all these different shapes and stuff? Absolutely. Yes. Who is that? Okay. Who's asking? Kelsey. You? Kelsey. Why? Oh, you were talking about having a hard time finding the shapes earlier, right? Yeah. Yeah, it absolutely will become easier. You have to go through your learning curve. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, and I'd pull out some highlights in here. I'd probably knock in some darks down here. So on and so forth, okay? And then maybe this tree line comes down here. Maybe there's a hill here, roads coming out of here, jumping back up here, blah, blah, blah. Maybe they run their carriage to the back, they work on it, and then they pull it out here and they deliver it or something. I don't know. Now I want these to be a little darker. A little bush over here, maybe.
And then, you know, then I could put the little grass that's coming into the path right here on the edge. Maybe this is just dirt, I don't know. If it's dirt, then I gotta break up this edge here a little bit. Let's break it up with something else, I don't know. Maybe there's a place right here to tie up your horse. Put some grass blades on here. And then I also might put a rope around this and have it just hanging down just to break it up a little bit. Oops. Little shadow here under that. You know, and then you can start drawing your horse, right? Same idea. Simple shapes. And I could start putting a horse in here. That makes sense? Mm hmm and then we start to get this little scene going, right? Which takes what, five minutes? Um, you want to be a visual development person, you need to know how to do that. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Let me unshare my screen. For, uh... <clears throat> so what we want to start doing this week is that, right? Go someplace and now start putting um, more elements in there, okay? And it also doesn't mean you have to draw every single element in there. Just pick and choose the ones you're, you want to use, right? Does that make sense? Yes. And then I want clean value on these things. I don't want um, hatching and all that kind of stuff. Just basically what we just looked at, okay? Um, I might use the side of the pencil. I might use that chisel mark. I might, but, uh, you know, I, you got to get good at that just velvety um, uh, uh, tonal technique. Yeah? Yes. Um, are we still doing more houses or are we doing organics as well? Oh, no, I want both. Okay, got it. And by the way, you could just do trees if you want. I don't care. Okay. Like if you want to just start getting a handle on trees, you go, I'm just going to do some pages of trees. I'm fine with that. Or bushes or whatever. And then if you start getting kind of confident with it, then go, all right, now I'm going to draw that environment over there. Um, that has trees and you know now I'm starting to add the organics into this equation correct mm -hmm. okay it gives you a whole new tool set to play with okay yes and then if I can get your hands pretty loosened up with this idea the reason I'm pushing this <coughs> pencil handling stuff so much and we'll talk about pin later I want to start to get that through your head that this is a tool that's very versatile and don't just think of it as in this old writing thing does that make sense Yes, it makes sense. And even the life drawing thing where you kind of draw like this, now you're taking that even further and going, well, I'm going way back to the pencil, and then I'm going in the middle, and then maybe I'm going this way, and then I'm shoving the pencil this way, and I'm shoving it this way, and I'm dragging it this way. And you know what I mean? Um, it's going to um, just serve you better. You're going to just get a much more fluid um, drawing style, hopefully, out of it. Yeah? Yes. And um, yeah. And again, you're going to, you'll change up your approach. You'll learn some other things somewhere else. And I didn't think of that. And you'll end up with your own thing. Okay. Um, this has worked really well for me for the way I draw. Okay. Um, and then, you know, like when we get to planes and things, I'll start talk a little more about the kind of viscom stuff that I'll do for that kind of thing. Okay. So we're going to cover a lot of technique. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. Yeah. This is all about technique. I mean, this part of your of your education or whatever your artistic education, it's all about um, technique. You know, I can't make you creative. Nobody can make you creative. Anybody tells you they got a workshop is going to make you creative is a complete snake oil salesman. There's just no way to do that. You have to find that yourself. Okay. Um, but if I give you, or if I help you learn some technique and things around it, then when you start wanting to express things and say things, you, you have a tool set to do that, obviously, right? Yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You just don't have anything. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just flailing. You know what I mean? Um, and then this kind of thing, like we're just doing there, it's a very quick version of it. But, you know, if you were working on something, uh, could be anything, be a theme park or whatever. I just sit down and start doing that. And I just go, well, what if the, this is over there? And what that's over there? And 
you did that with the beast library just like that when i designed the beast library the first drawings were just like that okay i just go well i think the desks are here and i think this is here and i think there's a fireplace over there and the pictures over there you know blah 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 right and you know you could throw them down really fast i don't have any anymore by the way um okay any questions around that everybody's good by the way don't draw with crappy pencils yeah yes yes that's the one i don't like to pile a bunch of uh expenses on students but a good pencil is not expensive it's a couple of bucks it's maybe a buck and a half to two bucks probably okay i like the black wings a lot i like the gray ones i think they're really nice pencils but pretty much any good art pencil faber castell um <clears throat> stadler and i would also say probably if you haven't already try a 2b what is anybody don't, don't use those hard pencils is anybody in here using those I used an H for like a second. Yeah, I would try, I wouldn't go below an HB. Okay. And and I think you should just give a B, a 2B a shot. Okay. I mean, I have them all the way up. I have the Mitsubishi 10Bs, which are almost like charcoal pencils are really cool. And the reason I say that is a 2B or a 3B, whatever you like, will get really velvety, um, kind of like what I'm doing with this tone and stuff, you don't get real velvety um, texture or whatever. And then, um, and like the black wings hold their points really well for some reason, it's the formulation of it. Um, and then also, because like, again, this is another thing, it's a holdover from like beginning drawing where they, they do that thing where they go, from, you know, the whole range of pencils where it goes from a 2H or whatever to whatever it is. I, that doesn't make sense to me. And if you're using a good kind of mid-range pencil, like a 2B or whatever, you can make pretty dark marks all the way up to almost nothing marks. So the concept of those drawing pencils has never made sense to me, right? And you also want to develop the sensitivity of your hands, right? You don't want to have to sit there and bring, I'm always thinking this way, especially for this kind of work. I'm always thinking like, I don't, what am I going to do? Bring these, these 20 pencil sets with me when I'm sketching? It doesn't make any sense, okay? And I want to just, you want to build the sensitivity of your hands where you get all those range of values just out of your hand. Does that make sense? Yeah. And by the way, that's not hard. It's not that hard. Okay. I, I, and I know there's some people who probably use that technique and they really like it or whatever. I'm still pinned. Hang on. Um, and, you know, and probably do amazing stuff. So I'm not saying that they, nobody should do that. But I do think it's an antiquated way of looking at drawing personally. Okay. It feels very hobbyist to me. Does that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It just feels, it feels hobbyist. It's, um, it's just how I see it. Anyway, uh, and, and I also think that that's not building the sensitivity in your hand because that's where it's all coming from. Okay. You know, whatever your style ends up being or whatever, you know, that's your personal stamp on it. And a lot of it has to do with how you, apply tools and things like that okay so if you're using these like very technical kind of things it just doesn't make sense to me okay um i want to do another four pages but now uh, i just don't want people in them yet um but other than that anything goes does that make sense mm -hmm. and again if you want to just concentrate on foliage and trees and things that's fine um but i think if you get a little bit confident with it i would um maybe put it into, you know, a scene where there's a building or something, because you're going to see how much it improves the drawing of the building now. Okay. Because all of a sudden it's going to come much more alive because you've got some organic elements in there. Okay. And no, not just trees. It could be trees, bush, anything. It's uh, foliage, plants. Okay. Grass, um, bushes, hedges, trees. I don't care. Go to the foliage and arboretum. Right. I think it's right. closed right now. Are they closed, really? Yeah, I just looked it up today, and they're they're closed. Yeah, why would they be closed? It's outside. I have absolutely no idea. This stuff is making me crazy. It's like, when are we going to stop with this? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, How long do you think the vaccines will take to give a bunch of people? I, I don't know. I have no idea. 
I mean, they're already giving it to a lot of people, but it's not enough. Okay. Uh, okay. Is there any other questions on any of this? Okay. Um, do, yes. Are we clear? Are we clear on what we're doing? Yes. Oh, yes. yes. How many pages do you want us to do? I'm sorry, I didn't catch it either earlier. Four. Okay, got it. And I'll put it up under assignments. Okay. Uh, okay, and another thing, I don't think I put up the other landscape video, did I? I don't remember seeing it, but you might have. I don't okay. think so. Okay. I saw the organics. So I'm, I, I'm, I did that on purpose because I want to kind of introduce this idea. I like to roll things out in a logical way. Um, I, I have another one that I just did on location up in Big Bear. <laughs> and it's sort of doing all this stuff on location, okay? And it's just a beginning to end thing, but it's sort of putting this into practice, okay? Um, so I'll throw that up there too. That's just all that's for, okay? I always like to make sure that you know why I'm putting a video up so you don't go, am I supposed to do something from this? I'm not saying that. It's just, it's more information on the same stuff, okay? And there's also a section in there in drawing rocks, okay? On the second one. Um, so I found some really good rocks up here. Um, I think that's it, you guys. I have a yeah. question. Okay, go ahead. For drawing foliage, it's like on a fence. Is it okay if we draw a little bit of the fence to show that it's growing on, on something? Absolutely. Okay, cool. It's pretty much wide open, okay? I'm not okay. putting a lot of parameters around this. I just want you to go out and start drawing natural things, okay? So um, basically anything except people. Yeah, or okay. animals or whatever. We're not working on anatomy right now. Okay, got it. I'm going to introduce that next week. We're going to start people. Okay. And the way I used to do this class is I used to go, okay, we're going to get to people pretty far out. And then I started thinking about, and I actually thought that was kind of stupid, but I need to introduce the, look, you guys are killing it on the buildings. Okay. I'm not looking at that and going, cause I actually run this class based on what I feel like the classroom is doing. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, so you guys are letting me move forward much faster, okay? Because I just don't see anybody struggling all that hard. And I'll go through all of them when I grade them and all that. But um, um, so I can move to that. And then, um, you know, we'll see what we got next week. But uh, and, and I just realized I should move into people earlier because the quicker I get to these three big kind of concepts, the quicker that I can kind of open up your sketchbook to go, okay, now we're just going for it. Does that make sense? Yeah, but I want it to be observational. I don't want. I just don't no uh, characters or any of that stuff. Okay, and the reason I do that is because I've before I've been like, hey, I get a few of those things in there if you just happen to be drawing characters. Then I get sketchbook and it's a bunch of character design crap, a bunch of crappy character design. Okay, <laughs> like oh, you don't train your eyes, you don't learn how to draw people, you don't learn how to do any of this crap. You just draw these horrible characters that look like crap. And you fill up your old sketchbook with it. And that, it makes me crazy because I go, you don't even want, you don't want to be an artist. You know what I mean? You want to do that. You want to do, you want to be involved in that world somehow. And you got to be an artist first. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yes. What's really interesting to me, because I've been thinking about this, is how many people go, you know, whatever the career is, not just entertainment design, but, uh, you know, whatever kind of design or illustration or whatever it is. But especially entertainment design, and they don't realize that you got to get the fundamentals of art making first. You know what I mean? The first, and then you go and you do all that cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Because really, what you're trying to be is a really good artist and designer. That's really what you're trying to be. Okay. It's being applied to this thing. It's exciting. It is totally exciting. It's totally fun. I totally get it. And I think it's totally great to want to pursue that as a career and all that, but pursue it correctly, you know, stair step into that. So you, when you get to, you know, you're starting to get good, it's based on a really solid foundation. Okay. So when somebody calls you in the big job, the phone rings and you get your dream job or whatever you can, you know, that's why they're calling you and you're confident going, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to go do it. You know what I mean? Like I can do this because yes. I'm good at this, you know? I don't know if everybody's as unconfident as I was when I started, but you know what I mean? I was terrified. And by the way, everybody's not terrified like me. Okay. Okay. It, it's yeah. actually really fun. I just say terrified. I just mean it was the first big thing I did. I was like, uh, you know, which I think is normal, but, um, but I was confident I could do it. Okay. Until it wasn't. All right. I'm gonna let you guys go. I'm going to put up the landscape video. I'll put up this assignment 
And oh, and I might do um, an open discussion this week, either Tuesday or Thursday, probably. So if I do, I'll put, just put it under announcements. Again, you don't have to go. It's not a required thing. I couldn't require you to do it anyway. And um, you don't have to tell me you're not going. You don't tell me you are going. You just show up. Okay, I'll hang around. If there's nobody there, I'll hang around for about 10 minutes and split. Nobody's there, it's fine. If the open discussions were Zoom meetings, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. Thank you. Um, I'm just doing that because uh, I just think it's good to have, uh, especially in a class that meets every week, to have sort of an off, once in a while, have an off day where we can talk if you need some help in the middle of the week. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Okay, good, you guys. I'll let you go. By the way, all that work looked great. Yeah. Like around around what time does that open discussion happen? Um, I haven't looked at it yet, but I'm guessing it'll be around 11 in the morning or something. Okay. And by the way, when I do them, I'll mix up the times. Okay. So I might do one 11 in the morning. And the next time I'll do one at four. Okay. On a different day. So I'm trying to you know, slot into people's schedules, right? Right. Okay. I mean, we're all stuck at home anyway. Might as well sit around and talk about drawing. I mean, I'm working and I kind of vary between a.m. and p.m. and then with doctors and dentist appointments and stuff like I've got a lot coming up. So, yeah, yeah. I'm just kind of trying to see when because I would like to. Come yeah, but to I'm going to do more than one. OK, cool. Cool. Sounds good. And I'll, and I'll try and pace it out where it hits everybody's schedules at some point. OK. All right, Sounds you guys. Good. I'm out. OK, thanks, Professor. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye. 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 Mike, I actually did want to ask you one more thing. What's that? Um, I, I'm looking here at grades.